Oh hell yeah. Alright, we're gonna tune it back and uh, I don't even know what kind of bag this is. Is it like a trance? Oh, what's that logo? Is that... What is that? I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Who knows? They're just putting their logo right there. That's bad advertising, but it's cool. Cool looking frame. Okay, so uh, let's get this on top of our head. And uh, it's go time. Actually, the first thing we need to do, hopefully you're not just going to turn this video off, but we got Dior lever and what type of brake. Uh, these brakes are just absolute. Just there's no fluid. Look at that. No fluid in that one. Uh, there's a little bit in that one. Okay. So yeah, they're uh, Dior, Shimano. And I, I think it's just straight mineral oil. But you know what I mean? This is, we're, we're doing the whole process. You know what I mean? We're going to hop on the computer and see uh, what type of brake fluid Shimano takes. Because can I even buy that at the store? I, I think I already have some. Uh, brake fluid for Shimano. And what do we got? Yeah, Shimano Mineral Oil. Um, uh, brake fluid substitute. Brake fluid substitute. What do you think? Shimano Mineral Oil or what's best alternative? It's just always interesting, you know what I mean? You can get this information in about just two seconds. Uh, Magra Royal Blue. So anyway, mineral... But Morgan Blue Mineral... So any just mineral oil. Morgan Blue... What the hell is that? Morgan... Captain Morgan Blue Mineral Oil. Okay, here we go. It's, yeah, there you go. Mineral oil. Swan Mineral Oil. You know what I mean? Well, that, that didn't come up. Oh, uh, Morgan Blue Hydraulic Mineral Oil. You know what I mean? Yeah, so if you were, if you were in an auto parts store... You, maybe you'd be fine Morgan Blue. Probably not. Probably not. But anyway, Shimano Mineral Oil. But we, we got some. Okay, let's just go do. We're just wasting time here. Uh, but I got to change batteries, so catch you on the flip side. All right, hell yeah. Yeah, we, we got like th almost four hours on, on this. We, we better be done in four hours. We only got three and a half hours. But heck yeah, we got boatloads of GoPro batteries. Let's throw this thing on top of my head. And uh, let's tune it back. You know what I mean? Now, th this bike needs some help. So it this might be in that three hour window. For me, it might be in the three day window. You know what I mean? I don't mind going slow. But... Uh, uh, on this one, we're, we're gonna try not to make mistakes of like, well, we're just gonna try not to make mistakes. You know, hey, that's pretty good. It's just like, uh, you know, what, what's the safety talk of the day? Well, oh, we already kind of made our first mistake because uh, I was going to, I was gonna get some grips. Look at those. Those are just god awful. So uh, gross. Ooh. Well, should we do it, or should we just, uh, you know, Amazon, you know, how much are lock-on grips? I, I think, I, I think, I don't think you can get lock-on grips for $12 anymore, so I think I can just go to the store and get $30 grips and call it good. What I'm looking for is grips that just go on, and it's just, and I got some goo gone, so anyway, we'll tackle that later, but holy hell, and everything's loose as crap on this thing. Uh, so this 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 uh, headset's loose, but it's so hard to tell because just everything is just loose as a goose. Um, this wheel is loose. Well, this one's actually decent, but this one, this one just rocks back and forth. Okay, so, you know, what the hell should you do when you get to a bike? Well, gra grab this, you know what I mean? Grab that, but, you know, grab the wheels. Yeah. Uh, so you got two wheels and then two... Uh, you know, one headset, but you kind of got two kind of headsets. You know what I mean? This is your bottom bracket. So if any of these are loose, uh, well, especially these two, if this one's loose and this one's loose, hell, you got you get to charge twice as much. You know what I mean? Hey, if this is our loose and this is our loose, well, you can't just use a basic tune. I mean, we, we got to tighten that crap up. Um, and let, let's see what we got for gears. We're not going into the spokes. And we're good there. And then you just go one, drop it in. Okay, so it drops in nice. And uh, we're gonna do this. Woof! Okay, looks good. Okay, it does not go down there, so we can we can loosen that up. But uh, 
you know, you don't want to do any adjustments right now because you just don't know where you're going to be. You know, maybe this wheel isn't even in, you know what I mean? The fact that there's so much play in here, I, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, the fact that you get everything, it might change the position yeah, anyway. So one thing at a time, uh, the tires are super low and almost flat, but they look okay. So we're, we're just going to tackle that first. Okay, so uh, did we do our full test? No, 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 no. We want to check the chain. So we have a special tool for that. All right. Oh, we need to get our stairs. Now, I I'm still running a day, you know what I mean, seven uh, from knee surgery. So that thing's still gnarly. But we're trying to make some money. Now, th this is crazy. I move stuff. See, that used to have my chain checker. And now it don't have my chain checker because I wanted to put it you know in a safer location are you kidding me okay so i got like three different places for specialty tools and uh let's see in here i think i switched them now down, down to this bottom drawer so we'll definitely use this guy today and uh is my chain checker in here oh man <sighs> Okay, we'll, we'll definitely use this one though. Yeah, we need to check that chain. So we'll put this here, calipers. Man, see, and th this is the maddening thing about tuning bikes, I, you know, especially if you don't have all your tools in a row. But that, that thing could not be far. But I just don't want to spend my life looking for tools. Um. Holy, holy Toledo. Oh, 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 perfect. I have another one called back. I guarantee they're not in here though. But this is just kind of, in. oh, there it is. Yeah, so we do, we got some glue in here. Or what am I saying? We got some grease. Okay, so uh, we'll get this, get this on there. Yeah, all it's doing is checking the length. You probably do this manually. Okay, 0.75. Uh, you know, maybe this chain's just fine. Yeah, it's pretty decent. You know what I mean? Are you kidding? You, you, oh, I'm on a link. Don't don't be on the master link. So let's see where we're at. Yeah, it's not even 0.75. Okay, we're gonna be good. That's the first time. Usually, if I get a bike, I'm just like, hell yeah, you you've been riding this thing forever. So, all right, we're, we're gonna go for it. We're, we're going to uh, pump up that tire. And, uh, all right, we can do this. Am I gonna use, am I, is it gonna get loud in here? All right, I think it's gonna get loud in here. Unless I could just do it by hand. Do I have, do you see the hand pump? Where, where is the hand pump? Oh, it's in my car. And uh, eh, we'll just do this. But yeah, that's that's the conundrum, you know what I mean? When your tools aren't all in a row, you're just like, well. All right, turn that baby on. Okay, it's gonna get hella loud. I'm not gonna edit this video.
guys, sorry about the noise, but uh, okay. So how should you tackle a bike? Well, the, like, is this headset just really, is it loose or is it not? I mean, there's just so much play in the bike. It was just hard for me to tell if this thing is, yeah, that, that feels good actually. Yeah, I mean, because if you, if you don't have to mess with it, I mean, because it's already decently aligned, unless it's not aligned. Um, but yeah, I, I think we're not going to mess with it. But, you know, th this is definitely where you need... Uh, but what you can do here, let's say this was put together by a professional. I, I don't, you know, or just with a torque meter. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think it was because, you know, these already seem r really tight. But you have to really be careful with this. One, you don't want them to move, right? You know, so th there's a chance that you torque them to spec and it still moves. You know what I mean? It rotates. This, your bars rotate. You know, this might get out of alignment. Um, and this don't do anything. You know what I mean? It's just, that just sets your pressure. Okay. But what I'm getting at is like, hell, if, if this says... 55 inch pounds, you know what I mean? Can I get any of them to turn? You know, even just a smidge. Okay, yeah, I got that one to turn a little bit. That, that one was the only one that was like maybe just a touch. I don't even think it was loose, but look how much pressure is that, and it did turn. So you can catalog that into your brain as like, okay, that's 50, you know, inch pounds or, you know, six Newton meters or whatever. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, the frame, as long as the frame's not cracked, you know, this is attached to the frame, uh, nice and solid, and runs good. All this stuff is attached, so we did kind of our safety check there. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you got your tire, well, we're going to get this stool. I mean, before you start taking things apart, um, oh, and I definitely need, uh, so yeah, before you start taking things apart, you can always give stuff a, a little a little look. Especially looking on the back of the brake pads, you can see their life. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'd say we're over 50%. But maybe not, maybe not. See, even just right here, you know what I mean? Hell, that's rubbing. So, uh... But you don't want to do that yet. You'll do that on the way back. So, because uh, you're going to take this wheel out and, it might, and the wheel might not be in there. There's a chance the wheel's not in there square. Okay, now if you're going the extra mile, and I don't think I am today, you know what I mean? Because I just don't have, I don't even think I have those tools. At the, yeah, I don't have a, a good, yes. At the back shop, if they make a star, if they make a star nut, if they make this with stars, like a green star nut, I, I will buy it because, uh, but th this is good, you know what I mean? Because uh, I'm just, I just want to, these are never loose. You kidding me? I mean, just feel the darn thing. If it's loose, it's loose. If it's not, why am I even doing this? You know, I'm, I'm just going to. I'm just going to do this as an experiment. Nope, I don't even have the right tool. So just move on. You know, some things in life are just like, you kidding me? These never loosen. Unless they loosen and then tighten them up. But look at that. I, I, those never loosen. I mean, there's like literally no oil on them. And there's so much Loctite. Uh, okay, but now now you can get in here and, uh, and I, I need to, I should get my headlamp. Let's do it. You know, anytime you think of something, just go do it. Oh, bummer. I, I don't know where my headlamp is. You kidding me? Uh, let's see. Do I have a spare headlamp? Yes. Okay, no batteries in it. How about this one? Okay, perfect.
what? So well, like even this, like how, how many, did that take me a whole minute just to get ahead? You know, you should have that in your back tools. So if you're doing this, you know, to make money, but look, look how thin that is. You know what I mean? Yeah, these are totally paper thin. So uh, what I can do right now, uh, well, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna take this one down. And now, now we're going to do, uh, see, this is like a through thing. So uh, because it's all the way through, the only adjustments, and it's, it's, it's bearings, it's like cartridge bearings. So as long as those are tight, and this is the same thing, you know what I mean? You can get in here with your tool and uh, one, just see if it's loose. You don't go past, don't try to tighten it, but you can kind of see how much pressure is on there. It gives you a gauge of, uh, yeah, how much pressure is on there. Um, but yep, looking good. And I, I don't know, you know what I mean? Uh, Um, you know, I just checked a couple of them. So yeah, we're, we're fine there. Okay. Now this thing, we're just going to take it out. Uh, there's no, and it might've been loose in there anyway. And the first thing we're going to do is just take this off. Holy, holy hell. Because this wheel needs a lot of loving. This wheel, uh, the hub was, uh, in rough shape. Now, maybe this cassette isn't on tight. See? Like, uh, you just never know. I mean, be, instead of taking it off, you know what I mean? You don't have to take it off if you don't want to, but just throw in a tool. And if I can do this by hand, you know what I mean? Just hand tighten it. Well, that's loose. It's not loose. Okay, so... Uh... Oh, you know what? Um, this hub feels fine. I, I don't, I just think the skewer, it wasn't even, I don't even think it was, uh, I don't even think it was tight in there because this hub feels just fine. Yeah, it feels well, yeah, I was just like, why is this bike, and that makes sense. You know what I mean? You know, someone just didn't put the wheel in and tighten it, right? Because they wanted to live on the edge. Um, what is that, a 17? So we got a 17, no, man, I, I hate it when they do this. You know what I mean? They, they just, they just make you make, that's why I had to make my own tools. You know, I had to make like a 22 just for my bike. Um, how many other homemade tools do I have? Here, there, there you go. Did I make this one into a homemade tool? Okay, there you go. So that, that's 11, 11 sixteenths, and I'm sure it's not. I'm sure they want you to do it in millimeters. But this is, okay, so if you're at the, if you're at a garage sale, you know, and you want flat wrenches, you're like, why the hell would I want these flat crap wrenches? Well, is because if you're in the back world, sometimes they make sense. And even this one, I just took my angle grinder to, well, this one I didn't, but you, I think you get it. You could take your angle grinder and then just get it perfect. And then you'll have a, a a perfect, uh, you know I mean, just for that wheel. Ooh, don't want to drop that thing. But, you know, I didn't really care. I'd never use that shock pump because I don't know anything about shocks. Okay, okay, so that, so that is loose. So that is loose. So that is, uh, okay, so be, because that is just so crazy loose, um, we're going to come in here with our little tool. I love doing this. And uh, the, on, the only issue is like cartridge bearings. I, I, I don't know, I don't think this is a cartridge bearing. I think it's actual uh, bearings that we could re-grease. That's all I'm getting at. It's always nice if you can re-grease the bearings. And now we need a big old, big old crescent wrench. Hell yeah. As much leverage as we can get out of this puppy. And uh, you do, do the 45, you know what I mean? You get down here with 45, and, uh, and that was fairly loose, you know. Okay, we're done with the whip. Get our tools back in place. Okay, we're going to undo that by hand. Get that one out. Take the whole cassette. And just, just drop it everywhere. 
but this is like the only thing, this is like one of the things that it don't really matter. You can just, unless it's got a ton of tiny pieces. Okay, but hell yeah, we can do our thing. This was so cool because, uh, you know, even though this is a fairly new bike, all right, one thing that I'm gonna do, uh, we need some rags, need some rags going. Sure, sure, this one looks good. Well, yeah, yeah, well, what am I getting at? Like, I don't wash bikes, but if, if you want to spend two seconds, and I, I just don't want more grit to get into there, but uh, one thing you can do, like if you're not going to wash the back, but you want to do at least one thing, this is just a, a squirt of alcohol, you know what I mean? Not too much where you're going to breathe it. And then you're going to do this like three times. You're going to go like here, left and right, turn the wheel a third, and maybe you can just do it twice. But if you do it three times, you know what I mean? Three and done. Look, it looks like you just washed the wheel. And, uh, I don't know. And, and then make sure uh, you didn't miss a spot. Okay, so we got that. But what I'm gonna do, I, I got some WD-40 out here. And maybe this is dumb. You know, maybe there's just the perfect amount of grease in there. Um, but if there's more than grease, Oh, and, and I took the WD-40 in here because I was welding. Didn't want to burn down my welding station. Where is that WD-40? You kidding? It's like, yeah, every, every shop's got like five bottles of WD-40 from the 1950s. All right, see, here's ours. You know what I mean? This is Ace Hardware, circa 1970s. But I do like to come outside with this. I don't care if it takes me extra time. I hate, I do not like breathing this stuff, but we only need just, just, a, just like a one little drop will do it. Woo, that was way too much. But we'll come in here and spin it. And then we'll take our cloth just so we're not breathing all that stuff. Whoa, okay, so this wheel is gonna get hella damaged because it doesn't have a chain guard. So these spokes are just ready to just break. So physics, physics people. You know what I mean? This spoke is just ready to break right now. Like it's not even the coat hanger effect. You just can't cut into your spoke and expect it to be full strength. Holy tlee, this whole wheel is just gonna blow up. Um, so that that's a real bummer. Man. So uh, do I actually, just from a safety, this is my brother's bike and I don't want him to have this issue down the road. But look at that. So we're looking at like, just like one, two, three, four, five, six, all six of these spokes, they're so badgered. I mean, they're just literally sliced. The chain just like sliced into them like they were hot butter. And the crazy thing is, and I do have to replace these because you have spokes that go out like this, you know what I mean? And the more they go out like this, like the stronger they are. You're trying to hold a wheel, you know, if they go straight up and down, Sure, they're like strong straight up and down, but the second the wheel tilts like like at an angle, hell no. There's so much tension on those spokes. So if you have spokes out like here, hell yeah, it can take, you know what I mean, like a motorcycle tire is going to be way more out here than, than a mountain bike tire. But because you have a cassette, these spokes on the cassette side are almost damn near vertical. And so they take twice as much like, uh, they're not twice as thick, but they definitely take twice as much, uh, there's twice as much tension in those compared to over here. These are all loose, you know what I mean? Or I mean just rightly tensioned. And these are rightly tensioned too, but they're just screaming tight. So we're just talking physics here. So yes, damn it, we're gonna do it. You know what I mean? That, that's why, you know, you don't, want to, you don't want to have someone have an issue down the road. If you... This is just like, I was in Les Schwab, the guy's like, your tires, your car's just ready to, you got no brakes, you know, and the guy's like, well, are they going to, am I am I okay to drive to Chicago? And you're just like, whoa, yeah, 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 one way, you know what I mean? Like, you'll, you'll barely make it and you'll die, and you might get to Chicago, and then you'll, you know, it's crazy. So, uh, 
But everyone's just like, you know, it's just like this. It's just like, well, I'll just run it till it breaks. But it just seems like you're going to have a catastrophic... I mean, there's only so many spokes holding this side together. So, uh, okay, so we, we're just going to take off the, the wheel. Hopefully, are these tubeless? Oh, my God. Well, time to learn about tubeless tires. Oh, bummer, because I don't know. Okay, we're going to break the seal. I've never, I've actually never changed a tubeless tire, and, uh, but how, how do you, how do you change the spokes? Oh my god. So anyway, we're, we're gonna do, we're gonna learn. I guess uh, it's gonna be a learning process. Uh, sometimes I just like to see if I can do these myself. So, uh, yep. Get as much slack. And then I like to peel over the top to see if that does anything. So you peel up and then push. And then push down on that. So yeah, we got it. And then, uh, so heck yeah, that's my favorite way to get a tire off. Whoo, man. See, and I'm okay. Like, I'm like manic as a cot. You know what I mean? Like, I'll take on anything for about four hours. And then we're going back to depression. But for four hours, hell yeah, I'll take this bike apart. Anyone can do that. It's just once you get depressed, are you going to put it back together? Oh, bummer. So now, now I got to figure out how, how you... I guess we're just going to go do it. We're going to go right to the internet. You know, don't waste your time. We live in 2023. You just go right to the internet and figure out what's up. So that's exactly where we got our, we got our tubeless wheel right there. See, this is why I just like old technology. You know, you got to spend like $500 just to fix that. Um, so we're going to come in here, go to YouTube. And I'll get close, so, you know what I mean, maybe you can kind of see what's up. But, uh, how to change spokes on a tubeless uh, rim. We just need to remove the tube. How to remove tubeless tape. All right, here we go. How to remove... Grade or get damaged. Thank you. Because that needs to be about two to five millimeters wider than the eight millimeters wide. So we're going to take out the tubeless... Looks pretty good. So now when we're taping the rim, what we're going to do... We're going to remove our old tape. Hopefully, it all comes off in one easy piece. But I like to, uh, you know, wipe down the rim with some rubbing out. Not, you know, with... And I jump down in the center. Uh, press it down hold it. Holy Toledo. So, we, we, ours are just like factory, you know, from the factory. They're, they're just... But maybe that is just a piece of tape. Okay, yeah, yeah, it is. So anyway, so maybe I can just get my fingers under there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's no big deal. It's tubeless. Wow, that that, that holds in the air? That's incredible. All right, so, uh, but anyway, I guess I got it. Because there was no videos on it, you're just like, hmm, head scratcher. All right, so I, I just take it off. You know, holy Toledo. You kidding me? All right, so uh, now I, I'm I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty A type, you know what I mean? So uh, check this out. So this is your cassette. It's on the right side, your, your drive side, and then so we're just gonna do this. We're gonna be like do a little arrow, you know what I mean? So now when I take this off, yeah, I can just throw it to the wind. Well, be careful, be careful. I don't know why I chose to take my gloves off to do that. It's just real dirty now. Okay, so now 
that's the cool thing about taking off tires uh, just use a little black sharpie and put an arrow somewhere you know what i mean because you might want to put it together the same way and uh this is cool because uh well let's turn that off and you know maybe we can even just get in here with our our our, our wrenches that way and uh okay so we're gonna loosen this loosen this hey let, let's uh let's just uh there you go i i, I don't no nah, we, don't, we don't need to do that but we just want to identify them so just any one of these we need to so sometimes you can just come in here and loosen. So if you're at the top, this is just a normal threaded screw. Loosey-goosey. Um, so lefty loosey-goosey. Oh, I see. I, I thought of a... I think I just thought of a cool invention. Uh, should we do it? Life's all about just like, what... You thought of a cool invention? Why didn't I think of a cool invention? Um, it's because, check this out. Check this out. So, uh, oh, these are just getting rusty. Gotta get these in there. So, this is your, this is your Harbor Freight tool. You know what I mean? Great for, uh, you know, holding uh, steel. Um, and, uh, but what I would do is I would take two pieces of wood, um, so let's do that right now. Uh, I mean, this is my life, you know what I mean? You're just like, what? You're gonna do like a project right now? But this project will only take me five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops. Cause I'm moving a little slower. Okay, just explain what you're doing though. You know how like you go to uh, tighten a spoke and just the whole spoke turns and you're like, I'm just gonna damage this spoke. Well, hell yeah, you are. Okay, we, we gotta be real careful. Okay, blade up, you know what I mean? And uh, we're just going uh, right to there. I don't know, you know, you, whatever. Okay, perfect, we're just gonna go right to there. And then just do another one and call it good. Uh, yeah, just go slow as hell. I just wanted to make sure they're the same length. All right, all right, you know what I mean? We did something dangerous. We had gloves on, running a saw. Just make sure it gets all the way down. And uh, let's get it into the safety zone. All right, we got it in the zone. That's a pizza hut for safety zone. All right. And uh, perfect. See, now these might just only work once, but... Uh, the wood will uh, grip the spoke. And uh, then you should be able to tighten. So anytime you run across the spoke where you're I can't tighten the spoke, you know what I mean? It's because, like really, if you could, if you could, if you could make your own spokes, what you would do, well, there's no way to do it, but you need, you need to, you would, you would make, I don't know, but that, that's why we're doing this. That's why we're making our little tool. And, uh, I think all we need to do now is to get some, oh, bummer, whoa, dude. Uh, there was double-sided tape downstairs and that's all we needed just for this project. We just needed a little bit of double-sided tape. Um, but maybe we don't even need double-sided tape. No, I think we do. There it is, there it is. A little double-sided tape. And, uh, heck yeah. Oh, this thing, this is almost out of double-sided tape. That's all right, though. So we'll at least put... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And these need to be, like, real cleaned. These are just real dusty. So this might not work at all. Oh, is there any other way... Uh, no, no, we're gonna be fine. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We're, but we'll, we'll at least test, e even if this is just a, a concept 
that's worthwhile. So uh, double-sided tape and uh, well, no, it, these are all just messed up anyway because uh, the angle is just way off. Okay, fair enough. All right, but th th this is classic of like, don't do more, you know, try something. If, you, if you've already figured out that's exactly what you wanted to do, try it out first. So we're, we're gonna loosen this up just a little bit. You know what I mean? Just enough so we can uh, uh, tighten it with a spoke on it. And, and then we're just gonna figure out, so that one. So yeah, let's say this one is just, see in my woods almost like two, and maybe you can't even grip in there. So, uh, so one, my, my wood is too uh, long. Okay, it's perfect length. So yeah, you put the two pieces of wood there and, and then you go and clamp it. Okay, so now we clamp that spoke. So now, it is all, so this is classic because it's teaching me, yeah, it's fine to do stuff. But uh, so now when we go to loosen this spoke, uh, and this spoke's just hella loose anyway. Did we already... Is that the one we loosened? Crap. Okay, that's the one we loosened. But I, but I think you get it. And we'll do, the, we'll do another one. So we're going to come into this one. Uh, but this is why it would be cool to just have a tool specifically for spokes that don't want to turn. So you go tighten the spoke. And it's not going to damage the spoke because there's just a lot of friction. And now you're going to come in. Even if you... So if you made it shorter, because you still need to get, you still need to get this tool in there. So you'd, you'd want to make a small one. Um, but if you're coming in from the top, heck yeah, this tool is great. Because now I got leverage to push against this spoke, and I'm not just turning the spoke. So see how it would turn the spoke that much? So I can resist that, and uh, we can just uh, loosen this spoke up. I swear they use like the worst metal for spoke nipple. Like uh, I feel like it's just, uh, just like Play-Doh. All right, so I got that one, perfect. And uh, so, so we have this tool if we need it. Um, we're just gonna throw it over there, but maybe we don't even need it. So we had like what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven spokes. Okay, so that one's loose. That one's loose. Oh, that's the crazy thing. Holy, what am I doing? You know what I mean? I'm probably just ruining this wheel. So, uh, yeah, you can't just loosen all these spokes. So how many do we loosen? We loosen two and uh, perfect. So uh, we loosen two in a row, and then so, I mean, all we're doing is taking, all, all we need to do is take one spoke out and measure it so we can go buy seven of these spokes. And maybe we'll go buy eight just in case, uh, just in case, I don't know. But no, we'll buy seven spokes, maybe seven new nipples. I don't think we need the new nipples. But anyway, so you're just trying to take these nipples off, and whoa, they're just, you almost need a power drill. And just something magnetized. Uh, man, these are, why isn't that coming? Ooh, yeah, and you don't want the nipple to, uh, fall into the rim. That would be a nightmare. Okay, got it out, perfect, whew. Okay, so we got one out, and uh, you know, you just bend them, bend them in the middle, and bend them like an arc so you're not just fouling them up. Okay, and uh, can we get these out just all right? Heck yeah. Okay, and we'll just get two of them out, and uh, yeah, we'll put, put the nipple back on, just so we don't lose it. All right, and let's see what we're doing. So let's sit down. 
This is where I need the double-sided tape. Well, let's do it. I think I think there's double-sided tape on here still. Yeah. Well, let's see if uh, I love just experiment with things because you might come across something that's just like hell yeah, I want to do that every time. But yeah, put a little piece of double-sided tape, you know, just all right there. I'm gonna take the gloves off. Well, no, I want to keep my hands dust free, dirt free. Okay, so uh, now that should just stick in there real good. Okay, and now it'll stick to the nipple. And we're just watching this side. Hell yeah, so now we're going real fast. But I don't think it can go no more. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna pull it out. Perfect, I think that's the way to do it. Pull, like push it in and then pull it out. Okay, and look, it's stuck. So yeah, that's another little, little viral video right there. Now I really need to turn this four hour just, you know, garbage video of me tuning the back with with decent skill but i'll tell you though you know what i mean most of bike stuff is just like yeah you only do what you handle you know if you can't handle taking out a spoke and putting it back in that's the first thing have one spoke take it out put it back in and make sure the wheel's true i mean this is i didn't even check to see how how true the wheel is but you know without those spokes you know let's see where we're at Yeah, it's got some hoppage, you know what I mean? So, uh, okay, so perfect. So we need to get, we need to get seven of these. Is that right? And uh, like, I, I only wanna make one trip to the bike shop, but we need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we're gonna put those right there. But we, we can just continue on, continuing on. So what we wanted to do was we need to, because when this bike was built, uh, at least the hub still is good. The, the hub is not loose, but this side was loose as. So we're gonna come in here, loosen this side so we can get to that side to make sure that side's tight. So you can't get to this side without taking off the cassette. And uh, so we need our tools. So we're gonna come in here with this fella. And oh, I like this, just having something to rest against is totally nice so it's not 16 nothing's 16 it's got to be 15 there you go and then see how loose that was so this is just crazy loose and uh, you do you if you want to grease this stuff you know when you put it back together but i probably would there's no grease on this you know what i mean bikes get made oh and that washer is pretty decent it's like a spring washer it's a lock washer it's just springy shaped Oh, and we'd have no greasable, we don't have anything, this is great. So all hubs are just cartridge. So the second you feel your hub, you know, acting like a pile. Um, now why can't I, uh, why, why, why isn't this, see this, this is what I don't understand. Um, toothpick's always good to have, you know I mean, you can come in here and, chisel out some of this dirt oh man i almost need a so a wire tool is always good this is not my favorite there you go harbor freight get them orange so you can see them now i, I don't want to go too crazy on this because it might be like a rubber seal so but we are going to go this direction take a now the only reason i'm doing this is just seeing how these things are made you know what I mean? It's not just to clean this. You can go OCD and clean this if you want to. That's insane. It's just going to get dirty again. <laughs> uh, but I, I just want to see why, why this, why this is stuck. I don't understand that. Okay, don't do that. You're just going to damage the. You're just gonna warp the axle. But okay, I guess I just don't know how these axles work. Does the axle only go in that? I don't get it. Why is that axle seized in there? Or I, I just, I've never, I've never worked with these cartridge. And now I, I, I literally cannot put a wrench on this side because there's no way, there's no way for me to, uh, hopefully this isn't just hand tight though. Okay.
And the only way to get this off is if you get that off first. Whoa. Uh, rear hub cartridge bearing axle not removal. Okay, we're, we're just going to go to YouTube. I mean, I ain't figuring that out. And I, I don't know why that axle isn't just loose in there. It, that, don't, that don't make sense. Um, if it's a cartridge bearing, and then you throw the axle in. So we're, 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 what are we looking at? We're going to look at... Uh, um, I just typed in a bunch of words. There you go. Axle and free hub removal. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, so you do hammer it, hammer it to hell. That's so bizarre. Whoa, and the entire thing pops. Okay, I don't want to do that. Whoa, that's that's insanity. Because then you you would have to get this stuff off to actually to be able to tighten that. Okay, oh man, that that's nuts. Ugh, this is crazy. Why aren't bikes simple no more? All right, so. Uh, you know, in the olden days, this, this axle would just come right out and you would be able to, uh, so all, all I'm trying to do is to see if I can actually, hopefully that's just a 17. So, uh, there you go. So I, I want to get a 17 in there and I can't, um, because I, I got to, eh, let's just do it. We will just do it. So, uh, what you're going to put, you're going to put that thing on and, uh, you're just going to take a hammer. And, uh... Okay, perfect. So, so it did hammer out enough. Okay, excellent. It hammered out enough to where I can actually see if that's tight. Okay, you know what I mean? I don't want to take the whole thing out. Hell no. I, I just want to get in here to see if they actually... But maybe it's just 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 a nothing burger. But no, it is. If this if this bolt loses, so we're gonna see. All right, this is the magical moment. Does this need to be tightened? Well, see now now it's now it's lifetime guarantee on that. Um, but that was not worth it. Okay, so I'm gonna undo this and then throw this back on here. And uh, sure, we need a rubber mallet. But, uh, nah, screw it. We've already hammered it to hell. Uh, we just need that to go back, you know, to where I can't uh, access. So that was perfect. That, that did it. That, 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 that's flush. So I, I heard that, you know, the, the flush noise about three times. Okay, so that's, that's in there. And we did it. Perfect. Where's our washer? Okay. So we, we made sure those two nuts are tight just so when you tighten the wheel in, 
you know, the, the, if these nuts loosen up and then you tighten the wheel in, well, it's just going to be wonky. Okay, so now we're going to uh, put this. Uh, I think it goes this way. See, now, now I just have no friggin' clue. Oh, shoot. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, this was on the outside. And, uh... Did it go this way, though? Was it smooth? Was it smooth running up against that? I would imagine. There's no teeth marks. Yeah, so just use your use your common sense. You kidding me? You gonna put this oversized tooth marks right up against the seal of that bearing? No, you need something contacting right there. So even if you take stuff apart too fast, you know what I mean? Just use your noggin to put it back together. Hell yeah, that's a smooth surface. It's gonna go right on the smooth surface of that bearing. Well, I, I feel like I'm doing this all wrong. Why, why do I feel like I'm doing this wrong? Oh, obviously. Duh. Okay. Yeah, duh, you're doing it wrong. No, no, no. See, that, that's what grips the actual uh, rim. I mean, that, that grips the frame. So, yeah, I'm glad I'm using my noggin because... And I'm so glad... I could just go back to the footage and be like, What up? But no, this covers that whole bearing. And yes, so you have a smooth surface... It's not too smooth. It's almost grippy. What am I doing? Are you kidding? I'm just going to call it. Look at that. That covers it perfect. Um, but that's interesting. And, and then this goes on right there. And then this is the grip grip. And... Uh, you know, it's sealed bearings, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know if this is just finger tight. You know what I mean? Do you throw a, do you throw a 15 on this side? And then, uh, you know, how tight do you, uh... yeah, that, that, that's garbage. Yeah, so perfect. So you, and I shouldn't have done that anyway. But uh, yeah, so it's just barely. Okay, fair enough. And uh, we're going to do this, get our 15 in there, just tighten it up just a little bit. Now there's no, uh, there's no play and it's, it's running smooth. So that's good. All right, we're, we're done. We're done. Whoo wee. Okay. But this side, you can always tighten up. You don't have to tighten that, that, this side up too much. But we did. We tightened it hella. And, uh, okay. So now we're going to put this cassette back on. You're looking for your small, small one. And uh, there you go. So it's just right there. Like I said, this process, you really can't mess up. But what are we doing? Holy Toledo. We, we need to... So we're done with this. Um, throw those right there because we got to get those spokes. And, uh, but the hub's good. Um, excellent. All right, I, I'm just gonna set that wheel right there because we'll, we'll get to it later. Okay, so now, and because uh, we, we wanna get to the bike shop before they close, and uh, we may want to, oh, that, that was the thing. We definitely maybe wanna replace those brake pads. So we might wanna replace these brake pads too. So let's, let's take a look at them. This is definitely where you need a headlamp. Uh, see, yeah, real thin. You know what I mean? Just, just time to replace. If you're going through all this work to take out the wheel, you know what I mean? Just do it. And, uh, yeah, we'll clean the gunk out of that. Uh, but anyway, cool beans. So we're kind of done with the, uh, oh, done with the rear wheel, but we need to see what's going on with this wheel. And uh, brakes on the left. So that's the great thing about disc brakes. You already know the left. Lever on left, brake on left. Uh, throw this back together. Throw it where you're not gonna lose it. Where's the other one? You know what I mean? Just it's madness sometimes. Okay, yeah, and same thing maybe. You're like, whoa, I mean, same thing as I don't know how, I don't know how these go together.
but I'm just glad that these are uh, fairly decent. You know, there's very little play cartridge bearings, but even on this one, I don't get, there's only one place to actually grip. So yeah, you could put a, you could put a tool in there and a tool over here and you could undo it. And then, but I, I guess, you know, that's, that's weird. It seems like, well, how is that not just loosening up? Um, well, well, let's get our light. That's not an Allen key, is it? No, it's not. That was the weird, that was with my bike too. I don't get the cartridge bearings where like, the, there's not two washers holding on to the hub itself. You know, so this is, a, this is interesting because you have an interesting tool for this, you know, as, and then you, 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 you throw a wrench in there and then you throw the interesting tool on there and somehow when you go to tighten it, I, I guess it just holds its shape. Or maybe it's like a, you undo it halfway and then you can slide them off. It's like a locking hub or something. But anyway, a lot of technology in backs, but obviously if you want to take that off, you don't need to. So this one's perfect because it's just like, hell yeah, it's well adjusted, it's cartridge, it's well seated. Uh, this disc brake ain't coming off and we're done. You know what I mean? Uh, no damage on the, anyway, you can just look at your tire. Do we need, do we need to replace those? Um, you know, plenty of tread, but you could look at the sidewall. You know, run your finger down the sidewall just to see. And then, uh, yeah, well, let's, let's spin this puppy up to speed just to see where we're at on true. We're pretty good there. Okay, so, uh, okay, so now, now, now what can we do? Well, one thing we can do since we're not, we're not changing the chain, but we can take this derailleur off Oh, perfect. We got 6% battery. You're probably just hearing them talk with no picture. So catch you on the flip side. All right. Hell yeah. We're back. We got just under three hours. Uh, so that was our first hour down. And we basically just did diagnosis. You know what I mean? But but we're getting after it. Okay. I mean, we uh, we checked to see what was loose as hell. And we knew we had an issue with the, the rear hub. But we really didn't. It was just just the levers weren't weren't in there correctly. Now, uh, I do have a huge thing of grease over here. You know what I mean? Now, so I, I just take a little brush and uh, we'll just do a little grease on there. Well, this brush don't work that good. I, I need to get a better system of how to grease stuff up. But sometimes, and then, you know, just this is up high so we can see how well this grease thing works. I don't know, maybe just a little dab will do it. But we're, we're going to throw it into the derailleur hanger. Now be real careful threading these things, you know what I mean? Make sure you catch the first two, else you get fired. That, that almost happened to me. I, I, just, I swear to God, every time I brought out this tool, this is like the getting fired tool. You cross-thread somebody's, you know, it's, holy Toledo. You know, you can't find these things. You, you got you to gotta make them yourself, you know what I mean? Wait three weeks just to get one. Oh, what am I doing? I, I can't do this until we get the wheel in there, and uh, we can't do that. So anyway, we are just spinning our wheels. Um, but okay, so now we're, we're set though. I mean, everything else is, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the gears at the end. Um, yeah, we got a front derailleur, and we got cables. If we need to replace the cables, you know, we can definitely do that. But okay, we're ready to go get those spokes. We don't need a chain. Yeah, we, we don't need a chain. This chain is is lovely. And uh, it's not stretched. And uh, But we will get grips. Is that it? So we're going to get seven spokes, two grips, put this bike back together. Uh, just to... Be oh, do not touch these while you're... Oh, thank goodness. Uh, yeah, you almost need tennis balls. Um, yeah, check this out. I just need a couple more. But if you take your wheel out, you know, just throw a tennis ball like right there. And then you can't squeeze your grip. You know, hey, that's a freebie on me. Because I'll make that mistake a thousand times. And then those brake pads will go together and you can't get them undone. Um, but, so so what, what, are we, what are we getting at? Well, we, we want to, uh, we're, we're going to take them out. So, uh, we're going to get this, uh,
Heck yeah. All right. So, uh, let's see. Okay, I, I have, uh, it's been, it's been a while since I've done this. I, I know you just don't touch them with your finger. We're going to throw them away anyway, though, but, uh, um, let's see. Oh, and there's a pin. Yeah, okay, perfect. So, uh, we'll just flatten this pin. And, uh, slide the pin out. Put the pin right there. And uh, now, we should be able to just lift these suckers out, out of there. Oh, there you go. I'd kind of push from the bottom because that's... And then just kind of keep pushing on both sides, see if they're coming. And then grip them and then... Uh, yeah, because you, you don't want to grab the copper piece. Um, and e even here, so, like, I have no idea if there's a right and left on these things, and I'm real OCD like that, so, uh, what we're going to do, well, I mean, the first thing we can do is just see if there's an obvious right and left, but, uh, yeah, okay, so there's the hole, and then we'll slide it right in. So perfect. So we need uh, two of those. And let's go to the, the front. And this one, sure, we'll, we'll just use a little smarts. We're not gonna damage the paint or anything, but we're, ooh, bummer, 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 okay. But I, I, we almost need to hold it on the other side. Yeah, we, we almost do. So we're going to get some needle nose pliers. It's always good to just do things right. So we're just going to come in here, grab some needle nose. And then I, I don't have three hands. But uh, how would you do this if you didn't have three hands? Well, you'd get some vice grips. And this is interesting. This is where you actually want that cheap cheapo pair of vice grips that's like hardly that's not very heavy because I, I just want to come in here and uh, just barely barely get any friction on there okay perfect heck yeah that's the, that'll be the third hand and uh well man i need to get it up like ah bummer Oh, it's, it's sticking in too, it's too much. Oh, m maybe I'll just come in here like this. So we'll just come here. Like I, like I said, I don't care about the paint job at all. You know what I mean? This ain't, I'm not working in a bike shop. I'm just getting the job done. Okay, throw that pin up there. And what? Oh yeah, yeah. So I was like, well, where's the pin on this one? I just took it out. I mean, that's my brain, you know what I mean? That, that's why I like to work on bikes, but just myself, I, I don't wanna have a boss, you know, like leaning over me, saying like, whoa, you're doing everything. You know, we don't like you. We don't like your personality, you know what I mean? I know you're working just as hard as everyone else, but when we pay you at the end of the day, some reason it just hurts a little bit more. You know what I mean? I, I, just, I just can't deal with that, you know what I mean? No one can. Okay, so, uh, okay, and then, uh, so, okay, so when we, when we go to uh, do the job, we'll, we'll slide them in. Those will rest on there. The pin will go through, and uh, you, you can't mess that up. But I'm just saying that because you can. Okay, and so those are just all the same. And uh, I just need a little rubber band. Perfect, and it is, this is way overkill. Um, but there you go. Put them in my pocket. And, and is that it? Is that it? So we got, don't touch those brakes. 
We don't need a chain. I got the cables. Do we have uh, juice? Okay, that was the other thing. So the, the stuff for the box is like right here. And we do not want our back pain to flare up on us. Hell no. Um, because I don't, I don't need a, I don't need a bleed kit. Whoa, I got a chain. Whoa, this must be an eight speed. Man, darn it. No, I did. I bought this chain and, uh, okay. It's a HG 40. So, uh, if I look that up, I'll know exactly what that is. Okay. But right in here, I think I might have some mineral oil. Yeah, there you go. So is that gonna be enough mineral oil? Well, probably not. So uh, let's, let's get her done. So here, we, we'll reuse these. And we got our syringe. And we're gonna come in here. And, uh, cause if you don't wanna bleed brakes, but in, anytime you're gonna do the shortcut, at least, like, what am I doing? When, what am I going to do right now with a shortcut? Um, so just get that barely tight. But look at this. So I have a brake line. Um, you know what I mean? Hey, let's at least, if we're going to do the shortcut, let's at least learn about something. So we're going to learn about what, like, what wrench is that? It's an 8 millimeter. Okay, fair enough. So I'm going to come in here. I got to get this crap out of the way all right so we're gonna get our eight millimeter this is where you go to those garage sales make sure you get a seven and a nine what we don't have any eights uh you kidding oh there it is oh that looks like a good one too okay so we're just gonna come in here and again same thing we want to know how tight these are because because actually even just doing this we measured it as eight is this pipe thread you know what i mean because see how it's not see how it's actually not in all the way you know maybe it is just bottomed all the way out and that's enough to hold the tension or hold the pressure but uh you know what i mean so i'm, I'm going to do the opposite so i'm going to go one way see how tight it is okay it's that tight i'm going to go to the other way to see if i can loosen it Okay, I can loosen it and then go this way to tighten it to spec. And uh, perfect. And now we're gonna do, do not touch that. Holy, holy hell. Oh, see we can't do this right now either. And I have no idea if we have enough mineral oil. We probably don't, we should just get some more. Um, because uh, we don't have a block, you know what I mean? You need to stick a, a big old block in there, but so here's the whole kit. Yeah. So it's, it's got a block. Um, uh, maybe it's got two of them. So don't read the directions. Okay. So we're, we're going to see if any of this makes sense because, uh, yeah, you have to hold that spacing. Okay, so uh, is, and I can't slide that in. Oh, okay. So this broke. At some point that slid in, um, but it broke. Oh, that's a bummer. Um... Okay, but anyway, we need to get the new brake pads in anyway, uh, throw the wheels in, and then what we'll do, we'll, we'll at least get this going. All right, and the last time we made a huge mess up, we, uh, And we'll just do this one right here because this one's the shorter one. Okay, so we're going to uh, 
Okay, that was the right, it's, it's hardly the right tool. I need to go like one down, but it, it works. And the last time I dropped these screws, I mean, they just flew everywhere. It, it was the nightmare. I'd never found it, and it was an older brake. And, uh... So there you go. Put that one there, put that one there. And this thing just comes right off. Mineral oil faces me. Could I mess that up? Nope. So it's, it's got to go that way. Perfect. Okay. You just always double check the stuff that you could mess up. Now this thing, hell yeah, this is probably soft and rubbery. And there you go. So we're going to put it on some soft. Okay. And, uh... Wait, 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 was this... I don't even know which brake was the crap Ola brake. But, uh... But now, now, now I gotta go to the bike shop because this, this mineral oil isn't red. You know what I mean? So, we got Dior... D, Shimano Dior brakes. Um... But what, what is this stuff? I thought this was the juice. And, uh... I guess I don't want to ruin these gloves. You know, those nitro gloves can only take so much grease and oil, like one time use, and then they're just toast. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought red was Shimano mineral oil, but I have no idea what this is. Yeah, mineral oil for Shimano, it's red, but that should be a, that should be enough. You know what I mean? So, uh, I'm going to get a, a new bag even though this is gnarly. We'll use this rag. Um, this will go into the garbage. We're gonna, ooh, gonna rag this off. Like I said, we're just gonna get a new bag. There you go, brand new one. Brand new used bag. And that's it, that's all the Shimano mineral oil we have. But uh, we'll go to the back shop. But perfect. I don't want to write a list. So we're going to ask about the red versus whatever color that is. And uh, I, I really should just put that back right now. Uh, because And oh, can I mess this up? Sure you could have. Um, but yeah, let's get that on there. Whoa, I feel like I'm gonna mess this up. Just go real easy on the threads, catch them. I'm not putting too much tension on this because we're we're just we're gonna do it just enough so it doesn't leak out everywhere. And I guess it's just mineral oils. Hopefully it's not too toxic. Okay, so we're gonna check on mineral oil. I don't think we need any, but uh you know, maybe it's a good idea. If they got another small bottle, we'll get another small bottle. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, it's not red. Uh, but anyway, we'll ask about that. We'll get those spokes. Perfect. So that means we need to take these spokes. Um, spokes, grips, brakes, brake pads, mineral oil. So spokes, grips, uh, brake pads and mineral oil. So this is two. There's a rubber band on brake pads. That means two. I need to get two sets of brake pads probably. But we'll ask. We'll ask to see if uh, how much life a brake pad. Anyway, uh, sure. I think these are these are. If they got them, we'll replace them. They look fairly thin. Those look thinner than those. Uh, but it's just they're not going to touch this back until I tune it next. And um, I just want to do the work right now. All right, perfect. Let's go to the back shop, and I'll catch you on the flip side. All right, heck yeah, we got some good, we got some goody goodies, and uh, what we get? Well, we got some rim tape because yeah, if this is yeah, this just came out. This is supposed to be glued in there, you know what I mean? So if this is a tubeless tire, um, <clears throat> oh, shoot, no, it's not even a tubeless tire. We can return that. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. Is this the wheel? So no, no, no. Th these were never tubeless. Uh, I guess uh, it just said tubeless. So yeah, you can use that room as tu 
perfect. They're not, we're not bothering with tubeless tires. That's, that's insane. Um, so, but we are replacing spokes in here. And uh, so anyway, do one spoke at a time. Holy Toledo, because you just got to do one spoke at a time. So look at this. Those go in this way. And then the all other ones pop in the other direction. So you just slide them in. And I, I, I don't mind touching the rotor, you know what I mean? Because uh, we'll clean it before we, we do the disc brakes. Okay, so see how this one goes back? So this one hella goes back. And this one goes back and then under. Well, guess what? It's going back and under this one. Um, perfect. So yeah, there you go. So you just do them the same. So does that, that look the same? It, you know, you popped it up and then it went under that one. You know, over, under. So it basically just goes under. Okay, and uh, and uh, and then we'll just do our, we'll do our nipple thing. Oh, and this is so cool. What an amazing tool. You know what I mean? Hopefully that just sticks. Hell yeah, because you'll, you'll just lose your nipple in the frame. That would be a not, that would be a total nightmare. Oh, and I shouldn't have done it that way. Um, let's see if I can let's see if I can get it seated again, and then pull it out just a little bit. Ooh, I buggered this up. Whoa, 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 whoa. So get it, get it in there, and then find it. Okay, perfect. Okay, got one. Hey, I, I like it, and. I, and then we're just going to tighten it down, you know what I mean? And if you don't know how much to tighten it down, we'll grab one that you didn't already loosen. So look how tight those are, you know what I mean? So hell yeah, you can really tighten this down until it's, uh, you know what I mean? Fair is square. Okay, but uh, we, we got to... Oh no, this, this one's good to go. So yeah, that's tight. So just feel how tight they are, and that gives you an idea... Of uh, how tight they should be and honestly this one kind of needs to be more tight and then I think it's okay to get them you know just like the rest of them and uh, it's okay if they're over tight because then when we true it we can loosen this side I always like to at least get this side where it's tight and then loosen it to true it you know, I mean, e even if your wheel's not centered, at least it's true. But it, you know, you're you're truing the wheel, but you're truing it just a little bit on this side. You know, what I mean, these spokes can only take so much tension. You can only get this rim to go that way, you know, because these spokes are are darn vertical. Okay, we're we're just gonna continue on, continuing on. Well, didn't didn't we? Oh, let's let's do the other one. All right, so we're just gonna pop a spoke through. You know what I mean? And yeah, you, you could mess this up. You could go the other way. You know, see how see how you can't see the nubbin? And you can see the nubbin. You know, so these spokes went in that way and then turned. Okay, so this uh, came out this way. And we're going to see how this spoke goes under that one. Well, guess what? This spoke's going to go under that one. And just bow it out. There you go. Just make a nice circle so you're not just damaging the spoke. Okay, perfect. And we'll get it in, get it in the right spot. Okay, this is our last bummer spoke. And uh Hey, we're we're going to we're going to make a, another tool because that works so well. Uh so we're going to get some of this double-sided tape. And maybe we should just get some more double-sided tape. I don't have any out here and I don't want to make a trip inside. But we're just going to see if we can make a, another tool real fast. Ooh, that stuff was sticky and did not want to come off. Okay, so we're just going to do this and that. And then, uh, you know. Oh, that, that, that sucked. Okay, never mind. I, I just, I just lost my original tool. Now, hopefully the angle is just not god-awful this entire video. Just needed a little bit down. Okay, wh wh where's our tool? Uh Okay, there it is. Oh, where's our spoke? Where's our nipple? Oh my god, we are losing our mind. There it is. And 
and it only worked a couple times. There's no more there's no more juice on the end of that. So maybe I will. Yeah. Oh, oh, whoa, this is pro tip. You don't want to lose your spoke nipple. Well hell yeah, because uh you can uh you can screw it in this side. You know, at least just a little bit. It, it, it seemed like it was all it was all cross threaded when I went that side, but now 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 I can just stick it on there and, and then get it and then unscrew it. Oh booyah, that's pro tip. Pro tip on me. And now we can come in with a friggin' normal size screwdriver. Um well, I think I need the bigger one, though, because it fits in that nipple so much better. But anyway, we're tightening it up. And uh, see how that one's still loose? One, two, three. And see, just get it as tight as it, uh, you know what I mean, should be. Perfect. And, and now we're just rocket fire. Okay, now we're going to replace this one. So we're going to come in here, and hopefully they loosen, loosen all good luck. But it's not. It's, 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 it's twisting that spoke. So it would be good to have a tool. And maybe, maybe you don't want to, maybe it's not a very good idea to come in from that side. You know what I mean? So uh, we're just going to loosen this. I, I think, yeah, this is the way to go. Just come in here, loosen that. But yeah, now you can just get it by, by finger. Okay, I, I guess at some point you gotta, you gotta do this. Oh, but look at this. Pro tip again. We're, we're just gonna take, you know, one of these garbage ones. And, uh, we're going to, uh, see if we can, see if we can thread it in there. See, it's so garbage that, uh... I can't even, I can't even thread it in there. That's too bad. That's too bad. Okay, so, uh, okay, that don't work. That don't work. But again, just put a little tension on that, because, and how do you get it out? Well, we're st we still need our tool. We still need our tool to get that puppy out of there. So, uh, get some tape on it. Whoa, there's just enough sticky tape on that. Good to know. Okay, where's our hole? Um, where, where'd it go? Oh, we didn't take the spoke out. Got it. Yeah, this is garbage spoke. That can get thrown away just throw it right there for now we're gonna come in with our new spoke okay now this one went under there so this one goes under here and again put a moment put a moment right at the end it makes a nice little bend and uh, you can get it underneath that spoke get it up over the rim Okay, get it into position. Now, I don't know. I'm still going to try this method. I'm going to take a, a new spoke. Well, no, I don't want to take a new one. But, yeah, we're, we're going to see if I can actually thread this on here, just like one or two. Okay, per, it's good enough. Uh, man, just the, the tops of those spokes are all buggered up. And that's not from me. That's from the machine. Look. There, there was a machine that just totally screwed that on there and then just cut it on the way out. That's interesting. So you know these uh, spo you know these wheels were made by a machine because the machine came in and tightened this and then when it popped it out, it left a cut on each of those spoke nipples. You know what I mean? So they're just all they're just all shredded. That's detective work. Um. But this is a good way to do it. Throw your uh, throw your spoke on the other end, and you can at least catch it, and then remove it. So then you're not losing these uh, spokes down your rim. And I think I can get the other glove on. Keep the hands so fresh, so clean. Okay, so now we're going to uh, tighten that. Hey, we're getting there. 
Yeah, we're almost there on that one. Go just a little bit more. Okay. You know, and hopefully we're not going too much, but that looks pretty good. So that's how you check the tension. It should move in just the same amount. All right. Shoot, we got like four more of these, but this is worth it. You know, this will cost you the price of the wheel, you know, just in labor. Oh, and again, why am I doing this? You know, I mean, you use this. And then lefty loosey from the top. So that nipple unscrews from the top. But from this side, see how I'm going righty tighty? Yeah, that, that's why it's opposite. If you never knew that, that's why it's opposite. These nipples are normal. These nipples are normal from the top. And uh, just put some tension on the spoke. And uh, we'll get our screwdriver in there until it pops out. All right, perfect. And then let's see if uh, we've got enough tape. Woo, not really. All right, save the day. All right, these spokes are total garbage. So you're just flinging them out of there. And, uh, but yeah, we didn't do nothing today. I mean, it's like three hours into this back tune. It's like five o'clock or something. And, uh, whoa, see this one just needs to be cut. So uh, this is crazy. And you don't, see, you don't want to bugger up these holes. E even the fact that these got munched. Um, so now we want to come in with some clippers. Now, I just got my mom, you know, real nice clippers and uh, for her work. And so we're, we're going to come just right in here, clip that. This is... Uh, Oh, those aren't the way to go, but yes, that did it. Oof, close your eyes. Uh, those worked. These are channel lock, hell yeah. And, uh, but after one use, you know what I mean, take the microphone, microscope to it. Those look dull as hell. Nah, I guess, I guess it's just the paint. I don't know. I, I guess they do their thing. Anyway. Yeah, anything fancy you can be not impressed with because you just too much expectations. But see how that hole's kind of buggered up? That might make our spoke break in the future just right there. Okay, is that going the right way? Yep. And then this one, this one goes under that one. So this one goes under that one. And then in that hole. Okay, so uh, whoop, 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 whoop. But I like this method. Come in here and then just try to get a thread or two. Just enough tension that it holds it. Ooh, that is barely doing anything. And then you're gonna come in here, put it right there. Ho ho, perfect. And I don't, I don't know, is the way to go, let's get this out of here so we're not ruining that because we're going to save it. And yeah, that, that's going to save us 20 bucks. We are definitely returning this. Let's not get it dirty. That's a, uh, holy Toledo, $21 or something. Okay, so this one, see righty, no lefty tidy. So now I go lefty, see how I'm going uh, lefty? But up top, see it's turning that nipple to the right. And, uh, but if you're this way, no, it's the same thing. So if I want to tighten that nipple on there, I, I go lefty loosey. And then that spoke tightens. Because if I look at that nipple from the top, now it's tightening. And using the spoke nipple is probably way better than the screwdriver. It's just not going to damage your nipple. And you're just more accurate. Okay, so how's that doing? I don't know, hard to tell, but let's uh, let's get it some more. Yeah, that, that's nice and nice and good. I don't know, just just one one more, just just a little bit. Just who? It might be just one too much. But like I said, we can loosen these spokes. I just want them tight, and then we can loosen them uh, when we go to true the wheel. All right, so we're gonna loosen this one. But this, see all that clicking and clacking? That's why you want to grip this spoke so the spoke's not just turning. 
You know what I mean? Holy Toledo. So actually, let's get our tool and see if we can just prevent that clicking and clacking. Um, so you want to come in here with this. Where's our two pieces of wood? I don't know. Yeah, this is, this is why it's, it's not a very good... I don't have... I'm not very well organized. Let's get that mineral oil out of here. Everything's just about ready to fall off. Okay, let's get that down there. That was the last thing we were working with. Oh, that's that's so interesting. I don't I don't know where those pieces of wood went. Anyway, I guess it's not meant to be. But uh and we're just removing this spoke anyway. But this is where I'm just losing things. I need to watch my own videos just like, well, where where did I put that spoke wrench? Is it on the wheel? All right, well, let's get some of that bleed kit stuff out of here. Uh, grips. That's a terrible spot to put. Anytime you put something, just make a note. That's like the worst spot to put something. You're just going to forget it for forever. Uh, so let's get it out of here. Whew. Okay, so where's our spoke wrench? Let's get these somewhere else. Whoa, see, I, brought, I bought a bunch of noodles. That's so cool. Let's just throw all the noodles in there. You know what I mean? Just so, uh, it was worth it. They're like a dollar each. And uh, I tune a lot of bikes where it's just, if I replace this noodle, their braking is just amazing. You know what I mean? There's nothing worse, there it is. There's nothing worse than replacing brakes and housing and you can't replace the noodle and their, their rear brake is just still god awful. Okay, so uh, we're gonna replace that one. Ooh, see that nipple's all messed up too. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Okay, there we go. No, this is the classic one where... We, I don't know. I wish I had my tool to grip that spoke so it just wasn't turning the spoke. Okay, perfect. Oh, okay. So I'm going to a storytelling thing tonight and doors open at 630. So I definitely need to eat dinner. Wow, you know, I'm so glad I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this stuff because I was just going to do this until 9 p.m. tonight. You know what I mean? But tonight's not the night. So we're definitely not going to finish this bike. So that's life. You know what I mean? Y you can't, you can't win them all. See how just garbage that is? So we're going to have to do the same thing. We're gonna have to come in here, but we're, we're gonna test all these channel locks. No, no, we're just gonna use these. These are the ones where you're just like, close your eyes, and it doesn't matter if they're dull, they get the job done. Okay, one, two, three, close your eyes. Whoa, okay, perfect. Whoa, we still got four more spokes. Man, this is, this is brutal. But it is fun, it's fun. And we got a method to our madness, you know, I mean, we really can't mess up. Because we're uh, tightening all this, but we're taking one out and then just tightening it, and we know how tight it is. And like I said, now you got a method to the madness, or like, yeah, these are your straight spokes on this side. Tighten them all to hell, and then when you go to true the wheel, loosen this side until the wheel comes true. All right, less talking, more doing. Now, w w see, that was too much yapping, and now we're missing the top of that nipple. Whoa, this is not good. I mean, it's it's not caught in there. And, uh, oh! It couldn't have been attached to the spoke, because there's... That's not the spoke, but it just... It couldn't be attached to the spoke. I, I don't think so. That wouldn't make any sense. Because we had to, we had to get it out of there. It's not atta it's attached to the screwdriver. I was like, it can't be attached to the screwdriver either. But it was. Th that's where my brain can't handle... Like, I could never be a surgeon. I was just like, yeah, the, you, all the tools are just inside your body. And then we go sew you up. Uh, you know, everything would just have to be extra 
autoclaved extra sterile because I would just leave you know you would just have metal tools in you after I, I sewed you back up and it would, you just have to live with it you know what I mean you're just like David's the best surgeon in the world but sometimes he just doesn't he misplaces things you know that's all okay so we got that and uh oh see that that nipple's buggered up but we're reusing we're recycling i mean we can always go go to the bike shop again one more time but i don't want to that would be nutty and uh, again nice and tight just right and it's i don't know is it overly tight i don't know because if i'm if i'm continuing but no see this spoke wasn't one of the ones I replaced. It was coming from the other side. So I'm, I'm, I'm pressing up against a known spoke. So I can even kind of go, you know, like one more tight. There you go. Okay, we got one, two, three. Seven spokes. This is a lot. You know, this, I don't know. If you had a, if you had a tool to just do this fast. Um, but this is nice. Maybe three spokes a minute. Or I mean, uh, five minutes per spoke. Three minutes per spoke. And, I, and I'm garbaging up this nipple, so you got to be careful. Now, did I get the right length spokes? Because let's say this is the one that I did. Yes, it's not sticking up through. So, uh, so they're definitely not too long. Not that too long of spokes would be a big deal, but I guess you wouldn't want them too short, I guess. Because you need to catch enough threads that make sense. But I think we are. Like, it's... I'm glad they're a little shorter, actually. It would have been a bum deal if they were too long. They just would have been too long. Whoa, that's barely sticking on there. But now if I can remember... It's still on the screwdriver. And my blood sugar again is real low. All right, we got to clip this spoke off. Close your eyes. All right, three more spokes, but we're doing it. Okay, under... Yeah, I don't know. Putting together a wheel is satisfying because you're just doing the same process over again. There's really not met much to mess up. I mean, because each spoke is an individual. Yeah, speak of uh, what could happen. Man, I I'm going to get more tape on this because I do not want to lose a spoke down the rim. That would, that would be awful. So I'm going to catch on the flip side. All right. Got some tape. Okay, so here you go. Yeah, double-sided tape. This stuff is magic. Um, get a, get a get a fresh slice going. Uh, oof, garbage right there. Uh, I don't know. We'll just roll the garbage right there. Okay, just get a little fresh slot. Oops, perfect. And then we'll just do this, and then roll it over. I don't know. Can we pinch the ends in? That'll seal the deal. Heck yeah. Pinch the ends in and then roll the ends. Uh, maybe just one direction. There we go. And uh, throw that in there. Oh, this is such a great idea. And I'm going to throw the gloves on. Keep it, keep it clean. All right, so we got this spoke. Now, it's interesting. Like, this mess is not bothering me. Like, I got back pain. So, at the end of the day, it's all about elevation. Like, I absolutely love the height of this table. It's perfect. Especially working on the wheel. It's just, it's just the right height for me. Okay, so we're going to uh, righty-tighty this. Ooh, look at that. So, I got to almost go, like, a full 360. Man, is anyone depressed because there's no hockey and there's no basketball? You know what I mean? 
like sports, there, there's nothing worse than like a, a season coming to an end. You know, I think the depression actually starts before the season's over. You're just like pretty soon, you know what I mean, there's going to be no sports worth watching. Basketball's over, hockey's over, what, what the hell is there, baseball? You know, they're, they're, that's tr that's uh, 12 months of the year there's baseball, y you know, so... Uh, but no, 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 no. Uh, baseball is the only se that's that's the only season where it's just like the end of baseball. But you have, uh, you know, football is just in full swing. So baseball is just a just a bonus point for for October. Um, okay, that's tight. That's tight enough, I think. And uh, but yeah, the most depressing is when football gets over. You're just like shoot. You know, the only thing you have to look forward to on the weekend is, like, a, a bad episode of SNL. You know what I mean? You're like, damn it. Um, yeah, it, it's real depressing. Maybe that'll make you more depressed. You know what I mean? You're just like, shoot, I thought SNL was going to cure my depression, but I think it's causing it, you know? So, uh, but yeah, it's just a hard time. You know, February, you're like, that's, that's, a, that's a tough month. I think that's a tough month for anyone. Okay, I think we're about about square on this. Uh, see, losing tools. That's the only thing. Maybe there's too much stuff here. So, uh, um, you know, like this. I don't know, just put that there. I don't know. Uh, this stuff, yeah. So we got the juice. Ugh. I don't think I'm going to use those at all. Specialty tools. But let's just get a little bit more civil. So we're pushing this all the way up here. Um, this is for the juice. We're kind of done with that. Not, well, yeah, yeah, we're done with that. We got the tape. Tape can go there. But now if I put a tool down, it'll be right here. Now, am I going to use any of these tools for the rest of the little bit? Uh, you know, not really. Got to put that back. And we're kind of done with those, too. We need to use this. Sure, that's a good reminder. I don't like that one. We got to put that one back. Maybe put that one back. JB Weld, holy Toledo. We're just getting a little bit insane. Oh, that's interesting. That was from a project. We'll just toss that up there. That was for the weed eater. Um, we might use that. Whew, just parts. Now, now we're getting back into... Whoa, just bike parts. Yeah, it is a good tool. Ah, I need to make another one of those, though. All right, I'm just going to throw those on that side. So, yeah, I don't mind the mess, but look at this. We're, we're doing so much better now that we're kind of uh, figuring out where we want things. Because especially if things don't need to be around, you know, it's like that, even that thing. All right, so these are the tools that we might use or we need to put away um, everything else. So at least we got a little work area that makes sense. And we are removing the spoke, right? Heck yes. All right. And uh, let's see if there's anything sticky about this. Got it. And do we need to cut this one? Heck yeah, we need to cut them all. All right, close your eyes in three, two. Let's get a close-up, but I'm going to close my eyes. Whew. Whoa. I guess that could still just go right through my eyeballs. I should have held on to it. But see how that hole is just... That hole just got garbaged up. Oh, I cut it too high. So yeah, we got to cut it again. And this is the one you really got to uh, cover your eyes. So I'm just going to look away. No, I kind of want to... Kind of No, I got glasses on. Man, I'm just going to do that and that. Do you see it? Okay, it hit the top of my head. That's kind of dangerous. We're kind of playing with fire here. You know, your eyelid, you think that's going to stop a speeding bullet? Hell no. You're like, oh, I just closed my eyes, though. Um, yeah, you need safety glasses. And I guess I'm wearing glasses, so that that's helpful. Okay, this one goes under. Under that spoke. All right. And let's get it. I think we just have two more spokes. One more after this one. That's it. 
Oh, don't, don't, don't mess this one up. Yeah, this one needs extra loving. You know, it's all right if something needs a little extra, extra. You know what I mean? Whew. This one wants to just fall into the rim. I know it. So we'll, we'll give it what it wants. You know what I mean? It definitely wants some extra. There you go. Perfect. Gotcha. It's all right if something's asking for more attention. You know what I mean? It's okay. Every once in a while, you're like, okay, this thing's asking for more attention. You know what I mean? And we all know. Uh, it's okay to give... Because L's is just going to ruin your day. The thing that's asking for more attention, for sure, just has so much opportunity to be like, oh my god, I'm going to lose my mind. So, uh, yeah, just assess, see what the, the needs are, and heck yet. Make sure it don't ruin your day. Okay, look at that. Look at that. It's nice and tight. Maybe just one more, maybe? Cool. Perfect. Yeah, screaming tight. Whoa, okay, we're down to the last spoke. Now, if you just wanted to, you just cut your spokes, you know what I mean? But uh, that, that sounds crazy. Well, no, maybe it doesn't. You know what I mean? Maybe that's just the way to go. Just take this and uh, hold What's going to happen? I'm going to close my eyes. Woo! Yeah, that was crazy. And then I don't know where that went. Yeah, I'm glad I got glasses on. Uh, so now I need to watch the footage because... I need that nipple. So that that's I guess if you're gonna cut something, make sure it's like, you know, make sure you got a blanket over it and you're not filming it. But where did that go? I think it went under the I think it went under there. Oh bummer. Well, this is my life. This happened last time. You know what I mean? You do you do one thing and you're just well it looks like I'm cleaning the garage for the next twenty four hours. Uh, there it is. Okay, perfect. It didn't go way over there. It just went right here. But yeah, live and learn, I guess. Oh, shoot. And now, when I go to loosen this spoke, I don't even think I can loosen it because it's super tight. Yep, so I needed all that friction. But now, we can definitely do our, our little thing. You know, it's just an experiment. It's like, okay, I, I got a, a little piece of wood right there. And, uh, oh, perfect. Th these are going to be your money pieces. So you're going to take two little pieces of wood, and, and you're just going to sandwich it. And all we're trying to figure out is uh, how much tension you need. Because look at that. I, I just want to make some vice grips. You would do about this much, and then you would take even just these. Just sacrifice these vice grips. Um, whoa. Where are we at? Okay, because what I would do is I would like JB weld two pieces of wood onto these vice grips and then because uh, then you can just grip grip your spoke wherever you want because now, now you can come in, you know, on your wheel and then you can just hella tighten and then and then you can get close so then you're not just like turning the whole spoke like three times. That's the thing. I mean, it takes the same amount of... Uh, it takes the same amount of torque, you know what I mean, Newton meters to turn this thing, but you'll just end up turning the spoke like three or four times before you build up that Newton meters. But if you grip even closer to this, so the tool would be, hell yeah, a little piece of wood come in there, grip right near the top, grip it just with some soft wood. Look, that wood's real soft too, not damaging anything. Now you come in, ugh, I was off by like a millimeter or two. But there you go. So now, now you're gripping right there. So now this is in. It takes the same Newton. Why am I off on this? Okay, let's do this. There you go. Okay, so you, you got the. And I don't know. Maybe that's not enough friction on the spoke. There, there's a little bit of angle there. But okay. So I'm going to loosen this spoke and see. Yes, it loosens real easy. And maybe I already started it. But I think you get the gist. Uh, this tool, all you would need was go to a garage sale, get like the cheapest pair of vice grips you can find for like three dollars, maybe two dollars. You know, if you can get it for a dollar on the half off, hell yeah. And then what you would do is you'd take two pieces of wood just like this, JB weld the hell out of the, the, the metal and the wood right there, and then you would have two pieces of wood in between there, and then you got to... I think it would make... 
And maybe you would just mar up the spokes. Maybe you're flattening the spokes. I don't think so. I think you're doing yourself a favor because there's nothing worse than like turning a spoke like three or four times. It just seems like, and you can tell it's making all those popping noises. It's awful. Okay, so this is the last one. There's the spoke nipple. Uh, we do need to cut this. I ain't messing around. I'm going to, uh, we're going to do it right. You're going to put this over it, and then we're going to put some cloth edge. And then we cut it. We didn't have to close our eyes, so that's the smarter way to do that. Okay, last one. Get it in there. Same process. Uh, this one goes under. This one goes under. And I'm all right, you know what I mean? Let's say we did mess up. If there's a way to mess this up, like, I probably did it. You know what I mean? But I just don't think there is on this one. But I'm a little cocky right now. So, uh, sure, life's going to throw me a huge curveball. And it's going to be like, you're going to have to just redo this whole wheel. Bummer, bummer, bummer. Okay, I think I can just get the spoke in. And then there you go. You can smiley face the spoke enough to get the nipple to start. Okay, got that in there. And where's... See, I, see, I don't get it. I don't need that, that's for sure. Um, yeah, this is kind of garbage. Whew, 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 whew. Garbage. Whoops. And we're done with this. But where is that spoke wrench? See, I need to watch my footage of what I'm doing. Because I, I don't know why I can't find that no more. Uh. Oh, there it is. So I guess I'm just throwing it into there. That's the worst place to throw this stuff. All right, righty tighty. If you're looking at from the top, all right, heck yeah, those those are those are tight. Okay, perfect. Whoa, we did it. And uh, man, okay, so here here's the here's this lever. Now here, here's a here's a freebie on me. You know, there's only there's only a couple places that really need. Just a little bit of grease, and then let's get our let's get our grease unit out. Like th this is one of my favorite. Now this is this is real hard. I, I would switch up the grease in here to something that's just a little bit easier to push. But oh, what are we doing? Oh boy. Okay, I, I guess we're fine. We're fine. Okay, but this, the, these two, these two seat in here like this. So uh, all, all I'm gonna do. But I wish this was just a little bit easier, but it is so nice because it's super, look at that, you just throw a little, just a, just the perfect amount just right in there, and, and that is just, oh, that's just so good. That's just the, the absolute ideal amount, and even just right in here, you know, just a one and two, and, and that's going to be the right amount there, you know, so it, it turns just a little bit, and then maybe just a, a dab there. So now you'll uh, turn that all the way around. And if you thought you overkilled it, you know, you just kind of wipe it all off again. Um, but these small working parts, it, it, that's the money. You know what I mean? And I, I don't know. That's why I don't do triflo because it smells. But um, let's see if we can just get this just to, just to come out just a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, uh, that's still too much. But even just that, you you work a little penetrating oil into that, um, and but it just it gets everywhere. That that's the only bummer about that. Oh no, we have a tool. We we actually have a my brother. It was like one of the most fantastic tools. It took it was a it was a birthday present, so it took me about five years to actually use it, like most birthday presents. But it was an oiler. And, uh, whoa, hopefully I do have that in my bike stuff. I don't think I have it in here because it's, it's kind of a fancy enough tool that you'd want to keep it kind of, kind of safe. But that's the issue with those little tools. You're just like, I don't know where I put them. 
uh, once you use them. But it's a little oiler. I'm, I'm gonna look at bike number two. Yeah, there's nothing in there. That, that's just garbage. Uh, but yeah, you just get the right amount and you can fill it with WD-40, no problem. And then once, you, okay, you gotta get these calipers out of here. Holy Toledo. Okay, there it is. Yeah, so it is in here. Okay, let's try this. This is a viral video right here. So uh, l l l let's see if there's any oil in here. Well, I guess you got to take off the top. And uh, so you're just going to, is there any oil left? Well, I mean, there's a little bit, but let's fill it. Well, let's do the full show so you know what we're talking about. So, yeah, I'm sure this isn't more than 10 bucks. You know, it's probably 20 bucks maybe, you know, if it's, a, I don't know, it's not too complicated. But you're just coming in here and you're just filling it up. Now it's like champagne, so uh, you got to do that a couple times. But, but yeah, that's all right. That's all right. And uh, so I, I think you got enough. But yeah, you you don't want to fill it up uh, to the top, so you do like that champagne thing. Um, but yeah, once it's in there, I think it's fully sealed, and there you go. So then, then the only the only oil that's coming out is just right there. And what I would do is I, I you could make a mix because uh, you could uh, take WD-40 and then just add a little bit of grease to it. You, what you would want to do is get a little grease in a bowl and then start mixing the oil into the grease until it gets thin enough. And then so then when you apply WD-40, you know because that that is almost way too much. But that, that worked, you know what I mean? And uh, it gets, it penetrates in there. And I guess you could do both sides. L let's see if we can do this just, just barely hitting it. Yeah, there you go, barely hit it. You know, work it in. But I don't know, it's just like, th this is the stuff that you'll notice. You know, I mean, when you go tune a bike, like don't clean it. You, you know, that's the last thing you should, unless you don't know anything about bikes, sure, clean your bike a thousand times. And then you're like, you know, you can at least identify what the parts are. Um, but when it comes down to actually doing something on your bike, uh, but you got to be careful about not just getting oil the hell everywhere. You know, I mean, you don't want your bike just to be dripping with oil. But all right, let's get the oiler over here. So it's in a safe spot. But yeah, this is real cool because I, I can just even come in here and uh, I don't know. And then like, I don't like that. That toothbrush was just god awful for uh and, and i better get these in here we're, we're just gonna wing this thing on and then wing it off that was a little overkill oh but but i i guess i guess the other place that you want to actually throw a little oil is uh these can rust you know what i mean so uh but that's just the right amount. Look at that. You don't need any more than that. You're done and done. You know, you could touch that with your normal hand and it, you wouldn't get you too oily. Too greasy. Okay, so we, we just got to do this though. Holy Toledo. So lever on left. This is why I did this first. Oh, we got to get the cassette on. Okay, there's the thin one. And there's nothing on this side. Sure, yeah, we can we can at least get the grease off those rings. Whoa, this thing is just ready to come apart though. Like like that little that one is like literally the only one that's holding it together. Um, that's interesting. Now the other thing that you want to do is you'd want to put this in a parts washer like overnight and then uh, like it would literally just dissolve. Like you don't you don't want to do any scrubbing. I don't know, but I just, just care less. It doesn't have much grease on it anyway. It's not going to increase the performance of your bike. Uh, it, it's just you got to get all that degreaser off. That That's the conundrum at the end of the day is just like, well, how the hell are you going to get all that grease? degreaser out of your you know then your bike's just dripping okay so uh 
There's the small one. And there's the small one. Yeah, I, I love this, though. This is the part about bike mechanic. You just feel like a, a NASA scientist putting together a rocket, you know. And maybe you're not supposed to have any grease on that thing anyway, but uh, it ain't it ain't loosening, that's for sure. This thing goes on like hella tight. It, you want a little bit of grease, so at the end of the day, you're not just, like, breaking it to get it off, breaking that ring apart. Um, and I, I don't think I'm missing anything, but, yeah, here's how much tension I put on it. That's probably plenty. I'm, I'm satisfied. Because the other thing you're doing is you're just compressing all the plastic, you know, so then your gaps are smaller. So you, you should do this to spec, you know what I mean? It, it probably says it right on there. Um, but hell yeah, we'll, we'll get that out of the way. Lever goes on left, cassettes on the right, drivetrains on the right. Um, but yeah, that, that was this first mechanic, you know, is levers on the left. You know what I mean? Then you're not just acting a fool. Okay. Um, perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, get some fresh, fresh gloves. We're going to get some alcohol. We're going to get a fresh, fresh towel. And I, and I like these. These are, you get a paint, you get all the, you get, like these are painting rags. Is that clean enough? I don't know why it looks so dirty. It looks like those are used. Um, but yeah, there, there's a clean one. Perfect. And there's two things you can do here. Like well, one, one, let's hella, let's hella uh, get it uh, alcoholed up. You know, I mean, we got fresh gloves on. We're not touching anything else. And really, you shouldn't touch your gloves to it because if it's greasy, then your gloves are greasy. So all we've touched right now, hopefully, is just this rim and the this piece of cloth. But yeah, that that's quite a bit of that's quite a bit of dirt. Flip it over because you still got alcohol on that side. Oh, 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 hell yeah. All right, I'm gonna make a little viral video because what you, what you can do is use like a little bit of a abrasive, you know what I mean? Well, that was the other thing. It was just like, how, uh, how worn is this rotor? And it's not. So yeah, we're, we're, good. we're fine there, you know, but you can see the width difference, you know what I mean? So, uh, uh, I don't know how, I don't know if I can get the calipers in here. I can't, uh, but maybe I can. Yeah, look at that. So I can get the calipers in here and I can compare what uh, the new one was. We'll just do it in millimeters. Um, so I, I like this part. It's kind of like the science of it. So a new rotor is a uh, 1.86. And I don't know, we're just doing a comparison. You know what I mean? Because that might not be... I might not have zeroed this out. Um, and uh, 1.76. So yeah, we took a full tenth of a millimeter off. You know what I mean? And it's zeroed just fine. So that's cool. So, uh, but look at that. That, that, that says 1.95. So, no, 1.77. And then we'll slide it in here. Do it again. Um, 1.85. So yeah, just less than a tenth of a millimeter. So now, if I ever did some research, I could actually figure out... We'll just get... Man, go light on the alcohol. You don't want to breathe this stuff. That's that's all. You don't need too much alcohol at all. But yeah, you're really cleaning it up. You know, you're not putting any oil onto your uh, rotors. Okay, let's get that out of here. I'm just going to throw that up there with the fresh, fresh gloves. Get the greasy gloves on. All right, and I, and I guess we can reuse this rim tape. We're, we're not doing a tubeless tire. This is the right side of the bike. This is the hole. 
this is the direction we're going. So just all that stuff at the end of the day goes a long way. And uh, get it in uh, position. All right, go halfway, all the way this way, and then maybe back, clip it out right there. Okay, that's perfect. But ooh, look at that rim tape. Man, that, that'll, you're not getting any, you know, this ain't, this ain't flat in your tire. So I definitely like this rim tape. And uh, should we give, is there anything here we need to give the royal treatment? No, it, it's talked enough. Like I, I would go in and talc this, but it's got enough talc on it. Where's my talc bottle? I, I don't even know where it is. So, uh, you know, note to self, if I can find my little extra talc bottle, I need to get that back in my bike stuff. But maybe it's, maybe it's just out of place. I, I don't think so. Okay, good to know. All right, let's do this. We're just touching the rotor up against my shirt. All right, so that goes in there. Don't have to get too clever. I, I don't. I, I, I don't put the the ring on yet. You know what I mean. But let, let's see down. Let's sit down and see if there's any special way. I don't know. I, I think I'm kind of forgetting. All right, there you go. Yeah. So this first part should be pretty easy. Just getting one side over the rim. And then just double check, make sure uh, you can always start from here because now you can keep keep that thing square. Whoa! So this stool I'm almost tipping over in. But yeah, this is a real easy tire to get on. You saw how I got it off, but uh, yep, so pretty straightforward. And uh, okay. Oh, and I that that's what I threw in there. So yes, I uh, kind of messed up. I was just like, what was that little piece? Well, it was, it was just the, the end, you know what I mean? So let's see if we can find another one there. Maybe this is the exact one, but yeah, we'll just slide that on here. All right, and I guess it's gonna get loud because uh, we have to pump up this tire. Whoa, I forgot to take that off. So yeah, we'll, we'll seal the deal there. And uh, we'll throw this on right there. Okay, turn down the volume for the next couple minutes because it's going to get loud. That was perfect. Now, I mean, if you're just like, well, I, I, I paid my money, I'm watching this video, and I wanna learn stuff as I go along, or let's say you just wanna spend 10 minutes getting this tire on, you know what I mean? So, uh, uh, let's see. Um, what we're looking at to see if the, if the wheel hops up and down. Not the rim, but the actual tire on there. So if you get like, if you get like 10 to 15 pounds in here, then you can uh, you can do this to the tire to get the bead to seat, you know, high up on the rim as, as possible. So it's not just like choked and pinched down in there. And then if, if there's lines on the tire, or you know, just even these little bumps, you know, if any of those bumps are like, well, those are the only two I saw. But even right here, look at this. Do, do you think, do you think this riding it is, uh, do you think this height should be the same as that height? Hell yeah, so let's do this. You know what I mean? This is my A-type 
per, I want to learn about stuff and, and then I want to put it into action. I'd get fired right now for taking too much time to put on a friggin' tire. But, uh, so we will just want about 15 PSI, 10 PSI. But uh, e even on kids' bikes, this is so important because kids' bikes are just horribly made. And uh, so no, there, there was none. So, so, so that, that ring right there is kind of where the, the rim is. And uh, well, let's see. No, that's kind of interesting. But I, I can't get that to pop up. But yeah, you get about this much pressure in there, you know what I mean? Then you can, uh, if you identify a hop, because even like right there, that's like almost too much. So you can squish that down a little bit if that's possible. Um, you know, so maybe not, not trying to get it all the way out. But yeah, in a sense, you're truing, you're truing your uh, tire. Uh, you just don't want any pinches in there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the rubber on here is the thing that's the most wonky. You know, even if it's a fancy tire, uh, that's the thing that's going to be hopping up and down. And, yeah, you can see it. It just hops sideways. And, yeah, I, it's sideways, so it might be difficult to see. But, yeah, super lopsided. You know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, if you got to choose what tire you'd want, you would want the review on the company that's making the most true tire. At the end of the day, that's what I would want. At the end of the day, I, I want my tire to be real true. I mean, your wheel's true, your rim, you know, your rim's true, and then you're, you just throw a big old lumpy tire on that's uh, just all lopsided. So, uh, okay, it's gonna get loud again because we gotta, we gotta pump up this tire again. All right, so the get the just the just guessed approach in life is good because like if you can't squeeze these in with your finger, this thing's got like 70 psi in it. But uh, if you can do like, hey, that's about 45 maybe. If you can do like all four fingers, that might be a uh, that might be 45. So I know 50 is like, I don't know. Should, should we throw a should we throw a gauge on here? Um, do I even have a gauge? I should. Yeah, well, let's see. Let's see. Uh, it's always good to be like, oh, yeah, you just guess, you know, and figure it out in life. But yeah, even from a high school kid, I was like, hey, what's 45? You know, what I mean, it feels like, I don't know, you're taking someone's blood pressure, you know, and just, you know, right on the wrist. But you just, man, they're just like, okay. Anyway, I don't know what I was getting at there. But, uh, but yeah, you just push in just a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, well, let's see what it was. Oh, this is going to be so hard because I, I can't. This, this, this pressure gauge won't read like that. So, uh, bummer. Well, look at this. Uh, yeah, this goes up to 50 PSI. It is kind of Boy Scouting your way through a problem. You're just like, well, I don't have a pump in here. It's in my car and I don't want to go out there, but it's good to use your tools. You know, there's a shock pump, but just go easy. You don't want to cross these threads up. But I, I don't know if it'll, if it'll seal the deal. No, no, it'll be good because we're, we're pumping air in. It's got to stop right here. So there you go. Okay, so uh, 50, 60, 70, 80, 
Okay, so there's only it's only 30 psi. Ooh, you know what I mean. I don't think the shock pumps. Uh, maybe it's only accurate. That that's not accurate. That's for sure. So uh, I don't know about that shock pump. Maybe it only works on small shocks or something. You know what I mean? The that don't make sense though. Pressure is pressure. All right, we're we're done. Holy Toledo. Hey, well, let's throw this on here. You know what I mean? Let's give them that. You know, we're throwing a couple hundred dollars at this bike. Um, at least in parts, we're throwing... Well, since we returned that $20 item, we're definitely over 100 Okay, let's get this on. So this is cool. Oh, we need to get our brake pads in. Okay, yeah. Should we show you, should we show you what we got? So here's our, our brake pads. And... Uh, now let's let's get some other gloves and uh okay get a new battery catch on the flip side all right heck yeah we only got an hour and a half uh on this camera but that's perfect because okay here's our gloves uh why is that perfect well we're going to a store telling things tonight and it's a uh, well it's in i need to you know doors open in one hour so we can actually, all right, let's get these so fresh, so clean. So we're going to do the back ones first. Um, but yeah, so this is perfect. Okay. You know, why make, why make life so hard? Why, why do you need to do that to us? Um, you know, what would we need? Scissors, clippers. I don't, I don't know why I need to make, make my life so hard. It's like we were just using these. Perfect. There you go. So clip that. Oh, perfect. Yeah, and it comes with a nice, nice one. Okay, so we're just ready to go. And, uh, yeah, we're going to drop these in because the, the catch is on that side. All right, final answer. Let's do this. And, uh... There you go, just kind of pinch, pinch and go. Okay, so that is that resting? Is that resting real good on that? That looks good, it's resting real good. Did, did I hit the brakes or what? Jeez, there's just like no room in there. What up? Okay, I don't know. That's kind of bizarre. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna. Well, I shouldn't be marring up those pistons. Oh my God, what did I just do? Okay, so huge faux pas. But uh, yeah, I kind of marred up that piston, so don't do that. I was trying to push the piston in. Um, I don't know how would you put a, how would you push the piston in without damaging it? You would probably want to use wood. Yeah, let's do that because th this is going to give us a hell of a lot of trouble. Um, so we're going to pop these puppies out. I just know it. Look at that. There's no room for the rotor. You're like, what the hell? Uh, so one thing that I wanted to look at was the difference in thickness. So here's fresh brake pads, and there's thin ones. They were just like, why are you replacing those? You know what I mean? And no, 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 I, I, I can't. I can't just make. But like one side is worn more than the other. You know what I mean? And they're getting real thin. I mean, you're over. On the one side, you're over 25%. You know, there's only 25% or even even 15 at the lowest on that one so i don't know if you can see the difference but i'll just hold it real steady just for a second but yeah fresh brake pads compared to anyway so you just don't want to touch these things um so let's let's put it and i guess it's not super big deal i think it is though i think it's a real big deal if you touch those okay so what we want to do is we want to get in there and then we want to uh pry that piston and so, what was I thinking? Well, I was thinking if you had a rectangular piece of wood, 
Um, so we're, we're going to come in here, and I'm going to measure. I'm going to measure the the. Oh, okay. Yep. Nope. 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 Um, let's see. I might just have to do it by eye. Okay, there you go. Alright, so we're going to go downstairs and we're going to trim some pieces of wood about that size. But this is exactly what I like about life. It's just like, oh... You know, there's no room. After I put the new pads in, there's no... I can't push those pistons out. So how do you actually push the pistons out? Um, so what we're going to do... Yeah, th this piece of wood will be just fine. Um, well, it'd be nice if we had a little piece of plywood. Yep. Oh, and that's like almost perfect. Uh, oh, well... Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, let's see. It's got to be clean. It doesn't have to be nice, but I guess, I guess we're using this. Perfect. So we're just going to come. We got to go real easy, though. If we're using this saw, holy hell. Okay, don't bump against anything. And uh, we're just going to come in here. And uh, first piece... Okay, here we go. I did that because it's going to drop down and I didn't want it to just go with friggin' a thousand miles an hour at my face. Um, I think we, uh, I think we ran into this issue before where we actually threw a piece of wood in here and clamped it and then you can uh, get, you know, you can clamp small pieces. But that that's actually kind of small, so we're gonna we're gonna come in here. We'll just do one bigger. Whoops, Jesus! Yeah, even that could I don't know. That could get. Hey, that thing could go a thousand miles an hour. All right, let's. We were a little unsafe on that last one. Okay, so we just want something just a little bit, uh, a little bit smaller. All right, I think we got enough pieces just to experiment. But all we're trying to do is get something in there that's this width and then turn it. See, like turn it like a key and then it's going to put a ton of pressure onto that piston, hopefully, without marring it up. But now, when you do this process of like, oh yeah, this could be a good idea, what you also come across is the actual best solution. You know, you would want two pieces of plastic, which I think they give it to you. Look, do they actually, is that what that was? You know what I mean? Like in this kit, I don't read directions, but look at this. Like uh, you get two pieces, like even just these two pieces of plastic are too thin, but then you could, uh, you could run this you could run a wedge in between them. So that, that's the other thing. Like, can you actually get both those pieces of plastic in there? No, so that's a bummer. So what I would do is actually, uh, uh, and I don't even know if that's what these pieces of plastic are for, but I would get two pieces of plastic just like this. And this is interesting because this is almost the same, uh, look at this, ski scraper. So yeah, you could use ski scraper plastic. Um, oh, this is so cool. Uh, but anyway, you know, I could cut this and, and that would be perfect. You'd do two pieces of ski scraper and then jam a wedge in there. 
and then you would do the ski scraper so it's just the size of that piston and then jam a wedge in, and then with a little handle and then you jam a wedge and then hammer it in there and it would that that would be physics if you're using physics that would be the best way to oh my god this thing is uh that almost destroyed my toes Okay, but but uh, let's do this. This is what we wanted to do. So we were just going to shove one in. So that, that's too thick. Um, that's too thin. Oh, and it's too weak. So that, that, that don't work at all. And we're not getting that piston to move anyway. Well... No, we didn't get the piston to move, and uh, I don't think I have any like really good wedges. But the other thing you can use is just wedges. So we have wood shims. Um, okay, there's no wedges in there, I don't think. But I just did a lot of construction this summer, and we had plenty of wedges. So this is part of the video where you might just have to fast forward like uh, until, until we figure out what the hell we're doing. Um, oh, that's bizarre. I thought I put it all, all, I put all, I thought I put all that stuff in a box. But maybe it got in one of these, there you go, wood shims. But yeah, the bummer is I don't have any like composite. Like all these are, uh, but no, no, this, this'll, this would be pretty good. This is exactly what I was thinking is that okay we we don't want something that's like metal oh perfect though there's plenty of other tools in here that are soft like even even that tool that's soft enough but that that ain't going in there at all but yeah like that you know what i mean there you go, perfect. That's exactly what I want. That's all I wanted was just a tool just to go like that. That took me like half hour. Okay, so I pushed the pistons in. So, okay, there you go, there's your tool. You take a pedal wrench and if it's all soft, yeah, then you can push on that piston. Hell yeah, get that piston in there. You know what I mean, push on that piston. And uh, we don't have to push on it too much, but we did it. Man, that, that took, that was crazy. Okay, all these are sealed up. Um, so we can lift this up and then do the same thing just so uh, we don't have to do everything like five times And then uh, we'll just get in there and push on that piston because yeah, we, we got new brake pads Okay Whoa, all right So that's perfect. But this is real time, baby. This is real time. And that was a connect. You can't just throw in new pads and expect to get your rotor in there. That there's no way. So, uh, and I, I don't think I need the gloves. We, we can do this. We can do this just real easy. Uh, but my hands are clean enough, so we're just gonna slide this puppy. You know, just push on one side, get it in there. Okay, it's on the track. And get the pin in. Pin to win. What side does this go? I guess it goes this way. I would imagine it goes this way. Oh, yep, you got to go through that hole. Okay, got it. And well, what we doing? What we doing? Like, uh, if I'm just using a screwdriver to get it undone, you know what I mean? We'll just get a screwdriver to get it done. Yeah, that was almost too much, but hopefully it's hopefully it's still loose in there. It's not putting a weird tension on it Because that's the other thing you wouldn't want Anything weird Okay, well, man, holy Toledo, so this is cool uh, But this is your only opportunity to like kind of clean in here if you wanted to I ain't using Maybe I can get in here. Do I have one? That's just soapy water. That would be perfect. Hell. Yeah, look at that soapy water and then we're talking Walmart. Well, the, these rags will be due. Yeah, just something like this. But I, I don't even like, I like these ones. You get these at Walmart. Hell yeah, we'll just saturate this puppy. 
just with soapy water. And soapy water is great because you can breathe it. You know, it's not like the isopropyl alcohol. Uh, you can't breathe that stuff. So, hey, look, I'm cleaning a bag. I, I said I wouldn't do this. I said this is the last thing you should do. Uh, but this is just your one opportunity to actually clean the inside of your bike. This is the only time I would do this, is if you take your wheel off, because it presents itself. And this bike looks like a, someone was tiling a floor, and they spilled a bunch of stuff on it. Look at that. It's like grout. But yeah, I'm just scratching the frame. You know what I mean? Who cares? That's why I don't do this that often. I mean, there's no best way to do it, because the, the more water you add, uh, you know, the more you're just going to get dirt and all the moving parts. But yeah, like I said, your one opportunity to actually access some of these places where you can be like, whoa, it looks like you power washed your bike. But on closer inspection, no, no, there's, there's some nooks and crannies that we didn't get to. But you know, good enough. All right. And then I would, I would just, I would, I would just throw these away. Just get a clean surface every time you find something dirty. Just so you're not just scraping. Yeah, we're done with that one. Got to throw through that, the one through the wash. Hell yeah, looks like we did it. Wheels going the right direction? Probably not. Um, oh, the wheel is not going the right direction. Damn it. Because I took the tire off. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't mark the rotation direction. Yeah, so we messed that up. But that is going to be better because it's going to grip. See, it's going to have that fresh grip. See how that's just going to grip in? So it's going to feel real good. So uh, this tire is going to be, you know, someone's favorite. And uh, this is a nightmare because I took this off, but you got to catch... You got to catch that chain and uh, here we go, tighten it down. All right, just get it barely. Well, what up? Because, uh, all right, so now we just have to go to this side. We'll do the same thing. We're going to grab a, I guess we'll, we'll try this one. Get some soapy water. And soap, don't worry about soap, you know what I mean? Uh, a rainstorm will make it nice and sudy. And, uh, well, maybe that was too much soap and water. I don't, I don't know. Um, but soap is kind of like a wax. So it's all right to have like a, a layer of soap, you know, on things. I guess they would, ooh, I don't know if you want soap just right on your rotors though or the stanction tubes on your tubes. Yeah, we'll get in here just a little bit. I don't know. Where's that soapy water? But yeah, look at that. That's just all crusty. <laughs> See, yes, yeah, stuff like this. You want to crust that out of there. <laughs> Oof, don't want to breathe that. Yeah, because that, that could just crust off and then just just land right in your uh, places where you don't want it to land. Well, look at all these little tools I got. I was just going to grab a... So, yeah, we can just get in here and... But, yeah, so that's a bad design, the fact that you can get crusties right up in there. You know what I mean? It, it saves weight. You know what I mean? But... Uh, the longevity of your fork might be a little bit compromised. All right, okay, last little spot. Just yeah, just sanding the fork, sanding the paint right off. I don't know. Like I said, grab a fresh surface. Oof. Yeah, do whatever is not sanding your bike. You know what I mean? Don't don't just sand the finish off your bike, I guess. So, uh, 
But yeah, the soap kind of lubricates it. And you know, why, why do you need to hose down? Why do you know, you don't want to pressure wash your whole bike. So I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Hey, even just come in here, you know, a little soapy water, just, I don't know, clean all that garbage off. There you go. Yeah, the O-ring. Um, get that O-ring back on there. Clean that. Heck yeah, dry it off. Okay, perfect. Alright, that was way too much time spent on that, but yeah, it looks like they went through, I don't know, like mortar. That is some cement. Alright, how did we do? Alright, no big chunks. Uh, we're going to put this there. Get a fresh rag when we need it. And hell, are, are we done with this one? No, we gotta get, uh, yeah, get our, get our clean gloves. Just a little alcohol, you know, just one little spray. That goes a long way, you know what I mean? We'll just use that one little wet spot, clean off the rotor, heck yeah. You know, good enough. Once around, flip it over, do the other side. Perfect, get a, get a, clean, get a clean area. One spray of alcohol so you're not just breathing this for days. But this is the same technique I would do on just normal rim brakes. You would, you would run this alcohol and a cloth over your rims and you'll get good braking for about three minutes. Okay, perfect, that's done. Yep, put that stuff there, switch gloves again. Whew, all right, we're doing it. All right, so back to this thing, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, just just way too much, way too much time and effort. You know what I mean? But yeah, okay, we, we got it. So you're gonna take that, you're gonna squish a little in the side, a little in the bottom, right there, right there. Okay, so that's money, honey. And then take the oiler, and just barely, ooh, that was too much. So we need to instantly shake that off. All right, flip it over. Okay, engage it. Make sure it's not dripping with WD-40. <laughs> but see, that's so little, I don't even smell that. So that's good, I'm pretty sensitive to this type of stuff. Okay, just get the threads. Oh yeah, and just a little bit on there. You know, just enough so don't rust. And just even the lightest coating of grease goes a long way. I mean, that, that might last five years. Oh, what am I doing? Okay, uh, lever on left, and I guess that's the same side as the disc brakes. Ah, oh, shoot, did I just touch that? All right, looks like we're going double time on this, so. I don't know if I touched the rotor or not, but there you go. One quick clean, dry, done. Hell yeah, we wanna know what, we wanna know what uh, brand new brakes feel like. And that's what we did for 20 bucks a brake. 
cost 20 bucks for those pads and we're gonna slide this up into there all right perfect so we needed it to do that to get both wheels so now we can set both wheels in place so we're gonna loosen this up get it where it needs to be just nice and nice and tight get it so the rider can actually undo it whoa 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 whoa, whoa. that goes way too far and it's way too hard okay so yeah it's not oh but look at that it's, it's almost gonna catch could you imagine if a rock hit that and then it just went right in i don't like that at all but uh i can still do it and i can do it all the way but look well, look at that clearance i hate that that is i don't like that lever at all yeah nothing like make it i would not want to be in the component making game like i remember that in like a 2000 or something there was like levers that were killing people I don't know, man, that's just a, yeah, there's some components that are just like, yeah, this component is real important, and if you messed it up, um, yeah, same thing on this, we'll have to get it over there, is that too tight? But yeah, it's, that one's a little farther away, I'm, I'm okay with that one. We'll get this nice and tight now. All right, now we can use our Duriller alignment gauge. And I think, I think it's got some, but the most important thing is to not cross thread this. Just go easy, even, even after six threads, just keep it easy cheesy. Okay, get this there. And it, if, cause our, our wheel might not be true. You know what I mean? So check this out, this, this is a great, hey, oh, I never thought of this. Maybe I could just use this as a truing stand. Duh, holy Toledo. Okay, my life is saved. Yeah, I was just like, man, I need a truing stand. And it's your rear wheel that's gonna get the most buggered up. Yes, you can't throw this on the front, but hell yeah. I mean, I think I'm the first one to even do this. You're like, yeah, because it's way out of true. But yeah, you can turn this into a truing stand. Look at that. Oh, this is radical. And it's on the side that you want. Well, no, no, no. We, we need to actually see all those high spots. No, no, we actually want to bring it back this way. Yes. So uh, you, you will, uh, you, you'll find all those gaps and then you, you'll bring the gaps back in because all these are just screaming tight. Um, well, I don't, I don't know. They're, Hopefully they're screaming tight and then we can loosen them. But anyway, so what you want to do, since our wheel's not true, but shoot, maybe we want a truer wheel right now. Let's do it. And, uh, you know, when you're doing this type of stuff, just use your eyeballs. Like, did I even get the wheel in the frame right? You know, does the wheel look more to the left or more to the right? Uh, now, to me, the wheel looks more over on the left. Now, can I... Yeah, holy Toledo. Okay, so the wheel does look more over that way. But that's just the nature of the beast. This thing is so big, and the spokes are so vertical, that to get this wheel perfectly centered in your bike, like, these spokes just have to be super vertical, which means they have to be way too tight. But, I don't know. We'll, we'll do it just a little bit. So we're, we're going to get this... We'll get this rubber thing on there so it makes sense. And yeah, so the, these big spots, um, and yes, this was the spoke that we wanted to uh, tighten. So you, if you look at the top, you're tightening it, and uh, and we'll come back down to here. Wait, what are we doing? Um, oh, we're, we're trying to find the gaps. Yeah, so I didn't want to do that one. That was the dumb one to do. 
So let's go back to this one. And we'll actually loosen this one. Holy Toledo. Because this one was too tight. Oops. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's hanging up here? Here, let's get that off there. Oh, perfect. I can just tighten that on there. There you go. Yeah, it's this spoke again, you know what I mean? We can definitely loosen it up. Okay, this one, is that the same one? No, this is on the opposite side, so uh, we're gonna identify that spoke, but yeah, that spoke's pretty tight. So we're gonna loosen it. And the spokes on either side of it we will loosen. All right, six o'clock. This is gonna be the last thing we do is just true this up just barely. Because we, we, you know, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no uh, master tuner, but uh, I'm just doing the best I can. And again, it's that spoke that's just way too tight, so we're gonna, we're gonna loosen it. Okay, yeah, it's in the ballpark now. Um... Yeah, we can we can just loosen the sp spokes around it just a, just one. So where is this? It's just it's about it's about quarter way after the the uh, the lever. Okay, but see, look at that. We got the we got the spokes in, and it is going good, good enough for me. You know, what I mean, I'm satisfied. At the end of the day, you know, what I mean, it's not going to be true anyway. You know, you're going to go off big bumps, but you just want nice, even tension. And we replaced all the spokes that we needed to, and uh, I'd say it's pretty good. Now let's see if there's any hops in it up and down, and uh, I don't see any. Okay, perfect. But you know, because uh, we're we're going to check to see if this is a. Uh, See how that's there? So you want to flip it up. And, uh, okay. So now we can push this in just a titch. And did that close the gap? Um, not really. Now we'll go over here. And we'll go over here. Okay, so we gotta close the gap in over here. Man, but yeah, these derailleur hangers, they don't wanna move that great, you know what I mean? Um. And then, and then how about this angle? So like right there compared to uh, right there. Yeah, it's still a little farther away, so there you go. Yeah, so that's looking good. It's just right there, that's barely touching. And how about over here? Oh, so maybe we went too far actually. Cause now that's touching pretty good. So go back over here. Um, we need to push it in. And then this side, 
yeah, you need to pull it out. And this derailleur hanger don't want to see derailleur hangers don't want to bend too much. And uh, but hell yeah, I think we got that. We got it pretty darn close. Um, but yeah, you don't want to bust your derailleur hanger, that's for sure. Okay, sweet, we did that. So we adjusted the, we trued the wheel, we uh, aligned the derailleur hanger, and uh, I gotta eat some food, but we're gonna throw this in here. We threw, I think we threw just a little bit of grease, but here, see that, that's why I like this tool, because you can, you can just get just the right amount, you know, you can even just get there in there just a little bit too. Um, but yeah, when it comes to grease in a bike, it, it better be satisfying. I don't care if it's super fast, you know what I mean, but definitely satisfying. Well, where, where are we at? Gonna get that right in there. Where are we at? Holy Toledo. Oh, that's why. We need to zip this thing all the way down to uh, the lowest. <laughs> There you go. So now it's on uh, this gear, which I guess would be the high highest gear, highest gear you could go into faster. First gear is in a car is like, well, we're just going in first gear. Hey, going like five, ten miles an hour. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got to catch these threads. This is crazy. And the crazy thing about this is like you got to catch three or four, but then you got that B screw. You know what I mean? And you don't want to squash that. See how that just rests right there? You could pinch that, and then you'll lose your job. Okay. All right, so you got that in there. That's perfect. I'm going to take the gloves off because we are going to... Well, I shouldn't have done that, but... Okay. Let's see what our shifting shifting is like now. Wait, what the hell? I feel like this shifter is just all buggered up now. No, it just feels god-awful. There's so much tension on that shifter, so there just must be hella friction. See, see, here's, here's how you can feel the friction, you know what I mean? Can I, can I push this this way and that way? Like, that's all right. I'm, I'm satisfied with that, but how about through here? Is it just, just awful? So this is how you'd want to do it. You'd want to go this way and then shove it back up, and now you can see what the friction is through here. Uh, just a little bit uh, Well, you know do this I Don't I don't know how you do this, but yeah, you, you basically want to see what the friction is through uh, this I, I don't know if you can do that, but yeah, there's probably hella friction through there um, This shifter feels awful and this is when you're gonna ruin the pauls, you know what I mean? So that that's when you need new housing and cables um, You know it shifts but whoa, that just feels so garbage. So perfect. But other than that, how do the brakes feel? Can we touch both brakes now? Yes. So uh, yeah, and, and maybe, you know, we'll fill this reservoir, but yeah, there might not be too much air in this line. That's what I like about these big reservoirs. I think they, they might make more sense. Can I hit this brake yet? So yeah, there is just no fluid in this one. Uh, oh. Did we not replace these brakes yet? No, shoot. Okay, yeah, we'll have to take this wheel out, replace these brakes. We'll have to use this tool again to separate it. But uh, I'm glad we got both wheels in because I really wanted to tackle that, 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 that back of that bike. And heck yeah, this is another five, six hour tune, but we're doing it. I gotta eat, go to that storytelling thing. It's a Thursday, we're gonna have a good time and uh, catch you on the flip side. All right, hell yeah, it's day two on the back. Yesterday we did four hours, so you know what I mean? Whatever, from here, what for, like from the beginning of the video, you know, that was the actual work time, but it took four hours because we went to the back shop and stuff. So hell, it's 10.08 and, and we're a little bit late. Okay, back to the back. Wow, that, that was ridiculous. Okay, but uh, so we got the front, we got the back wheel. It's trued. The last thing we did is we got the brakes going. And how's this rear brake? Yeah, the rear brake's actually good, but but we'll fill it up, you know what I mean? You can get it more, because uh, if you fill it up too much and this thing's like so far away, you can use this, see how this, uh, well, let's just turn it. 
So let, let's uh, turn it a bunch. Yeah, see, and now it's just closer. It's closer in. Uh, and then let's see how far out it can get. So yeah, that, that, that's the max. And then w what makes sense? So even just like right now, we can actually get it to uh, what makes friggin' sense. I mean, just something halfway normal. I mean, it's still way out there. Um, there's no adjustment to actually bring the lever in closer. Um, but it's, it's, well, no, no, that does. That, that literally brings it in closer. So doing that, the lever is right there. And then we'll screw it out the other way. See how much farther it is out. So yeah, we're, we're going to screw it all the way. We're going to get pretty close. And uh, maybe back it off uh, just a couple. Okay, yeah, I like that. And then we're going to get it, uh, we're going to get that fired up. Okay, but this one, we got to take the wheel out because we, we done messed up. We, we haven't, uh, we haven't uh, put the brake pads in this guy. And anyway, so we're going to take our tool and we got to spread that piston because the, there you go. So we're going to put some pressure on that piston. What the hell? Why isn't it spreading? Let's get a better look. Yeah, that piston should... Uh... Damn. Maybe it's already in all the way. I don't think so, though. Because, see, that, that piston... Yeah, that wanted to go all the way in. I don't know. I swear it's I swear it's sticking out. But maybe maybe that is. Maybe that's just uh, where where it is. Well, let's do a, a quick little look. Do we have our uh, headlamp? Heck yeah. So we're gonna come over here and just see if we can see anything. You know, this, this is I was gonna talk about this. I was thinking about this this morning. You know what I mean? Like as a bike mechanic. Um, Anytime you can do education for yourself. Yeah, those pistons, I swear, are just totally flush. It's real hard to see in there. But yeah, darn it. I thought I was able to move. Whoa, okay, I don't like a stool. This needs to be bigger. So yeah, if I redid this, I, I would uh, put a different base on and just make it a little bit wider. Because this, look at that, that's the second time I fall. Oh, it's missing a wheel. Oh, okay, it's not just me. Whoa, this is so garbage, look at that. These aren't even screwed in, that's all right. I like to make fun of Harbor Freight because it's a, uh, uh, I won't I won't stop shopping there like this is great. I want to know exactly what China is making you know at all times um, Whoa, this could be so much this could be so much better and so much worse at the same time Weird, okay, th this is just garbage, but uh, okay, so uh the interesting thing is this is a square hole, and I guess it's supposed to go up into there, you know, fairly square. Um, but it doesn't. And then so you can't tighten these things worth a darn. Um, okay, we gotta get we gotta get on with life. Uh, so we're just gonna throw that in there. See that, that that's supposed to, uh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Those wheels are, are crap. But uh, anyway, I don't know. We're, we're just gonna go, go with it. Uh, so back to that, you know, can that piston get pushed in anymore? Well, let's push the piston out. I, I know you're not supposed to push on these 
But yeah, so that, that's pushing the piston out. And let, let's see if we can get it back in. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I, I wanna learn about these systems. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna unscrew this. I gotta check the battery life. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, we can go. We can go like 45 minutes. And yes, I cannot lose these screws. Holy Toledo. So just go real easy on these. Okay, and then we're gonna take that off. Perfect. Okay, so now that reservoir, um, and we'll level the reservoir just a little bit. Perfect. But now, now I, now I should be able to, uh, so like when I push on here, see if any air bubbles come up. Um, but yes, so it, it should move that. Oh, see, see, no, see, it, it's not moving it because it's not air, air tight no more. Oh, 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 you can't drop that oil out. Whoa, this is so interesting. So I move the piston there, and will it move back? That's the question. It moves back a little bit, but why won't it go back all the way? We, we did this yesterday. We got it totally flush. Is this the one like I, I put a mark on and marred it up? Oh, such is life, where you're just like, whoa, why won't that go? So I'm going to go in from this angle. Nope, that won't work. But, uh, but I like that tool where you just get like a tool like this, just something, and then you shove it in there. And then, and then you twist it sideways. I don't want to damage this tool, though. But I can get some vice grips. And we're going to make our own little tool. Okay, and now we're going to turn this sideways. And we're going to see if that... Uh... Now I don't want to damage that piston, but... I, I don't know why it's not going in. I mean, I, I guess it went in just a little bit, so we'll we'll keep doing that. Dang it! That's uh, now the oil's coming out. Shoot! I guess it's just mineral oil. Uh, but I'm, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch shorts. These are my nice shorts, and I already got a little bit of oil on the bummer. All right, and then uh, yeah, I almost need like a, a headlamp that mounts on top of this GoPro. You know what I mean? So uh, maybe we can figure that out uh, later too. Um, but anyway, so we're going to come in here. We're going to clean this up. And uh, yeah, oil was pop. Oil was coming out of this. So uh, yeah, we need to lower it just a little bit. There you go. I'm going to come back in here, see if I can push on this side. I don't get it. It's almost like that's locked in place or something. Uh, does it have any damage on it? I don't think so. That's so interesting that, uh, yeah, that's just a cover. So yes, yeah, it's, it's very fascinating. Okay. And, but it's interesting, like right now I, I could find the port, 
Like, where's the port that you actually fill this sucker up? You know, that's kind of interesting. I don't even know where that's located. Uh, is it... Like, th this screw holds the, the mechanism together. Um... Maybe it, maybe that's the port right, oh yeah, yeah, because you have to have fluid on both sides. Oh, that's so fascinating. So yes, you, you do have, uh, this is driving me nuts though, the fact that I, I can't. I can't get that caliper in there. Well, you know, if you've already spent 10 minutes on something, you know, uh, you just, just throw in the pads. So, uh, we'll, we'll just do that. And, uh, so our pads are right here. And we're totally straightforward on this. Well, ooh, gotta cut them. All right, there you go. This is where they rest, and then the pin goes in there, so the pin goes in there, so this is the direction they go. Um, going to get my tool. Whew. All right, so, uh, and then we're just going to slide them in. Heck yeah, get them to rest. Basically right there and there. And we're gonna get, we're gonna get this to go through. Now does it go this way? I kind of forget. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Yeah, have have the sharp pokey thing go go on the inside of the wheel. That makes sense to me, because then you're not gonna rub up against it at all. All right, we really need to use our gloves today. You know, I don't know. I just got uh, even just a little bit of dirt makes my hands not do well. Heck yeah, breathe. Okay, perfect. Now, now we're just gonna come in here and then just uh, do that. Just a little bit, perfect. That ain't going nowhere. Okay, now, now what's our clearance? Oh, we shouldn't have done that because we're trying to figure out what the hell's our clearance. No, yeah, we have zero clearance. We really need to get that flush. And I don't know why it won't go flush. That is insane to me. Okay, I got I got an idea. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna come in here, and and I guess I'm at the point where I don't mind. You know what I mean? I, for the learning experience, I do not mind. Uh, you know, just buying a new 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 caliper. Okay, so we're gonna take that and we gotta slide these out. Uh, 
All right, just don't touch them. Got to put them somewhere safe. Whew. All right, so uh, we, we need to get that caliper out, and I got, I got a method. So uh, that's, the, that's the width of the finger. Perfect. So what's, what's going to be your method? Well, I, I thought I had metal. And yes, we got metal in here. Pop that out. Is any of it useful? This might be useful. This might be exactly what we need. But uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. Just little pieces like this. That's why I save these, because they, they might be invaluable. Um, but I probably need something a little bit thicker. So th this will just give us a start. But we're going to put metal on this side, metal on that side, and, and then we're going to clamp it together. And then, because th then that's not going to put external pressure, you know, to, uh, on, that, on that rotor. A piston. I mean, it's not going to take this whole... I mean, this ain't too strong. You can't just reef on it and then just start p tearing it apart. Especially because you got an orifice there of, uh, of oil flowing through there. From here to get to that piston and through there to get to that piston. It's so fascinating. Uh, so the oil orifice, I mean, must be... I don't know where it is. Maybe it's just through this top section that that would make the most sense if you got oil there oil there Yeah, you, your little chamber would be right right through there, I guess and then so boop boop scoop scoop Yeah, so there's your oil and then uh, there's your oil Whew. Okay, let's see if we can find any other chunks of metal Because we want to be one and done on this Okay, perfect. There, there's some thicker metal, so that that's good. Man, maybe we should just hold our breath and cut this. And, but uh, yeah, because that's gonna that's gonna be our, our our thickest metal so far. Booyah! And that that's gonna be too much, two inches. I think like this is great plate. I just don't think it'll fit through there. Yeah, not not a friggin' chance, but we're close. Um, we're gonna put this back. Yes, this is the name of the game. If you if you especially when you're experimenting, you know what I mean. Just put put stuff back like almost immediately. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that, that's a good chunk. Perfect. So that, that's going to be absolute money. And, uh, heck yes. So now, now we're going to go back to that other chunk. Uh, you know, whew, that, that's a good chunk. Maybe just those two. And then we're going to be good to go. Um, and then we need a couple of these. Now, these might not be uh, good enough. So, is there any other ones that we might want to to get? Oof, this is tough on the back. Yeah, those two. All right, perfect. Man. I just don't know why that's locked out. That's so bizarre. Like, why can't, why won't it move? Oh, please work. Come on, come on. Heck yes. Okay, so that, that's going to be, that's going to be absolutely awesome. No, it's not, because it's not going to be able to come out this side at all. Okay, there you go. Um... So now, and then you're going to put this plate here. And, uh... Alright, fair enough. Yeah, we, we just barely get it. Now, I don't mind throwing the towel, but uh, I think we might be okay. So we're going to start to clamp this side. Boop. 
But yeah, how much force does this thing need? And then we'll, we'll grab a big old clamp on this side because uh, we definitely, hopefully this works. But that's the cool thing about filming yourself. You're just like, whoa, you might be solving a problem. Um, okay, perfect. Now it's it's set flat. Oh, yeah, like nothing. I, I don't I don't know why. Yeah, so just like that that just went in so easy. So yes, I, I would uh, you know have two pieces of metal that are strong and, and then do this. Okay, that did it. Okay, we're totally flush. So. That's crazy. That's crazy that it, it, it's crazy I couldn't get that pushed in. Okay, so now that piston is totally flush. <sighs> Let's get all this crap out of here. And uh, and I am. I'm going to put all this stuff away. Typically, you don't. You know what I mean? Have your tools out. You're going to use those tools like a bunch of times. But all this stuff, we're one and done. Like, we're done with that little project. So, there's flat steel. And uh, big old chunks. I love that chunk. Uh, small ones, normal size ones, and uh, whoops, 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 and good to go. Okay, we're we're not going to use this DSLR cam. We're just going to turn it off. Um, we're doing straight, straight GoPro footage, and yet we're at the 36. You know. If your GoPro says 30%, you gotta switch batteries. Uh, so clutch, catch you on the flip side. Heck yeah, back at it. Okay, so uh, that was amazing. We, we, we got those, well, let's just see with some light that yeah, these rotors are totally flush now. So uh, yeah, let's get in there. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if you can, but okay, moving on. Um, so now we're actually gonna throw in the rotors. I'm sorry, I, I'm just using words. But anyway, we're, we're gonna throw in the brake pads. Uh, there is, the rotors are those things. These are the pistons. So the piston is what we pushed in. The piston is what we pushed in flush. But that was an absolute nightmare. And that's why if you, if you take out your wheel, and then and take that piston and push it all the way in you'll have to get a real thin like almost a metal shim that you'll uh like what yeah it'd be a nightmare i mean you at least you would have to get like what i would do is get two really thin metal shims like just not even a shim but just a, a real thin piece of metal and then get that one in there, get another one in there, and then start wedging something in between those two pieces of metal to open that up. But that is a nightmare you wouldn't want to do. I mean, if you're ever gonna throw one of these away because it's broken, yeah, you, you could see, you could, you could make a video on like how, how to get those uh, pistons apart if you go done do that mistake. Okay, so I just push that in there. Um, here is the pin. And this is interesting. See, since I'm filming this, I can go back to see which side these, uh, um, these clips were on. Let's get the gloves in. Okay, I thought I had another one of these. So we're, we're going to put that one there. Uh, we're done with that. Vice grips. Done with that. Okay, perfect. Yep, there you go. And uh, and now, now we're just going to kind of turn this this way and then pry it back towards us. Okay. Perfect. And I, I don't know. I think you don't want to do this too much. Y yeah, you want you want this loose. So I would uh, pry it out and then start to pry it back just a little bit. There you go. Make sure that's loose. And uh, is that one loose? So we'll do the same thing on this. So we'll pry it back just a little bit. And then that'll loosen up that clip. Yeah, you don't want any extra tension where you don't need it. 
All right, heck yeah, we clean this rotor. So this one's just good to go. Uh, one of those things is, uh, yeah, come in here. Uh, we'll get a little juice. But yes, if you don't want to breathe alcohol, grab uh, the soap and water. You know, just, just one, just one little spray. And this goes a long way. Well, maybe you need a little bit more than that. Ah, maybe this isn't the one to use. Maybe you do want these. You get these at Costco. This is the, this is the best deal going. These are less than, I think they're 50 cents each, or less than 50 cents each. But yeah, get them soapy and wet. There you go. Perfect, and now we're just gonna go around this rim, kind of like three, maybe three times is all we need, maybe four. And it makes you look like you uh, wash the whole bag. There's just about three locations that you wanna wipe down, and that's definitely one of them, that hub right there. You don't even need to clean the rim, but if you did, you know, if you took the extra time to go around the rim once, you know, hell, that, that'll go a long way. Um, you know what I mean? Hey, looks pretty nice. But why would you saturate this whole wheel in a pressure wash? You know, you just get water in the rim. You even just soap and water with a rinse, that's too much. That's crazy. All right, we're gonna click, get that widened up. Ooh, we're, we're, we're not taking our time. Okay, there you go. All right, good enough. Drop it down. Oh, shoot. Man, that caliper. We're just dropping oil everywhere. Okay, we, we really need to take our time. I need to uh, loosen this. Whoa. This is a little bit of a nightmare. <sighs> okay, I don't think we dropped oil on the rotor. I think our gloves are fine. Okay, so that wheel's locked in. All right, so that's right at the limit, maybe, of what the rider, this rider can do. But, uh, I just, you know, safety first. Uh, so we're gonna crank that back up. Okay, bummer. So we just had a lot of oil. It's just mineral oil, but still. I guess, I don't know why I'm freaking out. Just a little bit of spilled milk. Okay, um, perfect. Okay, so, uh, so now, that, now that's good to go. And uh, now we can fill this up with mineral oil. This is Shimano. And uh, even though the label's off, uh, it's definitely mineral oil. So we're just gonna pour it in. We've, we've already, um, you know, who cares? Well, let's just fill this crap up. But even like right now, Wipe that down. Wipe our hands down. Wipe that down. Um, this is just dripping. Still dripping. And I thank goodness we're replacing the grips because uh, their grips won't work. This customer's grips would not work if I spilled this much oil on them. They'd be totally ruined. But yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna activate the brake. Um, just a bunch of times. Yeah, hopefully no oil spilled. You know, double check. But no, we're good. Uh, 
Oh, and you probably shouldn't do this without the cover on. Um, but we're, ju we're just trying to... Uh... Oh, and, and oil spilling out and, and capillary action is is uh, removing all our oil. And I haven't, I've have not seen an air bubble anyway. So, okay. But, you know, this, this is a displacement um, thing, so it might spill out anyway. So we're just gonna see where we're at. Um, I don't know. We're, we're gonna fill it up just a little bit more. Now you should use a syringe, but who cares? I mean, that's why they made these so big. You're just like, hell yeah, let's do this. Okay, perfect. So that's nice and saturated. When we go put on our cover, um, that'll put down that pressure evenly. And, uh, cause yeah, even this, if you, if you push down all that pressure out, then you're gonna get an air bubble. You're gonna get air in that chamber. And, and that's not something you want. Okay, so be real careful with these screws. My fingers are oily. We're, we're just gonna set it in there. There you go, got one. And the other one. All right, I'm going less careful with this screw because, woof, no, 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 take your time. There you go. But sometimes you can go too careful. You know what I mean? You gotta be carefree a little bit. Perfect, so now that's putting down that pressure. Whoops, 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 whoops. And those are tight, those are tight. And now, now we're really gonna clean up, clean up almost our hands just a little bit. This is just soapy water. We might have to uh, switch. Um, yeah, I think this is this is the rag to use. I like these. And I'm going to get more because I'm going to um, switch out. I use these as towels. You know what I mean? Brand new. These make just such small, awesome towels. I mean, and you can't, you can't go wrong. So just really, really juice that up. A lot of soapy water. Just get rid of all that mineral oil. Okay, but that's sealed up. And how's our break? You know, are, are we are we nice and full? Um. Okay, but this side, same thing. We uh, we want to fill up this reservoir just to make sure it's nice and full. So we're gonna loosen the screws, and then all the way out. Do not drop the screws. See if I can get, okay. Okay, perfect. And we'll just fill it up. Oh, see, there, there's, there's an air bubble right there. So even just right here, we can get rid of, poke some of these air bubbles out. Um, because this is so low, it's kind of inducing maybe air into the system, just right at the top. So we're just gonna fill it up a quarter of the way. And then, yeah, just press some of those air bubbles out. And then pop them. Because even in this chamber, you don't want any air bubbles. There you go. And we're going to take this up. We're going to, ooh, we gotta loosen that. Take a breath.
Okay, that's going to move. And now we're going to uh, lower that and raise this at the same time. Cool. Okay, so now that's up high. And see if we can get any more air bubbles out of the system. You know, get the, the air bubbles through there. I think we're good. I'm pretty satisfied. You know what I mean? I mean, even if you didn't get rid of them all. Um, I mean, a lot, a lot of the air is going to be just right in this compartment anyway. Okay, we filled it up. And uh, get this in there. That should overflow. It's overflowing. It's going to overflow a little too much. So, going to get this there. Soak up that oil. We should have used the other rag, but that's all right. But don't push that thing down all the way. Because uh, you got to seal it. And then have some of that, you know, just perfect. Just like that. But think about it, in two years, you might lose some oil somewhere. You know what I mean? You're like, why is my brake softening? Well, your braking is going to be just fine. It's just that your lever, well, it's going to be a little reduced. Um, whoa, do not lose those screws. This is crazy. Last time I lost those screws, I never found it. I feel like I'm not taking my time. See, yeah, what am I doing? Okay, take a deep breath. Even just catch two threads. You know, now physically those screws can never fall off. All right, get that one almost all the way. Now I'm taking my time on these brakes, but uh, I've done I've, I've done this like once or twice before. Yeah, it's like you don't need to bleed the whole. You don't need to, you know, uncork that thing. A a at a later date, I'll do it. But if if this can't just fi fix my solution, then uh, sure, I'll do it the more complicated way. You know, or the way you're supposed to do it. Um, but at the end of the day. Uh, shoot, there's no air in that now. I mean, hardly, there might be way down there, just a tiny little air bubble, who cares? Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna see how this did. So even just this, heck yeah. I think this was a leaky bottle anyway, but I think we're done with this. I think our brakes are good, I haven't checked them yet, but we're gonna put that in there. We're gonna get all the bleed kit stuff uh well that's just an uh, open syringe okay we're gonna get this little kit back you know i guess you know if this is a specific kit for a specific break shimano's got those things where you have to yeah this little funnel sometimes you can only you don't have a huge reservoir you just have a little port so you got to push that in do the same thing kick the air bubbles out and start filling it up you don't have to go from the other side uh, but, you know, I just haven't, you know, I, I lucked out. I only worked at a bike shop. I was the only mechanic and it was their last year in business. It was a sporting goods store and people were like, hey, can you bleed my brakes? And I said, no, go to the other bike shop. It's just not worth, I don't, I don't want to. And that was fine. It was so interesting. It would be like if you went to Jimmy John's and they're just like, can I get extra lettuce? And you're like, nope, uh, we don't do that. You know what I mean? And a lot of the restaurants, you know what I mean? Yeah, no changes. You know what I mean? Um, okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied. You know, I guess you're not hitting your... Yeah, no, that's fine. That's perfect. And we'll spin this wheel. For some reason...
Like it doesn't just feel just awesome, but uh, you know, we didn't ruin anything. There's no oil on those. Those are brand new pads. You have to break them in and it's all rainy outside. I'm not taking this thing outside, um, but I will, I, I am right now gonna adjust um, that these things, you know what I mean? I think you just want them all, the, we'll go all the way out. That's too far away. This one will go, uh, so looking at it this way, Righty, righty is, uh, so it's opposite, so lefty, lefty, there you go. Or I guess lefty Lucy, I guess, but yeah. Yeah, so this one, I don't know, all the way out is about the best. We'll go in just a t touch. And then this one for sure. Righty Lucy. Just so, yeah, when you squeeze them, uh, they're 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 stopping at the same location. Okay, perfect. Whoa. Okay, um, this got oil on it, so I'm gonna be done with that. We got tons of rugs. We're not shy in that department. But yeah, this soapy soapy water thing is great. Um, it's very isolated. It's a great way to clean. Whew. Man. Okay. So I would say this was a first of doing a... I don't know. I've done this before, but it's just been so long. Yeah, I guess I, I took my time. But we, we did a lot. Like, even that... There was no, there wasn't too much wasted time filling these reservoirs and getting it going. So, uh, and uh, right now these are loose, but that's fine. It's just an indicator that we'll have to put all this stuff back together. Um, so, uh, we'll do that later. All right, what's the next thing? I would say rear shifting. And, and this stuff was just awful. So if you want to get uh, if you want to get your cables out, uh, go to your go to your high gear like that, and then just click this thing down one two three four, and then start pulling on this cable, um, you know, all the way out, and then you can pop these out. Perfect, and then you can kind of just see what you're dealing with. Because like right now you can see like where's the friction. Like this one's always decent. Um, this one's the second most haggard. So yeah, there's some friction in there. And this one's just the absolute worst. Um, yep. So anyway, so it's time to replace. And, and now that this is totally loose, now we're going to pedal all the way down. And look at this. You're going to see kind of where, it, how much tension this thing actually... Uh, Oh, oh, never mind. Um, if you put it all together, you'll see. So, like right now, the low screw. I mean, if you want to know how this works, why am I losing my mind? Um, we just washed that screwdriver, we used it up here. Uh, there, we put it right there. But especially if you're going to put the primary first tension on, you're going to do this brand new. Well, there's no longer an adjustment barrel there. So come here. Here's your adjustment barrel. You know what I mean? So let, let's uh, see how you can just unscrew it all the way. Well, we're going to actually screw it the other way. Screw it all the way in. And uh, hell yeah. And I'm going to do it. We're going to screw that all the way in. And then we're going to take this thing, this is your high, and then we're going to see how this thing is that way. It's not lined up with this first one. So we're going to tighten it. If you tighten this, it goes that way. If you tighten the low screw, it brings it in. So tightening it goes this way on both screws, loosening it goes that way. Typically, you know, unless it's, um, but, or you can just see what it's doing. So yes, yeah, tightening it moves it in. And you want to do this when there's no tension in the cable because these screws are just real small. So anyway, and, and look at this. You, you can tighten this in, like do the, go, like see how things work. 
you know, I mean, hell, we, we tighten that screw so much that it's actually just resting in that one. So now we're gonna pedal and then loosen this screw um, just a quarter at a time until it drops down. Maybe just a half at a time. Okay, there you go, it just dropped down. And, and now you can see, okay, perfect. So, but now I'm gonna go, uh, um, I think that's good. Because if it just dropped down, it's fairly, it's fairly tight. And, and then look at this, look at this. If I put cable tension on this thing, so you, you put this in here, you put this in there, and you actually put cable tension in it it wants to move it this way see how i put cable tension now i reduce that tension so when we go put in a new cable and housing that the cable and housing is going to loosen you know what i mean and so you you'll put it in right here uh and then you'll just go you know just finger tight on this and then tighten it down well it'll loosen up so this thing will go that way but that's why you got your barrel adjuster now you can tighten the cable here you know how much can you actually tighten it you know, it's quite a bit. It's quite a bit. You know, before that thing just totally unscrews. Um, ooh, damn it. I, I shouldn't have done that. Sometimes these, uh, these, it's hard to catch these threads because there's so much pressure on that spring. Oh, bummer, bummer, bummer. Okay. So, so I'm going to hold, hold that and then uh okay uh i don't know if i can get that back in there but i guess that's how much that's how much uh like once once it's like there so that that's how much uh you got about an i would just say an eighth of an inch but but that that's usually plenty okay so I, I got that back in. Whew. Tighten that up all the way. The other thing you want to pay attention to is, uh, you know, are these lengths? Do you do you actually want to make them bigger? Uh, is there any, or is that that pretty good? I would say on that one, that one's great, because then you can just match lengths. But this is your this is your opportunity to be like, whoa. Um, are these uh, are these in the right location? Like, is that is that the is that the right length for that? And uh, if you can tell they're too long, is if they're coming out straight and then they go up. You know, what I mean, if they're too short, they're just coming out straight and they're bending down. But if it comes out totally flat, tangential, then you know you're pretty good there. You know, if this one like was going that way you know, because it was too, too much, or if it's like really just has to go straight line. So yeah, so this one's good. It's usually this one. I always lengthen this one if you can. Um, but see, if you lengthen this, this will always be kind of straight out from that. But even this one, it's kind of going up at an angle. So if I reduced, if I actually reduced uh, the direction, well, maybe it would be more flat um but if i went this way uh you know if it was like right there you know th then it then it's a uh, i don't know I, I i would i'd put that much just that much more into that one even though that's pretty compact and pretty nice i would lengthen that one just a little bit so at least i know Whew. so that was probably just a five minute waste of time explanation so i'm just going to cut that uh, we're gonna take all this stuff out um, uh, This uh, you so so if this is tightening it this is loosening it so you want it to be at the loosest um, and then you want to come in here with your screwdriver and uh, Man th this is just a rubber screw be very careful with it and uh, perfect, see how that's just gonna pop out. And we could literally just cut that right there, pop that out. Okay, now we'll uh, pop a new one in. And yeah, hell yeah, we invested in uh, stainless steel cables. 
um, and uh, stainless steel brake and shifting cables. So these are great. Now, I I'm still going to not grease these cables. I, I don't know. Like, uh, I don't know what I want to do. Honestly, don't. I, I would, uh, well, if you do this, put them in dry because they're going to rub on the ground. You know, even just like right here. I, I would, uh, you almost want just a little, a little clip. If I had a clothespin, it'd be real nice to have a clothespin right now. Um, but I just drape it right there. I guess six to one, you know what I mean? But no, a little clothespin would be perfect. Just something like right like that. What's the closest thing I have to that in here? You know, if my feet were to the fire and I had to invent something right now. I mean, literally the only thing I have is a rubber band, but uh, Okay. And what am I doing? This is absolutely nutty. This is why, this is why I can't get paid to do this stuff. Take way too long. All right, but yeah, we are going to. Uh... There you go. So, I don't know. I mean, you, you had this cable. Now, is there a lot of tension in this one? Pop the end off. Because that's the other thing. You can also be realistic. I'm trying to be more realistic of like, well, there's no reason just to replace stuff if it's just fine. Oh my God, I'm never getting that in there. Okay. Oh shoot, yeah, I need to eat some food. My blood sugar's getting real low. This is why life's taking like twice as long. Okay, there you go. So is, uh, yeah, so that one's pretty decent. You know, um, there's no friction in that one. But I, I don't know. Like, is there? Uh, I guess we're going to cut a new one. Shoot. But yeah, this just drags on the ground. It's probably filthy. It's probably not the thing to do. Uh, okay, so we're gonna get some shift housing. I guess you gotta get it going this way and get it going in a circle. And I guess I'm just gonna destroy the box, whatever. Cause it's not spinning. It's definitely not spinning. There you go. We'll just get this out here. And make a pre-cut, you know what I mean? Unless that's a really good end. Um, so pre-cut that, kind of squish it straight, get it where you want it. Now, some of these ferrules that come stock are just, that that's where the friction is. Holy Toledo. Like, I'm all about just super simple, you know, one and done ferrules. Uh, you know, not too much complex stuff. Like, I don't think moisture's your killer. Maybe it is. You know, maybe, yeah, maybe moisture is your hella killer. But definitely take your finger and get rid of the dust if you're just letting this drape on the floor. And definitely go easy on these cables. So is this uh, that much better? I, I would say so. And I think it's the ends. You know, I mean, ooh, that just feels good. Okay, perfect. 
and uh, sure, I'll, I'll oil it just a little bit. I mean, all we're gonna do is just oil from there to there. So uh, I'm gonna get my oiler and we're just gonna go real easy. You know, so this is just a little bit of WD-40. I mean, we're talking just so minuscule. You know what I mean? And, and then just rub it right there. I mean, we're, so we're just talking such a minuscule amount of oil. Um, there you go. But that's it. Because now there's no oil on the flip side. You know what I mean? There's no oil coming out right here and you're just going to induce dirt into the system. Okay, and this one was good to go. So now we're on a roll. Let, let's see if that was a good cut. Just kind of square up your cut. And this is, this is the element of biking, bike mechanics that I love. Because yes, if you do spend twice as much time, the result is just, just a, a little bit better. It's a fraction of a better. And this is an industry where like grams matter. You know, people will spend, you know, 10,000 extra dollars when, you know, $5,000 is plenty of money for a bike. You don't need to spend 15,000. You know, and uh, 20 years ago, it was like you don't need to spend $4,000 for a bike. That's absolutely insane. Um, but now 15000 is the new 4000 But yeah, this is where, yes, the cheapest, the cheapest little ferrules. There's no extra, you know, craziness at the ends of these that are just inducing friction. I mean, shifting is such a delicate process anyway, and uh, and this is something where it's just like, yes, if you tune a bike once, like I'm a real fan of this, of you're just like, yes, there, there's, a, there's an element of bike tuning that if you, yes, if you tune a bike, if you put a bike together from the box, uh, you will literally not have to replace it. Um, Oh man, this is going to drive me nuts. Don't drop on the ground. Okay, we're going to get... So we're just going to get the same thing. Just the tiniest amount. Just the, the slightest amount of, uh, of oil. And we're coming from here, here to there. There you go. So that's it. Rub that off. Um, but yeah, what I'm getting at is especially with tuning... If people pay that much money for like their bike to feel lighter, you know, it's like you can tune a bike and you, yeah, I should be getting a million dollars for this tune because yeah, the knowledge of being like, yes, I know how to make a bike, you know, even if it's just for that first day where you're just like, whoa, this bike feels like a miracle. You know what I mean? Where have you been all my life? Um, it's worth it. Like, people will pay that much money. Okay, so now is that going to drop on the ground? Nope. And last one. But what, what, what we... Okay, see how it's all folded? So I, I just make a new cut. Close your eyes, though, when you cut this stuff. There's a lot of metal fibers. All right, well, let's let's circle circle the ponies. There you go. Oh yeah, we're gonna make it just a little bit longer. I mean, just a little bit, whatever. You know what I mean? And why you'd make it a little bit longer is if someone wants to. Uh, you know, shorten the cable or do anything with the cable without having to replace cable and housing, uh, the ends are going to get buggered, especially on this, this one. You're going to get like a buggered end about just a half inch. So if you cut that half inch off, hell yeah, you, you can uh, then get fresh cable. You know, you'll get a half inch of fresh cable towards the end. And, and... You know, you can save the day. If someone's like, man, I just don't have the money to replace my cables and housing, you can, uh, as long as this isn't chewed up. That's why it's real important to make sure when you do this that it's not going to get chewed up like that because you can't reuse this now. So we're, we're going to see what we're going to do on that. 
And that's why as a bike mechanic, I kind of experiment because, you know, th there's some things that I like. So there you go, just a touch of WD-40. And I said, hell yeah, you don't oil the cable because you'll just oil it on your first tune, you know, one year later to actually make it feel good. But no, it's really hard to actually get to uh, some of these cables to where you can oil them properly. But this rear one, no, you can because you can take them off and slide all the cables uh, a little bit farther away. But uh, shoot, okay, we oiled it. All right, we're at 30% juice, but we're, we're gonna do it. We're actually gonna get this thing on here, holy Toledo, and get it at least, at least cut and crimped. I'm gonna pop this one out of there. Oof, that is, that is vicious. Okay, and then we're gonna get that in there. But see, such a terrible design. See how this, is that just a sharp angle? Yeah, that's absolutely insane. Like, why would you... So, even on this design, yes, you would want to make this way, way longer so it actually comes at an angle like this because, uh, look, this is actually... Straight is coming right through here. You would actually want this to be right here. But it's... Cr yeah, so this, even though it's XTR, damn. Like, that's a huge flaw. Look at all that friction that's going to build up right there. So, uh, I don't know. Okay, see, uh, so now I'll tighten this down. And, and maybe it's too much. You know, so I'll, I'll just tighten it down just a little bit. And uh, what we'll do is we'll come in here, and shift it all the way up, shift it all the way back. Shift it up one. Okay, see how I shifted up, shifted up one, and it won't go. Perfect. So th that's where I know, that's where I know it's not too tight. Uh, but maybe I kind of messed up because you know. So see how I this should almost be just a little bit that way. So when you go tighten this up, you know, do your cable tension. Um, you know, then then you can scream on this. You know, get this fully tight. Um, but now you're going to adjust this and you only want to adjust it like a couple one two three four five um, Because you only have so much there you go So now it and it won't come down. So now we can go the other direction one two three the other direction Oh, we, we got to go all the way flush See if it comes down. Oh, 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 oh. that's because our high screw. Oh, and we got to put this back in so we're done with that Oh man, this is such a weird little rubber screw. Okay, perfect. Uh, but yeah, this is what I was talking about. It, it's not wanting to come down because, uh, so now we'll just loosen this. And th this is where you just push it over and see if it comes down naturally. And now let's tighten it. So, because if we tighten it one, a whole one turn, now if we push it over, and let it come down. It ain't coming down at all. So now we got to loosen it that full turn. One, two. And this keeps it from hitting the rim, but it, it, it'll just. And you want it to go down real easy, too. You, you know, you can always push it up this way, but it's, it's on the way down that. Uh, Okay, so that's, uh, I need to tighten it up. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. Click it up one, that didn't work. Tighten it up, one, two, three, four. Oh, it went up twice, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's not coming down, so we're gonna uh, make sure the 
The cable is looser in there, so you're gonna tighten that barrel in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I would say adjust it on the way down because the tension in the cable makes it rise, but then on the way down, the fact that there's no friction in here makes it descend. And, uh, and you don't want it overshooting, but there you go. But he, yeah, even that first, uh, that first one, one, two, see, it's like a rapid rise though. So, uh, there you go. I'm just going to tighten it up once or twice. See, now it's not wanting to come down, but I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, I think that's fine for what I wanna do with it. Now, is there any fancy way to do this? I would say yes. Um, you know, you, you can just make it short, short as, and, and call it good. Um, but there is this idea, I, I don't know. So you, you would come in here and, and you would circle it, you know, just like that. And uh, let's do this. Let's see if, if this is a uh, start a trend because you can't reuse this unless you weld the end of this cable. It'll get frayed no matter what. Even if you put a nipple on, you can't just cut a cable and expect to thread it through worth a, a diggity darn. So uh, here you go. And I don't know, it maybe looks like a, you know, an earlobe ring on it on a hippie in seattle you know what i mean just a little hole it's a little ansel adams you know a little piece of art uh just hanging off your derailleur i don't know you do you and you could make this a little tighter but, but i think this is a pretty good uh this will be a this will be a pretty good dimension on this hell yeah but this way and, and you know if this is too much weight for your bike will go downhill faster you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, we'll see. I, I bet you this is the first time you've seen anyone do this, but this is just my mind. I like to think of stuff like this because yes. Now, I, I wanted to uh, see how easy it would be to cut and then re-weld this, but you almost need to cut it and weld it at the same time so that that doesn't get frayed. Um, but yeah, you're coming in here. Now, is that sticking out too much? Uh, no, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, can we, can we, uh, can we, uh, do another one? I, I don't think so. And, and I, I don't know how to seal the deal. I don't know how to seal this end. So, uh, and now, now I feel like I'm ruining it. Yeah, I don't know what you do at the end. So I guess I haven't thought this through all the way. We're, we're gonna get out some of the needle nose pliers though And we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do But even just finishing it somewhere interesting like just even up here I don't know but there's a chance that this just all goes to hell anyway, and you're not gonna be able to use the cable Anyway, so I don't know I don't, I don't know if that's a, a good solution at all. Um, I, I think, I think almost the thing to do is, uh, you know, de go one more or not. Oh, shoot. Yep. So th this is interesting and we're, we're kind of already damaging the cable. Like we said, we didn't want to anyway. But we're gonna, we're gonna get that there, and uh, so now we're gonna come in <sighs> with some zip ties. I think that's the way to do it. Just use one zip tie. But yeah, when you experiment with stuff, you're never gonna get it right the first time. Um, yeah, just these thin zip ties. And I'd say just like right there. Just so it doesn't. Uh, let's see if I can get this tight enough. Heck yeah. Put pressure on it. 
get it hella tight and do the little zip tie trick where you get a razor blade all my razor blades are right there and then you're going to come in here and uh, slice your finger off do an up and down motion instead of uh, towards your finger okay so that's fairly smooth you can you can roll this back wherever you want it I mean, this is the first time I've done this. I'm just saying that this is this is how you do deal with zip ties. That might come out of there, but maybe not. Maybe that's enough friction. And it's kind of interesting. I don't know. Maybe that's just going to catch a tree, and, and you're just going to, you know what I mean? It's just a tree hook. But all this is a tree hook, you know, that your whole derailleur. I, I've ripped my whole derailleur off trying to bunny hop a stump. Uh, okay, so that was perfect. So this is a unique way. So now you can undo it and you can actually reuse the cable again. Uh, you can restring new housing if you still want to keep the cable. That's a little ridiculous and redundant, but uh, just because bikes are getting hella expensive at the end of the day, it's just like, sure, just replace, replace and move on. Keep your bike running, running like a top. Let's get this out of our hand. All right, let's get a new battery and catch on the flip side. All right, hell yeah, welcome back. And, uh, man, I guess I want to do the front derailleur before I, I pass out and die of, of uh, low blood sugar. So, uh, all right, we're just going to, we're just going to check that shifting again. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, okay. One, two, three. Well, one, two, three, four. All right, click, 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 up. That's, yeah, that's a rapid rise. It messes me up that it's rapid rise. You know what I mean? You just do this to get into an easier gear. So, uh... That first gear is kind of hard to, you know, get into. But okay, we're, we're good to go there. And now we're just going to check the front derailleur. You know what I mean? Is it, uh, if you're in this lowest gear, are we just rubbing? Are we just rubbing like that? You know what I mean? Where we need to move this thing that way? Or if you actually get this into the second gear, this is the next one to check. Is it rubbing? Now, if it's rubbing just barely on this one, that's fine. Because it's an indicator to be like, you don't want to be in the middle gear in this easy one. Like, I used, I, this is my whole life. This is the gear that I loved. But, uh, um, just because it's a, a challenge, you'd be like, I don't want to go down into that easy gear. Okay, so it's not rubbing there. But now I'm going to move this all the way over. And we're just going to see if it's rubbing on the top side. Because, yeah, you'll be in this gear. And, hell yeah, it's rubbing just a little bit on the top side here. So if you're in this gear, you know, let's go down one. Now it's not rubbing. But now we're going to... See, okay, we're gonna do, we're gonna keep keep that in mind. We went back to that side. We're gonna go up to this next one. Now, if this is rubbing, it should be. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be, but it's definitely an indicator. Do not be in this gear. But but if you're in this highest gear, you will definitely be in this lowest one. So you definitely don't want it rubbing here, and it's not. Uh, so the fact that if I go down to the middle one right here and over here, it's rubbing just a little bit. Well, hell yeah, that's an indicator to to get this puppy back up there. And it's not, it's not how it's designed to be, but uh, there, there's definitely gears that you don't want it to be rubbing. In this lower gear, you don't want it to be rubbing there. You'll be in this gear a lot. And, uh, uh, okay, so uh, does it go up easy? Hell yeah. And even in, oh, even cross chaining it goes up. And does it come down easy? And it doesn't come down too much. Now you can check the tension. See how there's uh, just a little bit of tension in here? Um, same thing on the, the screw. Uh, whoa. Like right here, whoa, whoa. this is the low one. So this is my low gear. That one don't fit. Yep, note to self, just get a lot more of these little screwdrivers around here. Okay. So, uh, but if I, if I loosen this up, this thing's going to move that way. So, uh, um, man. Ow. 
Actually, that might be bottomed out. So check this out, if I tighten it. Yeah, see, now I can loosen it. Uh, so yeah, so it definitely moved. And now I forget where the hell I was. So, uh, okay, so it's rubbing. So I, I think this was just all the way backed off. And that's fine. Um, because th this, this does not, because this is backed off, it doesn't matter where this one is, like th uh, this screw has no bearing on this middle one. This is tension alone now. So uh, the tension alone brings it up into there. And again, so that hasn't changed. Uh, and the tension alone brings it up into this one. Now, if it was shooting off, yeah, that you would have to you'd have to tighten this one in, and that would prevent that would prevent uh, this whole mechanism from going that far. Uh, it would it, you can you can make this only go that far, uh, or you can loosen this screw and have it come all the way off and have your chain fall off. You know, you won't want that either, though. Okay. But the tension's perfect, and. Uh, but yeah, so I'm just feeling how 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 much friction is in this uh, shifter, and there's a lot. So we're, we are we are going to replace it, and we're going to do the same thing. Uh, well, check this out. We're going to put it in this high gear, and now we're going to uh, re reduce. Uh, we we clicked it, so now we can actually take the cables out. So that's kind of cool. So we're going to take that one out. Whoops! Don't want to scratch the frame. But see what I did? I put it in here and then just clicked it down the twice. And uh, now I should be able to, um, there should be enough. Let's see. I guess I will, but it, yeah, just a little squeeze right here and you can pop out your front derailleur housing. And see all, all this madness, you know, just tons of friction. That's why it's, it's crazy. You know what I mean? Just replace it every year. You don't need... Look at that. It's just so dumb. Like, you know how much friction's in that crap? I, I don't know. I, I just throw it all away. Um, and then, for the life of me, I've never been able to remember to put those things on there. Maybe we will today. Maybe we'll luck out. Okay, but how do we like the length? That's all we were getting at. Is uh, we got to figure out... We should have done that before we took them out. But uh, this one, what, what do you think? Do we like that? It's a little bit, I'm okay with it. Um, you wouldn't want it any uh, longer. Well, you, would, would you want it shorter? I guess you can't really have it shorter either. Um, but could you have it long? You could actually have it longer. This one would actually do better longer, e even though it's kind of like looping out. Okay, so keep that in mind. And then this one, what, what do you think? So, uh, yeah, it's pulling out on this side. See how it's pulling out right there? Hell yeah, that's just going to cause you a nightmare. So we're, we're going to increase that by at least three. So then you're going to come this way. and uh, But may maybe not. I don't know. So if you come this way, yeah, it's all crinkled, crinkled out. So, uh, yeah, but we'll do it. We'll do it by three and see where we're at. But, yeah, just take the time and do that. Now click this back down. Okay, it is, because if you go tension, then click it back down, and now you can undo um, this little thing. And I'll never remember to put those on there, but I will if I just leave it right on the screwdriver. Because the next time I go to use that screwdriver to uh, do the low and high screw, I will be able to... Uh... Oh, check this out. We're on the road to remembering to put these three back on. There you go. And sure, we'll, we'll save this crap. It's so dumb. Oh, I should be saving... I don't even want to save these ferrules. These, these, are, these are metal, but seriously. I, I like my system. I don't know. I like these cheap, plastic, no-frills ferrules. But we'll just throw all those parts in there. Uh, might be useful for something down the, down the line. Okay, the cable gonna kick out. Uh, throw it away. Throw it on the ground. Get uh, a new cable. Let's see if we can keep this cable off the ground at all times. That's all I want. I wanted a system to keep the cable. And we got a lot of fluid. Just a hydraulic fluid. Just everywhere. 
I guess we didn't, that soap and water wasn't good enough. There we go. Oh, man. I think you feel the low blood sugar. You just become less funny. More angsty. But we're, we're okay. We're, we're, do, we're doing it, I think. Okay. Oh, check this out. So maybe I'll just rest it halfway. There you go. It's not touching the ground. That's amazing. That That's a... That's a freebie on me. You're like, holy Toledo. That is why that's that length. Uh, that's not the reason. Okay. Uh, wh wh which one was it? Shoot. You know, anytime you're dealing with cable, just throw it on the ground instantly. So, uh, especially if it's... There you go. There you go. But I think it was this one. Yeah, this is the one that was popping out. Yeah... Yeah, okay, so we're gonna go uh, definitely longer on this one. Wow, we need a lot of cable. All right, check your end. I'm satisfied, I'm satisfied. Deep breath. Yeah, because now we remembered to go longer. Hell yeah. I don't know, maybe it's too long. You're like, what the hell are you doing? Um, but that's all right. Sure, you can get in here and, and pop it around. You know what I mean? Sometimes less is more. Sometimes more is more. Okay, get the caps on. Uh, booyah. Okay, and then we can oil this cable, so we're going to oil it from there to there. Hell yeah. And that's it, just from there to there. And this is just WD-4. We're, we're, we're done with the WD-4. There's no more in that. That little thing, we'll have to fill it up champagne style. But I don't know, I, I forget. Right there to there. Go back and forth just a couple times. All right, just the slightest amount of oil. Do you want to see me fill this bugger up? Let's do it. It's a rainy day. There's no one outside, so uh, we can just make as much noise as we want. Okay, so we're going to fill this up. Now, there's a little oil in there, but uh, yeah, you just kind of have to go a little, a little easy. A little champagne style. And uh, fill it up. Let, let the air bubbles do their thing. Whoa, shoot. That's all right. That's why we got rags. Oh, perfect. I'll just hold it with a rag. And, and now I can make as much mess as I want. See, yep. But I think that's good. I think that's good. Well, every time I do, the bubbles go down and there's just like no no uh, juice in there. All right, last, last one. But yeah, this is my favorite tool. Because it, it just seems like you're a, a mad scientist. You know what I mean? It turns doing mechanical work into surgery. Surgery on inanimate objects. I think a good surgeon treats people like an inanimate object. You're just like, yeah. yeah if, like, uh, you know what I mean? Because then, then you, uh, you don't get so personally involved you know what i mean you're just i'm just doing my thing and making your life better heck yes but uh your life was pretty bad up to this point until i came along that's for sure you know what i mean so don't get mad at me if uh for anything okay there you go get that in there perfect and now now you can test it out you know what i mean uh, oh we, we had to go underneath this one see but now we're going over the top is that the way to go? Um, it makes these cables ride up hella high. And, and maybe every time you turn, you don't want that. So now you have to choose. You got to pick your, pick your poison. So we're going to come in here. We're going to grab this cable. And that's the other thing. Be gentle with these cables. N n n no, uh, no crinks. No crinkles. Hey, perfect. 
So yeah, I knew just an extra long would actually make this curl so much nicer. So uh, hell yes. All right. And now there's no reason to bring this up. It's off the floor. Uh, you can bring it in a little bit, but just make sure that one don't hit the floor. Okay, what's our next piece? It's this one right here. And uh, this one we're gonna lengthen. Keep these ends. But I don't know, yeah, it's so dumb. So much friction, so much money. It's just, it's just ridiculous. I've never thought this was a good idea. You know what I mean? For just, oh, let, let's get metal ends. You know how much weight you're not saving by making these metal? And they don't, they're not making your life any better. Okay, so uh, make sure our end is good. And our end is not good. So we're just going to go close your eyes. Okay, got a good end. Squishy, squishy. Now, shoot, yeah, I should be making these just a little bit better. Take your time. And, uh, okay, perfect. Going to measure that up. But, yeah, we're going to overshoot. I'd say by that much. Uh, it might be way too much, but, well, yeah, we can always go the other direction. Well, we, we had to double cut it, too. All right, just, okay, that one's done. And that one's done. And I, I, I don't know, these, aren't, these might not be Amazon, but they're Clarks, you know what I mean? Uh, I might have got them on Amazon, and uh, I don't know, maybe they are just totally generic Asian ferals. But, uh, okay, perfect. So now, now we want to, uh, we, we do have to bring this up. So we're, we're going to go, we're going to slide this through there so it don't touch the ground. Because, yeah, we, we got to lock our cable in. Look, we're just remembering everything. Because now our cable's in. Uh, we're going to put that screw in. It's a weird screw, you know what I mean? But I, I love it because it's uh, really aggressive threads. Whoa, and even just doing that? Yeah, hell yeah. Now we can actually remember to put these on. Whoa, we're doing things with life. Okay, we got to get gloves off. I've never actually put these things back on. I've in all, Yeah, in all my bikes, I've just, I've just thrown these. I've wanted to put them back on. I've just never remembered to. I'm patting myself on the back right now. This is great. Okay, hell yeah. This is like the 12-hour bike. Uh, this is like how, how to do it, but how not to do it fast. You know what I mean? How to, uh, how to get fired. How to, how to tune the best bike of your life and then get fired for some reason. Because you took way too long. Okay. Um, get our oiler. And yeah, we're going to oil from there. Because this thing is going to go from there to there. So we're just going to oil from there to there. Perfect. Woo, that was too much. That's all right, though. Now we can dab out the finger. Okay, perfect. I bet you that's just the most precise amount of oil. The person's, the light bulb in the person's head is just going to go on and be like, whoa, this bike is a miracle. Okay, get that over there. Get this insta. See, see, that is no friction. Like you're just like, ho ho ho, yeah, baby. And uh, okay, so now now we're gonna get this. And then don't kink your cable. I already might have made a mess mistake, a mistake. But see how I cut the cable in the beginning? You know what I mean? This is perfect because now if there's anything funky going on here, like how does that even go into that front derailleur? Then hell yeah, you got another look at it. You know what I mean? If if I just removed all this cable, I wouldn't get this opportunity to get that look look right there. And this is that time where yeah, you got to get this thing back down. And uh, okay, and, and now let's see. Like uh, now now where's this deal? Whoa 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 whoa. We 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 got to get this. Don't want to bend this cable, but let's get it over here. But we're done. We did all our housing. There was just two pieces of housing. We're going to click. We're going to click. A, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, we can't click that up anyway. But this is the conundrum. This is really the conundrum. Because, uh, you know what I mean? This is all the way tight, but you only have an eighth of an inch. 
And it's so hard to put any tension on here at all and tighten it in there. So we're just gonna go right back here. So this is, this is your classic use of the high-low screws. So now, now uh, there's no rub, but I would actually go till you get rub. You know, so we're gonna go uh, tighten this in. And you gotta, you gotta pull it and then tighten it. It makes the most sense. Okay, see, see now how you have that rub there? I'm gonna go till it just barely goes away. Okay, so it barely went away, but this is the deal. Um, maybe that's, maybe I need to tighten it more. So let's see. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go just tight, just a little bit. Now I'm going to go final answer. I'm going to go just so it rubs, the rub goes away. We're going to get our tool. Because now when we go tighten this cable and then, uh, have this slack out, you'll get that perfect gap. Okay, so we got that. Ooh, now what do we want to do? We want to get this in here. Okay, perfect. And uh, on this one, we are. We're, we're just going to be one and done. So I'm, I'm going to come in like right here. I'm going to say right there. I'm going to make a little, little pinch pinch. And uh, for this one, we're going to put an end cap on. So where are my end caps? Yeah, that is a good question. Where do you think that crap would be? Huh. I thought it was just right at the ready. I've gotten in a couple spots. Oh yeah, there you go. This is just a little thing. We'll just grab one and be done. Put it back. And I like a needle nose pliers. We're gonna get our cable cutters. I think we need to sit down for this one. Let's get this bike out of here. Just far enough. There you go. Uh, I'm gonna go gloves off on this one. We, we wanna do this absolutely right. Whoa. Okay, because it's, it's just real hard to grip. So we're gonna cut that. Yeah, just cut it right there. Oh, damn it, see? I, I, I don't like, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. So that, that was a huge mistake. That's why I marked it so I could come out here. But anyway, we got it back together. That's why, you know, in, in the bike mechanican world, you know, if, if I sold you one tool, it would be something that cut this and welds it at the same time. So you would, you would cut down on it and weld it so it would, uh, it would be absolutely perfect. So then you wouldn't have to, you could still put a cap on just in case. Um, but this is how, this is how I do it. I come in not, not towards the bottom, just about at the one third mark. And, uh, I just go real tight and then uh, go, uh, I think that's about it. How, how do I, oh, I, I probably go in again like that. So you got like a real tight mark and then uh, not so tight. And then if you, if you really need to, I don't know, if you're thinking you need extra, just put a, a teeny little mark in it uh, just for grip. So, but you don't want that thing to, um, you know, get coat hangered back and forth and fall off. But I don't know, I think of stuff like this. You know, you want this to be, you know, for the long haul. Now, this seems too long, actually, so bummer. But shoot, I can get to it, and I can put downward pressure on it. And that's the most important thing. And uh, we're going to wheel ourselves over here. Going to get our gloves back on. And we don't, the whole idea is like not a lot of downward pressure. You know what I mean? That, that, that's, why we, that's why we tighten that. So when we come in here, just normal, just normal friggin' pressure, uh, not too much at all. Just make sure it's aligned. And, and then when you go to, uh, so now like right here, just get it halfway. And now you're gonna come in here and you're gonna reduce the low screw. So, oh shoot, 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 oh. Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. That sucked. 
Okay, now is it, uh, so it's barely rubbing, but now we're going to uh, uh, just take all the tension off this low screw and then we're gonna see how much it moves. I'm gonna be real steady. Okay, it moved a hell of a lot. Okay, look look how much that moved. So that's absolute madness. Uh, okay, so we have to redo it. There, there's no... So, okay, see, see how that just moved like more than an eighth of an inch? Now, if you come here, you'll actually have to... You'll actually have to tighten this all the way to that... See, I can't even get to that third gear. And now loosen it. You want to make sure there's some uh, looser tension in here. But th this is this is what I'm talking about. Like, so the front derailleur is much different. You only have like an eighth of a, a eighth of an inch. That's it. Look at that. That's as much as you got. You got about an eighth of an inch. And even still, we'll go back down. See how it's not rubbing? Okay, perfect. I mean, this is not perfect. No. Uh, so we're going to uh, do the same thing. Anytime you're doing the low and high screws, take all the tension off. So put it in this higher gear and then back it out. And then this driller is being held right there, you know, so there's no tension in the cable. And now you can do things like screw this barrel in all the way. Um, I just haven't done a front derailleur in a long time. But, uh, okay, so this barrel is screwed in all the way. Be kind to your cables. And uh, so now you're going to do that. And so what we're going to do is we, we got we to gotta tighten this low screw... Um, so I don't know, maybe, so, but I want a gimmick, you know what I mean? Let's go to this next gear, just one gear, and we're going to tighten the low screw, you know, just so it's uh, hitting. Okay, so yeah, I don't hear it no more, but check this out. So now I'm going to back that gear down one. No, like back to normal. And then, so that's how much it's rubbing. But I, I don't know. It's like there was so much, there was so much tension in here. That was crazy. Well, we might have to do this again, but that's fine. That's why, that's why doing the experimental thing is good because at the end of the day, you might find like just what works. And, and you, you might make more money off the YouTube video that you make than, uh, than the time you lost you know, doing this. But see how much tension I pulled out of there? That was perfect. That was about an eighth of an inch. And I'm not putting too much downward pressure. This is why you don't need to get too crazy with fancy tools just yanking the hell out of this cable because you just overshoot it with the with the placement of your derailleur, tighten it down, and now you're going to slacken it out. Um, but I, I'm, I'm going to tension this pretty good because I think we're there. I don't think we overshot it. And uh, this is in that, that, that gear, and then we're just going to loosen this up. Now, I would. I would put a little tension on this, and then you can loosen it. But if you want to see it move, you know, you'll do this. Okay, so there's no tension on that low screw. Okay, it's not rubbing. Now we're going to come in here with this, and we're going to tighten in this. We're going to go, uh, no, we're going to loosen it. One, two, three, you know, like four, and we're going to see... Uh, how, how much? Uh, five, six, seven, to see if it's touching. Okay, it's touching at seven. Perfect. And then, but that's probably way too much tension. You know what I mean? See, it's a. Uh, so we. We're, uh, but but again, if you want to adjust this barrel adjuster, go up here, take the tension off, and now we're gonna just gonna go back to one. Uh, we're gonna go back to its normal setting right at uh, just flush, and we're gonna see if that's like too much too. Yeah, so it's kind of rubbing in this gear. So yeah, so that might have been like just a little too much, but it's like almost perfect. And like I said, you don't want to be in this. It's an indicator to go up to that one. It's not rubbing in that one. Uh, this one. And it still drops down. You know, so the cable tension is real good. Um, but I could loosen it just a little bit, but I can't. Uh, because this barrel adjuster is already at the loosest. So uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, just hold the derailleur and uh, just kind of right here on the mechanism and then just kind of put a little tension. This is what I don't like to do because uh, you're kind of compressing just all the cable and housing. 
Man, there's still mineral oil on that thing from those disc brakes. That's all right. That's, that's why it was probably a good idea to do the disc brakes first, have that mineral oil just like seep, and I can uh, clean it off as I go. Find it all. Oh, I feel like this is, is all wonky. Okay, yeah, just two little zip ties and we'll be good there. Whew. All right, that didn't go away, but that's a good indicator. Don't, stay away from that gear. You know what I mean? Go down to your easier gear. Okay, it's not rubbing there, so uh, I'm satisfied. And uh, this cable might tension out, but that was too much. So it, it was too much to go up into that, back it off, but that gives me a range now. Um, But see how it's almost rubbing in this one anyway, too? You know what I mean? So, uh, pick your poison. But, uh, but yes, ideally, you, you should have, like, you know, one or... You should be able to uh, tighten the screw in one or two, but you really want to be able to loosen the screw a lot as your cables tension and slacken, you know, over or over a week or, or even a year of riding. I, I don't know. So, uh, but anyway... See, even like right here, I, I can't I can't be in this gear and then drop down all the way. No, I was able to, so that's pretty good still. Nope, still. So I wanna I wanna loosen this cable. Damn it. Alright, well let's do it. Let's go back to this gear. And then we're going to uh we're going to tighten this cable till it rubs, till it don't rub. And just a little bit more. And then we're going to come back here. We're going to loosen this. And hopefully it should loosen. Just naturally, uh, there should be tension in this cable. So now we're going to loosen this. And see if this cable moves. Does the cable slacken just a little bit? Not really. But... Uh, and I don't want to purposely slacken the cable, but I, I just want, I want it to be straight and uh, don't need too much tension. But uh, hopefully that puts a little bit of slack in the system. All right, same name of the game. We're gonna loosen this up. We're, oh, we're gonna click that back to that gear. Uh, we're gonna, oh, we actually, we can just, we can just, we can just click it up to this one and see if it rubs and it doesn't so check this out so now remember how it rubbed well yeah you you would have to tighten this barrel screw by going uh, but I, but i would i would put a little tension on this derailleur that'll that'll help you uh, tighten that barrel screw okay it's rubbing so we're gonna go the other way and we're gonna go till it don't rub so we're tightening this thing to loosen the cable so it don't rub Oops, oops, that, that that was all the way. So now, now this is fully bottomed out. Does it still rub? Not really. Okay, so we, we, we did it, we did it. It doesn't rub. Do we still have the right amount of cable tension? Hell yeah. And remember how we went into this one and it didn't go all the way down because we couldn't loosen our cable tension at all. Not that you'd be ever in this gear. This is a gear you don't wanna be in. But hell, you might be in that gear so you still want to be able to pop down. Oh, but the reason it might not pop down isn't because of cable tension. Like, see how it's not popping down? So what you want to do is go back to this one and uh, come back here, and you're going to reduce this low. So let's see, when we reduce this screw, does it move? Yeah, it moves a little bit. Perfect. So now, now uh, uh, it should go down real fast. If we go to this one, though, it might rub, and it might rub in the first three. So we, do, we don't want that, but check this out. You go up into this one, and it, but this is, uh, you know, and, and then go down? Why, why the hell would you go all the way to the bottom? But you can now. Uh, 
but but let, let's get let's get this back just a little bit normal so we're going to tighten it just one because now when we click into that gear you know it, it's still rubbing like a mat like real mad yeah yeah so we uh i mean we, we have to be in this gear without this screaming at us so we're going to tighten this And it might be rubbing on the bottom. Holy Toledo, it's, it's not even rubbing on the side. It's rubbing on the bottom. Oh man, okay, so that's interesting. So this derailleur thing, so let's see if it's properly adjusted. Man, we're, we're so close. We're right at that 39% mark. And I swear, I lose footage if I don't switch batteries, but that's all right. So uh, for, the, for this front derailleur, you at least want clearance so see how, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of clearance. Oh, so I can't go down too much. That, that's the crazy thing. Front derailleurs are just madness. So I can't bring this derailleur down because it would, it would hit against this tooth. And I swear it probably did at some point. Um, but, and I can't angle this anymore. So that, that's crazy. So it's just, it's just the nature. It's actually just the nature of the beast on this one. At least when, when we're, we're in our climbing gear, it's not, it's not, there's a gap there. It's not just rubbing on the chain. It's not doing, it's not doing, it's not doing this. But see how when I go into these, uh, these gears over here, at some point, that meets, that meets that part, that, that's, that's where we were getting it. Like, it's just, it's just rubbing right there. But it's not rubbing against this side. You know what I mean? We can we can all, all really almost go all the way out here, be, and it's still not rubbing on that side. So e even right here, we we can tighten. Um, oh, never mind. Okay, does it drop down? Uh, nope. So yeah, we we can actually loosen this thing, just so it. Uh, no, we can't. We're already we're already all the way loose. Oh, that's a bummer. All right, what do we want? What do we want out of life? Uh, we we want that not to rub. That's for sure. Okay, so that's not rubbing. It's just the nature of it that you only have like those first. You only have those first three gears in this granny, and then you'll get a little bit of noise. So that just sucks. Uh, but there's no way, I don't think I can tweak this derailleur, nor would I want to, downward. Um, that's just, that's just the nature of it. I can't angle this derailleur downward. Um, uh, the only way I could angle that derailleur downward is if, like, you shimmed it somehow. Oh, that sucks. But that's why I don't like front derailleurs. Uh... But I thought we were in a conundrum of like, okay, we're in this, we're in the lowest gear. Can we actually climb? Yes. The cable tension is great. But going down, the cable tension uh, isn't that good. And we're already s super slacked out on that. Okay, so uh, so here, if we want to re if we want to increase the, what we're going to do is slacken this out now. Get some cable tension in there. Uh, come around here. So we just have a little bit of cable tension in here. So now we can loosen this. Have that cable tension kind of slide through the system. Whoops, not too much. But there you go. Hopefully we didn't introduce a ton of cable tension in there. Tighten that up. Oh, I, I need some blood sugar. See, yeah, now now we're just done messed up. But anyway, so now we're going to have to definitely put tension on this. Uh, tighten this up. Let's see where we're at. You need enough cable tension to get to that top gear. Uh, so, uh, 
you know that's kind of the first thing can you even reach reach the gears because reaching these reaching the second gear and the third gear has nothing to do with the screws well at least even reaching the second gear has nothing to do with those screws so uh yeah we, we have to tighten this up there you go and then you can get back down okay but the fact that it goes up into this high gear and wants to go a little bit farther well yes you do reduce that by your high screw okay so now let's uh let's get it into this gear that was the one we were having problems with so we were over here and we couldn't drop down okay hell yeah now we can drop down because uh, we, we just put too much tension in the cable so uh but yeah we're good there now and uh, did that help any of our other problems not really you get into this uh, fourth or fifth gear it rubs and it's starting to rub on the side but that that's fine i don't care about that um but can we uh see we don't want the cable to fall off on the inside so we can tighten this up just a smidge you know because it's not rubbing but now when you come down you know uh how about come down from here and there? Can I still come down? Nope, I can't. See, that? that's why uh, if I do this, now loosen it. All right, perfect. So it just came down. And that's important. You get to this low gear. That's a good litmus test. Can you even come down? And nope, I can't. So we're going to again loosen it. There you go. I can just get it down most of the time. All the time and now, now I'm gonna go back to this gear and uh, see if it's too much is the cable gonna come off yes it does so there, there is that's why front derailers you know for the for the Adrian monks of the world you know just give them a front derailleur and tell them to get it perfect they'll just lose their goddamn mind so it's a trade-off you know what I mean so uh, you're never gonna be you're never gonna be in this lowest gear trying to get back, back down to your first ring. You know what I mean? So uh, that just don't exist. But we're going to uh, uh, tighten this up just a little bit. See if we can, yeah, see we can still get down there. Yeah, we can just barely get down. But okay, over here, what you don't want is your changes to fly off from here to there. And I, I feel like it might almost fly off, but uh, I, I think we I think we reached so we'll just tighten it up just a, a smidge I mean you just want it to drop down yes but you don't want it to go any farther you know and have a potential just to fly off okay let's go back to this one because we'll just go to this one you know what I mean can we can we get down not really kinda you know what I mean if you snap it you can get it down perfect okay I, I'm gonna be done so I think we're satisfied. Our front derailleur works good. The most amazing thing is, is there's not too much friction. And the front derailleur has a lot of friction because it's got to move quite a distance. It's got to move way more than, uh, so for every swing, it's got to move farther. And I swear it just always has more tension on the paws. Uh, so we got rid of a lot of the friction. All right, my battery's probably gonna run dead. Uh, perfect. So we did the, the rear derailleur, front derailleur, just, just switching cables and housing, getting rid of all that friction is the name of the game. And, uh, it's just my favorite thing to do. That, that's why I invested like $400. No, yeah, it was probably, uh, under 400, but yeah, 100, 100, 100, 100, it, you know, so I can replace cables and housing for 20 bucks. Um, I think I can do all brake cables, all uh, shifting, so it's five bucks per, you know what I mean? So I get down to, so that's great. So, yeah. And, and I don't mind just learning this stuff. Like, I'll replace your brake cables and housing for another just five dollars. So each time I do that, it's just like, shoot, you know, it might be five dollars an hour. Uh, but, uh, you know, 20 bucks for materials, 20 bucks for replacing all that. That's on top of the price of the tune. But if we're talking uh, $2,002, you know what I mean? $50 for a tune-up, um, but then $20 for the cables, $20 for the extra labor there. So, yeah, you're right in that 100 uh, I don't know. So, we'll talk about the price. 
what we charge for this bike. But uh, battery's running low. We got to get some food in us. Catch you on the flip side. All right, hell yeah. All right, we're gonna get back to it. Get this thing on top of my head. Now we're on the home stretch. You know, we, we put the front derailleur, got that adjusted, rear derailleur, everything's tight and ship shape. Um, you know, I was just thinking though, you know, is this wheel true? We, we trued the back wheel. Uh, I forgot to even look at the front wheel. So uh, let, let's sit down right here and uh, just uh, throw the fingers out. Oh, well, two things. You know what I mean? The wheel trout has nothing to do with the rotor rubbing. But we, we, we do have a... So anyway, you want to check the tension of your spokes, though. The, the front spokes are the least likely to break. Okay, so here's the valve. So we'll just start here. Yeah, because they're equal tension on both sides. Because you don't have... Well, not necessarily. Because look at this, you have this uh, disc rotor right here. So yeah, so even these are more straight than these. So these are gonna be looser. These are gonna be tighter to actually hold the friggin' wheel, you know, uh, you know, centered. Does that make sense? Like if your spokes were the same distance on both sides, they'd be the same tightness. But then if these spokes are just in like this, uh, the center is gonna be, this be, between the spokes, this the, between the center of the spokes, the wheel should be right here. But no, the wheel is about a half inch that direction, you know, to keep it centered in the bike. That means that these straighter spokes have to be hella tight. And uh, I didn't do a good job of uh, figuring out where the hell I was. But that that's a huge difference because these ones might be too tight. So, uh, and then you, you just want to make sure, just do a visual to see where the hell that wheel is. Um, you know, hey, it's okay. You know, because what I want to do is I want to overshoot going this way. Uh, I don't want to. I, I don't want to true this wheel and keep tightening these. So I, I've never found a, a good way to figure out like, well, yeah, we we can do it. I mean, you just do this. You t you take your uh, you take this, and uh, I guess we'll just put it on this side. I mean, you just need something. You just need a something. Oof. I ain't getting up. My leg hurts so bad today. Uh, we'll use yellow. So, we're, we're just, it's just instant true stand. You just need something, you know what I mean? Just something, something. And uh, we'll get this going. We'll, we'll give it a little cut. A little cut, cut. I don't know. I, I bet you I'm just going to done, done mess up. But who cares? No, we're, we're good. We can just keep going. Now I'm going to mess up. Probably cut it too much. No, we're, we're uh, we can, we can really cut that bugger. Did I cut it too much? Nope, still not. So, uh, anyway, we just want to make a true stand. Ah, oh, perfect. This is exact, that's exactly what we wanted. Because, uh, Because where it's rubbing is perfect. Where it's not rubbing, we want to pull it over to where it's rubbing. Okay, so we'll start. So, so it goes all the way around. Uh, so he, here's where it's rubbing. It's the only spot where it's rubbing, just like right... Uh, just like right here, but th this would be the center. Is this where it's farther away? It's really hard to see distance. But I, I would say right in here, it's the farthest away. So uh, we want to... So look at this. Th this is wheel true in 101. Uh, uh, so if I, if I pull on these two spokes right here, look, look, it's not touching. But if I tension these two spokes, look, now it's touching. So uh, if I wanted to get this over here, that's how much tension I need to put in those spokes. So uh, how do we put tension in spokes? Well, you put your wrench on it. And if you're looking from the top, you want to turn that nipple righty-tighty. So heck yeah, we're going to go uh, a half a turn right there. Come to this spoke. And we're going to turn a half a turn right there. Now, what we just did was the equivalent of grabbing these spokes and tensioning them. 
So now, uh, and then we, 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 we don't want to lose these spokes. So it's right here and then grab right there. So now, now we're going to look to see where we're at. So this one's closer, but th this one's still far away. What, what did, did my thing, did my thing mess up? All right, so there's our big gap right through there. So we're, we're gonna, we're just gonna righty tighty these. So looking from the, get the spoke wrench, looking from the top, righty tighty. Um, so we'll go half a turn. Um, half a turn and half a turn that might be too much you know what i mean are, are we hitting already nope we're not hitting already and then so these two spokes that will we'll hit this one so we're gonna go looking from the top righty tighty half turn you know if you if you know how much you want to turn it just friggin turn it don't do like eighths of a turn and then see if it did anything because now we're just rubbing all the way around and, and where is it rubbing real bad Kind of through there. So here and then four spokes. So yeah, we'll, we'll loosen these spokes. So we're just going to loosen a quarter turn. Uh, loosen maybe just a little bit. No, we'll do a quarter turn. But the middle spokes, we can always come back and then loosen another eighth of a turn. So I'm just picking exactly how much tension I want to take out because we loosen these spokes opposite of doing this. Uh, so we like, uh, it would be like tightening this side because you can either tighten this side to move it that way or you can loosen these spokes. But we already said these spokes are straight as hell and they're tight as hell because even just having a disc rotor, these spokes have to be straighter. And so how are we doing? I, th I think we're doing pretty good. So we're, we're going to get this just to where it's uh, buggering up. And, you know, maybe the sticker. Yeah, see the sticker sticking out right there, so. But let's spin it real hard. Does it look true? Get that out of there. Hell yeah. Yeah, it looks plenty true. Uh, you almost need this, like, up here. Yeah, let's go back to this one and then what should we should we should not tighten those we'll just loosen these ones just a little bit uh just like a eighth of a turn uh there you go and where's this it's 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 uh it's right after the valve It's pretty good though. I mean, we did something and we did good. Well, let's get this thing off there. Just instant true stand. I mean, use your eyeballs. I mean, because if, if you can probably, if you don't know anything about how, uh, you know, how, how a wheel is centered in the rim, you know, look again, does it look centered? You know what I mean? Does it look centered in the, in the bike? Sure. But like we said, remember that tire being all wobbly? You know, your tire can be off. You know, even though your rim's straight, your tire's doing this just because it's a chunk of rubber. Um, okay. We're doing it. We did it. Uh, we're almost done. Home stretch. We're going to check the pedals. Get our pedal wrench. Now, these, it's crazy. What we're, we're almost doing is making them, like, less tight. So, the right pedal is righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So, we're going to come in here. And, uh, ooh, that's really hard to get. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to maybe come in here. Oh, bummer. So hard when... Uh, we want to go lefty there you go we, we we just want to let's see if i if i drive it off drive it off oh that's a, that's a good acronym drive the pedal off uh you know what i mean because you're going backwards but yeah we definitely want some juice juice because there's nothing worse than a pedal that uh, won't come off and and i like this too you can just go around like that call it good 
And, and like I was saying, this is righty tighty. But that means you drive it off or pedal backwards to get it on. So stick it like this, pedal backwards. It's the funnest part about tuning a bike. You're like, hell yeah, I can put on pedals. Sure, and you can put on a tire, you can change a tube, you can do anything. But you can only do stuff that you wanna do. The second you don't wanna do something on a bike, well don't do it because you don't want to do it. So this one is righty loosey, lefty tighty. See how you'd go righty tighty? Well, it's the opposite. So it's righty loosey. I'm holding my hand here, pulling up on this. Oof, it came off though. Okay, now drive it off, drive it off. But, but I, I would put a hand on it and don't cross thread it, you know what I mean? Be, be, be easy on your threads. But this is just good maintenance, you know what I mean? You're, you're saving the day when they actually wanna upgrade their pedals to make sure that these come off, you know, decently. So now, now we're going lefty tidy. So, uh, what the hell's left? But you really have to be careful with these threads too, because it's not intuitive of what's flat. Um, there you go, so that's flat, caught a couple threads, and now we're going to pedal backwards to get it on. And yeah, after you do this for about 20 years, yeah, then, then, then break out your torque wrench, but I, I don't know, I'm just putting a, a, just a little smidgen. You know, not, 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 don't crank those on. Well, I guess I, I, I greased them so I can do whatever I want, but I've never seen a pedal come off. Um, but I've definitely seen a pedal not come off because it's just on there like rust. Okay. Now we are, we are going to do, we're, we're going to do something. We are going to undo this bolt. And we're gonna move all this stuff over here because we're gonna we're gonna clean it all up, and we're gonna clean it up as we go. We need this soapy water. Holy, just mineral oil galore. Yeah, and that'll that'll cause your your brake levers to shift on you, which you might not want. Whew. Okay, home stretch. We're gonna put those grips on. And yeah, they were pretty sweet. I mean, they're just, uh, I don't I don't know if I got a good deal at all. They came off a, like a brand new bike, you know, and then that, because the owner wanted their own grips, you know, uh, they were five dollars. You can get grips for 30 bucks. That's kind of entry, but these were 35. So I'm hoping they're just $5 better. No, I, I don't like Bontrager grips. Holy Toledo, for whatever reason, I, I will, uh, throw that those grips under the bus i was so dissatisfied with the non-locking grips and just their rubber compound i don't know just maybe, maybe that was it you throw grips on that don't move i actually just jb welded them on i was just like screw this you know what i mean uh let's make a viral video and and jb weld the friggin grips on because i do not want them to move i'll, I'll buy a new handlebar for 30 bucks if i need to you know, but it's that insane that you would make grips that aren't just a bugger to get on. That's all you got to do is just make them a bugger to get on. You know, and then they won't rotate. You know, we all have air compressors. No one's getting grips on by just, you know, shoving them on like that. If you can do that with your grips, just instantly take them back. All right. Yeah, we got to get the mineral oil off that. That's crazy. Same thing here, just mineral oil everywhere. Okay, perfect, so we got all that stuff off. Uh, yeah, these grips. If I take the tape off and they say Bontrager, I, I think we got a viral video. Let, let's see, what are these? Hell yeah, yeah, Bontrager grips. <laughs> yeah, right there, that is insane. Uh, all right, you, you, you seen it first. You know, any company needs to get called out just make that diameter smaller, you know, but maybe they don't know Chinese, so I, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's hard to make changes once you got a product. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to do soap and water on this. I 
But yeah, I, I don't know, you know, but I was saying that with like, you know, other things like GoPro, like I, I'm using a GoPro on top of my head has changed my life. Sure, yeah, people want it to not overheat, you know what I mean, if it's 100 degrees out and, and they can't even get through one battery. You know what I mean? But th those are okay situations because it's better that you know about that where you're just like, oh, so now that I know, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's like, well, if there was another company, wouldn't, wouldn't they have the same issues? You know what I mean? So uh, that's why it was so interesting to buy these Wasabi batteries. You know what I mean? I'll, I still might be a GoPro customer for life, but I'll definitely buy the, the Wasabi batteries are only like $7 each, $8 each compared to 20 for a GoPro battery. Okay, these, these are just real gooey. So we're gonna take some goo gone. So, whew, you don't wanna breathe this crap, damn it. Let's get the respirator, whew. Ah, I already breathed too much. I mean, the same for my videos. It'd be like, yeah, you have a criticism that this is just awful. Well, of course it is. Uh, my clientele is a uh, hundred years from now when the apocalypse happens and people actually want, you know, if you have 24 hours just to kill and you're just like, or if you just have day after day of just sitting underground in a four by four box, you know what I mean? Hell yeah, you're gonna watch my videos because they're long as hell, you know what I mean? So that's my audience. My audience isn't, for today's YouTube standards that only has 60 seconds, is it's absolutely insane. All right, goo gone. Again, goo gone, goo gone. And yeah, look at all that shininess. We, we just wanna get rid of that, hell yeah. So we're gonna goo gone that shininess hella off. And uh, this goes a long way. So definitely maximize, maximize it. And I don't know, I, I don't know. Well, let's put this back on and uh, let's get a fresh, fresh. All right, there you go, a little freshy. And uh, we'll get some alcohol. We need some definitely just straight up alcohol. We're gonna alcohol the hell out of that. And then just dry towel. I don't know. Like I, I, I don't know. Is that, is that still grippy? It does. So I almost, almost think you need a, like a Mister Eraser. So uh, let's see what we got. Do we got a Mister Eraser? Hell yeah, we got hella Mister Erasers. Oh, let's see. Can I breathe again? No. I'm, I mean, I gotta wear my respirator for a little bit longer. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. Whew, this stuff is just nasty. We, we gotta open the door and get a fan going, so let's do that. Oh, we can use the fan. Hell yeah. I actually don't use this at all. Okay. Oh, because it's friggin' taped up on the other side. Now, that's insane. I, I really need to fix that. Well, di didn't we? Is it, uh, is it still all taped up? Yeah, it's totally taped up. Okay. Because my fresh air respirator supply is right here. And it, it, it'll bring in the fumes right through that vent. So what I need to do is buy another one of these that's twice as long. And then run this thing. Even just over there would be better, but actually uh, on the stairs, you know what I mean? Just put it in the compartment under there so you're, you're pulling fresh air from the downstairs. That's the closest place that would be totally fresh air. Anyway, total side note, but uh, we're gonna... So hopefully this is abrasive enough where it... Uh... I don't know. What do you, what do you think? I think we're good. 
But anyway, let's get those grips. Where the hell were they? Right here. So yeah, these were off a pivot, a pivot bike. Hopefully no returns, so we'll just, uh, we'll just do it. And, uh, I, I don't know. Is there a right and a left? Let's figure it out. You know, it says top. This says left. This says right. And that's nice that it already says top. Is it, Why does it say top? Because it wants the label right on the top. You know what I mean? It, and now, you gotta figure, is the label for you or is the label for them? But they labeled these left and right, so, uh... Oh shoot, I think we need to, we need to, we need to get in here with our tool. Alright, before we lose our mind, where's our tool? There they are. And we are totally missing tools, I apologize, one's outside. Yeah, that, that's, there's some tools that you gotta get back, so I'm missing a, I'm missing a four. That's alright. But these must be a three. Okay, hell yeah. And, uh, it's gonna be real tight, that's for sure, but, uh, here, if it's right there, we gotta get, we gotta get all the way to there, I guess. You know, pretty much. And, uh, is there plastic at the end of that, or is it just rubber? You know, I kind of want to know. Uh, so we're just going to do this. No, it, it's, it's pretty hard rubber. Okay, sweet. So we're good. Okay, there you go. Just throw it on top. But I don't know. You know what I mean? If you're doing it how they want to, like if you're in a bike, if you're in a bike shop, hell yeah. I mean, do you want that just a little bit towards you? You know what I mean? So you're just like, hell yeah, pivot. You know, because that's cool. You're just like, hell yeah, my bike looks awesome. Or, or do you want it towards the, the people? You know what I mean? So you'd actually, you know, you don't want to see that little thing. So there, you're not looking at that little nubbin. The labels towards them. You're not you're not glared out by labels, and the labels towards them. Perfect. I like that. See, everything can have a, a reason, a reason to the rhyme. Man, let's see if we can even get this in here though. Okay, that's finger tight, and yet yeah, we can we can get it in there. Alrighty, alrighty, it's Friday. That was plenty tight. You know, you do you. That's why you want to. If this was a, a, a knockoff, wait, let, let's see. We're going lefty tighty, yep, because we're reversed. If this was a knockoff, I would, uh, I'd go kind of easy and be alright with it loosening up and then tighten it down. But I think this is good, good screw, good precision part. Even though it's aluminum's aluminum, you know what I mean? It only has so much strength. But just maybe quality of the threads, quality of the bolt, I can give that a little extra juice. And those grips are locked on. So, hell yeah. Like, things that you notice on a bike are, uh, are for sure your grips. You know what I mean? Man, get that goo gong out of here. Okay. You'll definitely notice your grips. You'll definitely notice new tires, but those cost hella. Uh, you'll definitely notice a new chain. That's a real cheap thing to do. Um, if you can replace cables and housing, hell yeah. You know, what we did today, if you can just put a little bit more juice in here, hell yeah, you know what I mean, and get that just dialed in exactly where you want it. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna put, put back the cockpit. So here you go. So you're, uh, you know what I mean? You're sitting on it. You're riding on it. You're going to be just like this. And, uh, you know, it breaks all the way out. So we're, we're just going to get these where we can still turn them. 
and uh, get this. Uh, oh, I guess we got to do the brakes first. So, uh, well, this is going to be interesting. We almost let's uh, roll this up. I'm just getting these so we can still move them in a circle just a little bit, but uh, we can't move them back and forth. So that, that's what we're doing. So get them so hell, I, I can, I can still move them in a circle. So I can get that up. I can get this over. Okay, do that, do that. Okay, but yeah, th this this crap, this uh, shifter is going to get in the way. So th that's insane. So yeah, maybe this is just a, a horrible design. And, and we will have to uh, get this shifter so we can actually move it that way just a little bit. We'll get this shifter so we can move it that way. Okay, kind of thinking way ahead. But yeah, we, we got to get this shifter combo to where uh there there is perfect so yeah those fit those fit like a glove but yeah this is where yeah this is even this is even uh two shimano components that what the hell don't even go together like look oh no 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 once i get it over there's plenty of clearance so that's good so yeah but see that shimano uh front de front derailleur works with the shimano brakes you know what i mean that that's where you just never know in this industry if things will pair up and, and you wouldn't you wouldn't want your brakes you wouldn't want your shifter hella that way and i, I kind of take off my hands for this and are, are we still getting you know that mineral oil everywhere it's a little crazy you know that, that stuff is just everywhere but it's okay i mean we're, we're getting it we're seeping it up Okay, now now we're gonna get where we need it to be. So get it down. Now the the simplest thing to do. Uh, let's, let's get this in a gear. Get this down where we think the person was. Now now I think this this is gonna be per, for a pretty small person. You know, so we're, we're talking as low as down there. Uh, so they're gonna be, you know, sitting just like this. Ooh, yeah, the suspension works good, but it's really soft. Uh, does the lockout work? Not really. Okay, maybe, maybe we look at the suspension, too. Uh, okay, but m my rule is if you're sitting upright and you're looking at the brakes, you should be able just to see underneath the brakes, just barely. Uh, or, you know, it should be just right on that line. The line of this, um, grip should be, uh, and then it's just personal preference. You know what I mean? After that, well, there's two things going on. So th that'll get you started because you're looking in a straight line and that's the bottom of the grip. So, uh, that means if your arms are in a straight line, uh, it's per what you're looking for is your wrist to be nice and straight. Uh, like this part of your wrist to be nice and straight with your fingers going out and everything kind of making sense. Uh, but I like them. Um, I don't like mine low. Uh, I like to throw it. And then there you go. But that, that, that's where I like my brakes. Um, and, and yeah, done and done. We did it. You know what I mean? So simple. So as long as you know what your preference is, you, you don't have to just sit there for a day and a half. But the crazy thing is I can't... Okay, so what we're gonna do is we gotta loosen this puppy all the way up. And we just gotta hold this derailleur just like that. So I'm literally loosening that all the way up, coming in here, just tightening that. And I'm just gonna tighten that ever so slightly because we, we gotta do the same craziness over here. We gotta hold this, uh, this derailleur the shifter, I mean, it's the shifter, it goes to a derailleur, but we have to, and then we got to pop this, you got to hold that in place, pop this up, and then just get it at least finger tight, and now let, let the brakes drape, are, are we in a good location, because that, that's going to be, that's going to be final, you know, it can't get any better than that, so, uh, yeah, I'm okay, um, this one could come down a little bit, though. 
So uh, we're going to come in here and just tighten up ever so slightly. No, that's too much. Okay, that's even. We 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 got we can't we can't be here all day. But yeah, perfect. Got it even. We're gonna tighten that down. Um, and if you don't know how to tighten things down, just go to flush, you know, and then just do little little quick little pumps. You know what I mean? And if you can uh, pump out the juice, you know what I mean? But not too much more. You know, the thing ain't going nowhere. But that's kind of your five Newton meters. A lot of things need like four or five Newton meters. And that's like, first you're bottoming out the screw. You know what I mean? So do this until the screw, you know, jiggles its way to the bottom. Yeah. So, and then you apply Newton meters. You know what I mean? Pretend like the bot just jiggling out to the bottom is like just one Newton meter. And, and then uh, you're, you're applying that torque. And, and if I can do that, that's probably five Newton meters. So we're just going to do uh, jiggle, 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 you know what I mean? And, and then it's bottomed out, you know? Uh, and are those moving anywhere? Hell no. You know, good enough. Maybe in an impact, they won't just break off. They'll actually, you know, move and adjust, and then you won't have to buy new, new stuff. Damn it. Oh, damn it. So I spent all that time doing that. And, and uh, I totally forgot that we might want to move the handlebars. Like, I swear to God, people do not put these in the right location. And they totally look like kind of back. But no, that's kind of where I want them. I want them back at me. I don't want them up like I'm over the top of them. So this might be perfect. But I'm going to uh, loosen these. And again, you're just half turning. You're loosening them all together. Because uh, it, w it would be like, let's say, four ropes of a swing are holding you up, and I just come and just cut one. You know what I mean? That's like loosening one of these all the way. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Just quarter turn. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're loosening it way too much. Okay, so now you're going to come in here, and uh, you just kind of close your eyes and, and see where you want them. You know what I mean? What's too high? Go too high, and, and then go too low. Okay, so that's too low. Um, that's too high, uh, but, but that, that feels about right, just a little bit lower than average. That's too low, that's just right. That feels average, but it's just a little high, we just want to go just a little bit lower, and, uh, perfect. And it is, it's slightly different, it's not way towards me, I don't like that. Uh, that's way high, that's getting more average. And I just want slightly lower than average. Okay. So yeah, perfect. So now I got it exactly where I want it. And all that stuff adds up. And, uh, you know, if you're a bike mechanic, no, nine times out of ten, you can adjust all this stuff if you want to for the person. You know what I mean? You're doing them a favor. Because their bike was adjusted from the factory, you know, and someone just randomly guessed. You know what I mean? They didn't, they didn't think. They're just like, oh, that looks good. You know, it's just luck of the draw is what... <laughs> Whoa, look at this. There's like no gap there, and there's hella gap there, so that, that's crazy. So we're going to loosen these up. You got to be paying attention to this stuff. Whoa, and then the bar is just really adjusted, so we're going to come in here and tighten these up just so it's we get a more square deal out of the deal. Going to come here, going to do that same thing. Too high. Um just a little bit lower than average oh there you go i, I went a little bit higher though because it, it's something to rest on i like that and yeah you want an even gap on this thing because uh yeah you can't just bottom out one side so this is perfect so we're gonna tighten the top pretty good actually because the bottom's got no we got an even gap and this is just like a car tire go around like a hundred times you know what i mean just 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 get a just get a little bit of movement until it bottoms out until you're able to do that with all of them that one can still move hell yeah all right nice and tight same thing here you know what i mean can can you do the can you do the bottoming game can you do the movement game and it gives you an idea of how tight they were 
and maybe they were over tight, but there you go. So yeah, you definitely don't want to crank that anymore. You'll just break them. Okay, so the cockpit is hella. And, and yeah, the, it was so interesting. I thought there was so much out of play, but it was just the wheels. They, they weren't in. See how you come now. You do the same thing. Uh, so where are we at? Perfect. 41%. So it's like, let's say this bike came in. I mean, this is what you do. You tune up a bike and then you bring it to the mechanic and be like, hey, can you tune this up? And they come to your wheel and they're just like, whoa, that, that's perfect. You know, these are cartridge. So now, yeah, there's going to be just a little play in there, but it's a cartridge wheel. And you're going to come to this wheel and you're going to rock it back and forth. Now, this one had a little bit more adjustability. It was cartridge, but I was able to, uh, you know, adjust that cartridge, get rid of that play too. So that one's great. Now you're going to come to uh, here, check your crank. That That's great. And I guess, you know, I mean, you can just grab two sides of the pivot and see if any of these pivot links, you just, if there's any play involved. Hopefully there's not. Hopefully those are just lifetime guarantees on that stuff. And then uh, anytime you're tuning a bike and you come across, you can always, you can always go back. Uh, but don't, don't get into the habit of being in the middle of something and stopping. But I just noticed something that I will forget later on. So let's tackle it. We need some of those zip ties. And uh, this is another. I, I should have a little piece of paper out here. Because I need more of those uh, wrenches that are Phillips. We need more of these zip ties. We need two of them. And we need more tiny zip ties. These are Harbor Freight big package. We need to go Harbor Freight, get some more of like the, the real small ones. These are real handy. Now, uh, okay. Now look at this. Your leg's going to be on this side. So uh, you, you're going to have to come this way with the zip tie. And you can either uh, have it be right there. Or you could come this way with the zip tie. And have it be sticking out that way. Um, if, it's, if, you're coming, uh, if you're going this way with the zip tie then uh, I think this is the way you do it. Uh, I, mean, I mean, that's super OCD, but yeah, in life, there, there's a hundred ways to do any one thing. So we're gonna come in here, and, and I, I wouldn't tighten these down too tight, hell no. You know, you're just adding friction. So there you go, nice and light. But maybe this wasn't, if we, if, so this is weird. So n now that this is loose, it could come this way, and it, it'll scratch you. So this one was uh, this way. So if I went this way with it, and uh, you know, would it still scratch you? Uh, I, I think this has a more of an opportunity to rest right there. So I, I definitely like that way. All right, final answer. Oh, and look, it's how it was supposed to be. Look, those are actually supposed to fit right in there, and they're supposed to be even smaller. Oh, damn it. This is why there was one extra. Now, can we save the day? You know what I mean? How do zip ties work? Well, this little plastic thing's your catch. And so if you come in here, you know what I mean, and, uh, and just hit, hit this catch, uh, then you can open it. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Perfect. You know, and and then, then you can reuse it. You can reuse a zip. I wouldn't reuse a zip tie, though. That, that's insane. Because uh, they're, they're just going to get brittle after about six months of any, any light exposure. Even the light inside your house. So, okay. We're going to get that. Keep it loose. Loose on the goose. get our uh now th this is where you want to just scratch the frame you know what i mean so you just you just want to cut right into the frame so I, I don't i don't know you just want down just like scissoring motions then, then you're not going to touch the person's frame so we're going to just pretend this is a fifteen thousand dollar bike and it just needs a a three cent whoop we touched the frame whatever don't buy fifteen thousand dollar bikes 
or no do you know what i mean because then it keeps the bike shop happy and so when i go nickel and dime them and tune my own bikes at home you know what i mean they still like me at the end of the day okay so wheat deals um yeah so yeah 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 and then, you know so if you if you went through this bike like it's your first tune you know what i mean check things you know ch check the trueness all you have to do is just that um you know what i mean you could do that uh and, and if if there's nothing weird there there but yes all you have to do is just check the spoke tension you can feel broken spokes um so that takes you two seconds you, you can come to this one and feel broken spokes just go around until you think you went around once you know what i mean you're like okay fine perfect and uh we really need to tackle this seat though um one thing we need to do whoops is just make sure we're gonna get a six because i think it's a six yep there you go and we're just gonna make sure it's tight hell yeah that's a very important bolt to make sure it's tight you don't want the seat loosening up uh you can check it though see if it's see if that seat even makes sense i think it's fine but now we're going to come in here and I, this is the first thing bike mechanics do I, I think it could be your last you know i i don't know uh, everyone's got their order of what they want to do first what they want to do last it's whatever makes whatever makes sense and then whatever makes your life just not a, a, just a, a maddening rube goldberg of a million little tasks okay let's get that out of there because uh, now, now we're going to come in here. We're going to go alcohol style. Let's see. Yeah, we, we got to get rid of the old grease. But we, we, we definitely should use new grease. And it's all right. That's why I use these old gloves. But, uh... Yeah, just, you want this real thin, you know what I mean? But I feel a little bit of rust in there. So, you know, that, that'll kind of eat up that rust as well. And it, you know... Even if you adjust your seat, this crap's not coming off on you. But I don't know. You know what I mean? Maybe. Maybe that is. So you're kind of cleaning it with grease. You can come in here. No, we're doing it. I mean, we're just kind of experimenting. I'd, I'd really wish I had a tool to clean these out so you could... Because it's nice to have um, just lightly oiled, but not so nasty that if you adjust your seat post, you're going to mark your shorts... You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So yeah, that's perfect. You're just kind of getting rid of all that old, old grease and in with the new. And then just see if it's dirty. Okay, perfect. Clean this off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, we, we just want to see if it goes in in good. Does it does it go in good? Is that the farthest that it goes though? I think so. That's kind of interesting. And are we pulling any color off that? Not really, but uh, there, you know, if, if this is the line that you're supposed to put it at, you can grease down to that line. Heck yeah. See, not now we're kind of just wasting time, but I mean, we want this, yeah, we want this to be, yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah, we're trying to grease down in there too. And then if you pop it up like that, you know what I mean? Is that hella greasy? 
pretty much. I don't know, you know what I mean? So, uh, I'm just wasting my time here. Uh, there, there's gotta be a, just a tool, just a, I, I would want a tool to kinda clean that out, you know, one and done, you know, just to get it super satisfying. But I, I'm, I'm gonna call it there. And I'm gonna say that's good. So if you pull it out nice and hot. But, but here, here is what you can use all those methods that we used. Uh, so you're coming in here, you're, you're greasing that little thing, you're greasing that little thing. You know, definitely grease on that rubber is real nice. Uh, yeah, this is the one, one thing that is worth taking about three minutes to just to open up, separate, I guess you don't need to separate the plastic at all. But yeah, you're just gonna come in here, just grease around that. And then yeah, just, uh, oh, I forgot how this works now, damn it. What side, it must've been that side. So yeah, you're just gonna come in there. Yeah, you're just gonna put, cause this is gonna get hella dirty, but uh, that's all right. You, you just want it to function well. And so grease on the threads. Because if this is nice, oiled, and greased, and this is the other location, yeah, yeah. So you uh, just grease just a little bit in there. Hell yeah. And you don't need much. I mean, just the slightest amount will last for the lifetime of the bike. Um, but it's just good to do it at least once and then we're going to come in here. Do you think I can get a half a squirt? There you go. Perfect. That was absolutely excellent. And then we'll just get a half a squirt here. Okay. I love that tool. That oiler is just perfect. Wipe it all off. So then, you know, this will just work so good. So we're, we're going to throw that, uh, throw that on there. And then shoot, th this is a little tip. I, I don't know. Um, the guy in Seattle was like, well, if you rotate it like this, you won't just get garbage down in there. But what he would do, he would take a, oh, I don't want to do this, but I guess I do. We're sharing little things of how to, uh, we got to switch batteries. Catch on the flip side. All right. Hell yeah. So uh, th this was something that, that I appreciated from the mechanic that I learned from Seattle. Now, I was only a mechanic at that shop for about three months. Uh, but yeah, you, you carry stuff. So he would make this, you know, to cover that right there. And he liked that little triangle. I'm going to do just a little something different because if it rotates, that triangle is going to get off. So we're, we're just going to do uh, just a, 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 normal, a normal thing like that. And then basically, yeah, we're, we're just going to get this puppy on there. So, uh, and maybe that's too long. Is that, yeah, that, that don't need to be that long. This one was too short. This was like, ooh, just barely worked. Uh, it, this one could have worked, but yeah, we're just going to go just a little bit. Uh, there you go. So uh, now, uh, I don't know. I just put my finger right there, hold it, and then pull it over. And then get it on there. Just get it on there. You know what I mean? Um, get it down. Uh, better, you better use gloves. But yeah, and uh, I don't know. Th this was a pretty thin tube. It's kind of not a road bike tube. But yeah, you definitely want something nice and snappy. Because it'll probably loosen up over time. But what you're doing with this thing is you're, you're getting rid of the gap. You know what I mean? So uh, dirt won't be able to get down into there. So, uh, yep. And I, I don't know, yeah, you'd, you'd almost want a little bit of grease on that. I, nah, you don't want grease on that. But what you're doing is you're putting this thing on. Uh, so then once this covers, then that other thing slides right up against there. And then it just covers that, uh, it seals up, it seals up that port so it can't get dirt in there. You know what I mean? So it's just good. Hell yeah. It's just, it, there are places, I mean, there's a chance that, I mean, this is the first thing people do is 
raise and lower their seat, take it off. But uh, I mean, oh, and and what am I saying? I'm saying it's it's okay if you want to spend a lot of time on this thing. Uh, are we done with this rag? Yeah, let's get a little soap and water on it. We're gonna clean all the extra. Just want to make sure it's not greasy. Okay, and uh, I, I, I don't know where this seat goes. But what we want to do is pop it up again. Get rid of that grease. Just make sure there is... Oh, there is none. There is none. Okay, get the seat where we think they're going to want to ride it. And, uh, but yeah, check this out. So the fact that we greased and oiled this, it just works so good. This is how a lever should work. It should be just real easy. And then, uh, and then it should just be hella tight. Look at that. Just like so much friction. So that's awesome. And, and we can even, we can even tighten it a little bit more. You know what I mean? Hell, sky's the limit. Because we oiled this part. So it's just perfect. You know what I mean? So that's that's the things that people will notice they're just like whoa this was so easy to get on and off my levers so the three things that we over we i would call them little overhauls mini overhauls this lever and then your two levers for your wheels i mean just the fact that these are super solid but you know i mean they got enough oil and grease in them that they're doable you know plenty of friction uh i mean plenty of tension to hold the wheel in and there's not too much friction you know i mean that you're fighting against Wow, we're almost done. Okay, gloves off. You know, don't touch your grips unless your hands are clean and your gloves are off. And uh, we're just gonna hop on this thing. And I don't even think I can pedal in a circle with my leg being the way it is. But let's see if I can uh, pedal in a circle going backwards. Nope. Ooh, okay. I need to raise the seat up, that's for sure. But this is good therapy. Just pedaling in a circle. I should actually go pedal today and pedal forward but the seats nice and low man this thing's just ready to rock and roll now we didn't we didn't tackle anything with the forks so uh, let's come in here and uh, lock that out okay well it's not totally locked out but uh but let's see is, is it too juicy it's really juicy but this bike's gonna have a really light person on it and even this rear shock this bike's gonna have a real light person on it, but this uh, this rear shock uh, needs more air for a heavy person. So I, I will just I will I will just say that that that's my take home point. Um, but there's nothing wrong with this front shock. You know what I mean? It's super smooth. Uh, it's hopefully it's got no leaks. Uh, th there's some hella scratches right there. You know what I mean? Look at that. Every time that goes down under there, it could tear that seal. Um, so that, that's good to know. Yeah, that's a hella mark. Uh, but I guess it's not... I don't feel it too much. So I, I ain't getting down there with any sandpaper. Um, but the idea is, could you? You know, could you and would you? Well, let's do it. I'm going to catch you on the flip side with a little sandpaper. All right, we got a little sandpaper, and uh, I was trying to look for emery cloth, but th this stuff's pretty good. It's got like a, a good uh, backing. It's not too crunchy. It's not for like wood, maybe. It's a uh, carbide paper, so it's made for steel. So we, we got that going for us. Let's get the gloves on so we're not just getting our fingers dirty. And, uh, but how, how the hell are you not just gonna you know make everything rough as hell so uh, we're just going to come in here just like this we're going to take a little bit of this sandpaper and then fold it in two and, and then there you go and i'm just going to hold it real delicate lock and then we're just going to come in here and uh, we're going to use one glove off because we just want to feel what we're doing and uh, we're definitely just trying to uh, um, get rid of any burrs you know it, like once it's flat it's flat you don't want to just sand the whole area and it's pretty good it's like you use your finger to go across it and it's pretty much flush but i'm, I'm just like uh there's no burr there so that's not getting in the way but there might be just a little build up right there so I, i'm just like really 
really showing you you know you're just trying to get rid of the burr so i'm almost doing like a clawing motion you know so you're kind of clawing into that burr uh to try to get rid of uh, any burr in there you know that might just just going to be tearing up your uh so again here this is a pretty good tool because i can uh kind of get just right to the edge get a little angle on it and and kind of work it perfect and uh, yeah that, that's a hundred percent better and, and I, i'm thinking so there's no hang-ups there's no catches and we'll just go just a just a little bit to uh you know kind of do a polishing lap but yeah if you got a mark if you knew your stanchion tube got a mark well hell yeah drag your finger across it and it's still smooth you know what i mean and if uh if you think it's not smooth this way you know what i mean th th then uh yeah then you can do this kind of angled technique where uh you can kind of get in there and uh j just smooth that out just a little bit you know what i mean just so uh it don't feel like it's gonna hang up if some rubber some tight rubber goes over that little spot okay and we're just using physics here you know what i mean i didn't watch a video on that some things you can just use what you know you know what i mean hell yeah all right so there's no other spots you know but let's say that was another one you know what i mean so it's uh yeah let's, let's see let's see if we can clean it up so it's just sharp that way like this way it ain't no thing but a chicken wing but uh yeah we're just gonna do a little we're gonna see if this technique even works Yeah, yeah, it's, it's smoothing it up. It's smoothing it up just a little bit. It's isolating the problem. And, uh, yeah, that's way less catchy. Way less catchy. All right, so that's just quickly taking some quality sandpaper, hopefully for metal, cutting a little sliver, holding it with the screwdriver. Another viral video. Uh, damn it, I'm not going to section. Maybe I'll section these up at a later date. But uh, anyway, if I did it once, I'm going to do it again. And we can make the shorter version later. Okay, so, uh, but yeah, that's the thing with bikes. You'll just find five or six things um, at the very end. You know what I mean? Even just like spacing, spacing these things out. I guess they're all just going to go down to one end anyway. So dumb. You know what I mean? That's crazy. They're all just gonna fly down to one end. That's why I'd never put those on there. Okay, but how's how's our braking? Do you think our braking's decent? Hard to tell. Yeah, it's pretty good. Now, hopefully we'll do a test ride tomorrow. But but I would uh, I would I would uh, I don't go. I go kind of smooth on the brakes and then kind of like uh, tap them. I, I definitely, oh, just just tap the brakes. When, when you're breaking in brakes, uh, never any smooth motions. You'll just smooth over your brake pads. You're, you're trying to do individual, you know, uh, undulations in, in that brake pad to be like a, you know what I mean? So you get some differences of opinion. I, I don't know, that, that's, that's the way I, the second you just go, shh, you know what I mean, and smooth out your brake pads, that's not the point, you know what I mean? You're, you're kind of breaking, I like to break them in uh, kind of a little bit jerky. Okay, so uh, grips are locked on, cockpit looks awesome, uh, suspension looks good, and uh, hell yeah. Oh, well, let's, uh, let's lube up the chain. That was one thing that with this bike, we could have just bought a new chain, but uh, no, 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 ne next year, but see, this is the crazy thing. Next year when I go tune this bike up, you know, we'll just do a small wheel true, front and rear. All the spokes should be hella good. Um, one of the big issues was that this thing was going over, uh, you know, this screw was going into the, into the, that was going into the spokes. So I, I don't think it is going to. So you go into this gear and just try to shove, shove this into the spokes. It's not gonna go into the spokes. Okay. So we're, we're good there. Uh, all right, hell yeah. Not going OCD, but, but we're, we're doing it. You know what I mean? If you clean the entire bike, I mean, if you, 
you can get the bike pretend pretend like you took it through the car wash just a little soapy water where, where, where people notice you know that's that's all you need um, and it's kind of like what's the bike worth you know what I mean like are, is the end re since since you did a good tune on it you know what I mean hell yeah the end user is gonna notice this type of stuff like right away they're like did you even tune my bike look at my cranks so there, there's there's stuff that the end users definitely notice they definitely notice their cranks uh you know i think if they look at their hubs yeah they'll be like yeah holy toledo how did you clean in there uh, you know they'll definitely notice the hubs um and uh and stuff in here is such a nightmare but hell yeah you just get it just get it just a little bit it goes a long way Uh, yeah, how are the pedals doing? The pedals are doing because even this you can check for play uh, in the pedals. Oh man, okay, tire pressure is good. Uh, I threw it up here for a reason, but was it was it just to? Uh, oh yeah, loop the chain. Let's do that. There you go. I don't know. I, I just use this big one, throw it down there, because I just go hella. You know what I mean? Go hella. Go fast. Hell yeah. Get that chain lube on there. Now, what I usually do, though, oops. See, I, I, I didn't use my method to my madness, but uh, I, I usually put it in this ring, and then, uh, so we'll, we'll do that. We'll, uh, we'll just get it just slightly. Oh, perfect. I, I did not clean these, uh, these at all. But this is something where you don't need to clean them, but you do need to take your screwdriver and just break off the dirt. So yeah, you're just going, uh, you're just going right here and you're just breaking off that dirt. There's no dirt on that side, but these are, these are pretty clean. So you just come through here and just break off that grime. It's just really hard to get this side, but there you go. Put it just right, at, do, do the same thing and uh oh this side's smooth okay perfect all right good enough though good enough what were you saying i put it in this big gear put it in this lowest gear this way you're not just dragging oil all the way across your back the oil is farthest away from the rim farthest away from the brakes and if there's any splatter and uh, it, it just, I don't know, this can come off pretty easily. But the motion is to spin, spin these little, little, spin the little circles of your chain and that's going to drive oil in and kick dirt out at the same time. I don't know, maybe, maybe that's madness and I need to change up because that happens quite frequently. Let's just go down to that middle gear. And this is an all right place, you know, to go double duty. Um, because the more juice that you're uh, firing in and out of this thing, uh, the more dirt you're driving in and out. And I haven't bought in chain lube in like four years. So, you know, I, I wouldn't do this until it gets dry. I would just do this a few times until you get like most of the dirt out and then do a repeat. So let's do this three times, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, doing this motion is better because it circles those circles. And uh, I, I don't know. I do kind of want to kick it up into that gear, especially uh, when we're doing this. Because uh, the reason that I would want to put it in that largest chain ring, because I want to use a lot of, uh, lot of lube, because we're using it to clean the chain. 
this is like a you don't need to take your chain off and throw it through a ten thousand dollar parts wash machine you know what i mean you're you're just driving you're just spinning these things and that's the first thing i would the first go around i would just try to spin these out because you're trying to spin the dirt out spin the oil in um all right kick it down this might be the last time but this will make their life so much more noticeable uh you know it's just like a new chain and now we're just drying it's our third time so uh, we're just going for the dryness you know it's like spin it fast there you go all right it's pretty dry pretty good now I don't know. You know, you you can you can see what's happening. That's the other thing. We uh we kicked enough juice in and out of that thing that uh, I don't know. You can do you if you want to, but it's just way way too much. I would rather do that four times before a ride and then get your chain dry and then do it four times after a ride. You know what I mean? But yeah, you you can get rid of the dirt in between. But we did a good enough job of kind of kicking it out. Um, you know, and the crazy thing is though, you'll, you'll, I don't know, you kind of have to use this downward, you know, I, I would do almost a downward at every one, you know, instead of just doing this. Let, let's see if this even works. See, this don't even work. You know, if you're trying to kick out that dirt, just small little strokes down, I mean, this is using your eyes. You're like, what am I actually doing? You know what I mean? Sometimes you just get frantic and you're just like, oh, I'm just going to clean it all. You know, but is it even doing anything? You know, that, that's why there's so many little pieces in here. You know, if you want to get rid of the big stuff, sure. Um, but you're, you're kicking it out. You're kicking it out and, and hopefully it kind of dries up and falls off. But just keep... You know, you could oil your chain just like that three times and, uh, and and we're just good to go. Perfect. So that chain has got to feel just awesome. And we did it. Holy hell. Okay, so uh, let's get that fan off. Now, this, this might be the eight-hour tune. I, I don't know because I'm going to take it for a test ride. We definitely need to do that. We got to make sure the brakes work. Um, I think there was there God there was like something else that we needed to go over, but maybe it was just the pricing. Like how do how do you price? You know what am I going to charge for something like this? Well, uh, l let's go over what we put into it. We we definitely put two new brake discs in, like the brake uh, pads, uh, in the calipers that in the pistons that squeeze the calipers. Jesus, you got to use your terminology. So anyway, two uh, brake pads, disc brake pads. They were twenty dollars each, so that's forty bucks. All right, the grips. I shouldn't add this next, but it was thirty-five. So forty plus thirty, that's seventy. So seventy-five bucks. Now, uh, did I buy anything for twenty-five? Well, what else did I buy? Well, let's see if I can run through it. Um, oh, I know it was something. Yeah, what was it? Uh, I don't see it. Uh, I knew I thought I you know these were tubeless so uh, that we couldn't buy so we got to return that rim tape and and we'll do that today you know just get that over with get it get our money back and uh, let me get my hat on holy Toledo what was it I have no idea so it was the grips and oh it was the spokes yeah we had to buy seven spokes and they were two dollars each so let's say that was 25 and so that would boost us up to 100 but but no, they were $10 left, so we're at $90. Okay, and then yes, I put in two cables and housing, but just for the shifters, and I, I charge uh, $5 each just for the materials. Perfect, so that brings us up to 100 bucks. So that's amazing. Literally, we are just $100 in parts, and we got this thing just rocking and rolling. Yes, we did add some fluid uh, mineral oil, but literally you can almost basically use min any mineral oil. They say even mineral oil is just scented. It doesn't have any other. St I wouldn't do that. I would actually 
uh, you, you, I would buy automotive. There's like Morgan's. I looked it up. You know what I mean? Just like you can get like a big bottle of like Morgan's mineral oil. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I, I, I don't know. I'll have to see if Shimano's really upselling their fluid because they col color it red. You know what I mean? That might impede the performance of the brakes. You never know. Uh, the, the red coloration. Who knows? Um, but yes, we added some mineral oil, got that going. But that was it. So yeah, we're a hundred bucks in. Now, let, let's just do the, you know what I mean? Like I'm uh, hanging outside Home Depot and I'm like, hell yeah, I'll work for $10 an hour today. So let's say if this bike actually uh, took uh, eight hours and I'm getting 10 bucks an hour. So I'm gonna charge 80 and that's ridiculous. So uh, I would charge a hundred, hundred, hundred in labor, a uh, hundred in parts. And, uh, cause that's hella, that's like a normal tune plus, uh, the shifters. Now I think like, but that, 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 that's the thing is like at the end of the day, can I just charge? Well, there is no such thing as a full tune for 70 bucks. That that's, that's madness. A full tune cost a hundred bucks. Um, but you can a la carte it like this actually needed a lot. You know, like I actually needed to take that cartridge rear hub and just to make sure it was tight because now this bike's going to last forever. Now when I go to tune this bike next year though, because that's the thing, if I tune this bike next year, like I said, j just uh, I could uh, true the wheels in the stand, none of the spokes are going to break, um, th then we're just charging like a uh, $100 a tire to get new tires. I know they cost that much, it's insane. Um, and, and and I'll put them on for, you know, and yeah, we, we even could do the brakes and shift in next year. But yeah, next year's tune, I could really just charge, you know, 40 to 50 bucks. Just go through it, you know, just make sure it's pumped up. Make sure all the checks that I did the year before. See, that's the cool thing about a checkup tune. You're like, hell yeah, your checkup tune is only going to cost 25 bucks because only if, at some point that you're in the system, at some point you purchased a full tune and you purchased, you, you threw down a hundred dollars labor somewhere, you know, to get that like, yes, we made sure crap's tight because at the end of the day, when you bring your bike back next year, if yes, if you just want the checkup tune, sure, yeah, we can do that for like 20 bucks, just get you in and out. Um, but no, else, you know, if your bike was put together by any anyone, Besides like a, a person that can write off and, and sign it sign their name into your bike like th that would be a cool thing You know what I mean every time your bike gets tuned if you're like yeah, dude Can you sign my bike because I, I would I would sign this bike right now and, and I'm, I'm still at a conundrum I think someone painted this. There's no way a company uh, Did not put their logos on a bike. So yeah, this bike. I don't get it I, I, Someone must have just took off all the stickers because they usually stick out and then just painted the frame. It's so interesting. I, I don't know that logo. I'll have to look it up. i just be guessing. You know what I mean? Cannondale. I don't think it's Cannondale's. I don't think it's Trex. Uh, is it Trance? I have no idea. So, uh, yeah. But now, now let's talk honestly. Because if it took me six hours, well, no, I, I started at 10, and it's probably 2 o'clock. But I did take an hour lunch. So we'll, let's see what time it is right now. Because yesterday I spent four hours, and today, yeah, today is three o'clock. So I definitely spent another four hours. So, you know, my time, this was eight hours. But I did a lot of things that were in the learning process of just uh, educating myself. So it's just like today I signed up for a bike mechanic course, and, and we learned, you know what I mean? The instructor said, hey, we're, we're going to uh, bleed the brakes um just by filling them you know and i've already done that but for every reason oh no it was installing the calipers you know what i mean uh and i've done that before but it was just like oh hey find a way if the calipers get pushed in if you can find a system to push those pistons you know, the pistons I mean, i'm not using my right terminology if the pistons get pushed in find a way to get them the hell you know back out so you can put in new new disc brake pads and perfect going through this reminds me because that disc brakes rubbing and, and we need to use uh, this tool but yeah right now we got 10 minutes
to be at that eight hour mark. And uh, I don't know. I, I would say honestly, um, yeah, could I have done this in four? Could I have just said, you know, this bike? Yes, because I thought it was tubeless. I like took, but no, this was this was labor intensive because we put seven spokes in, and that was just slow. There wasn't any faster way to do that. You know what I mean? Like that, it's just the time it takes. What you're throwing a spoke in? You know, each spoke is like changing a tire. You you, you know, like twice. You know, and then if you got two spokes, it's like changing. Yeah, just two tires. Um, but yeah, so that that was a slow process. Uh, but it wasn't too bad of a deal to get that wheel trued because we used that strategy of like, yes, we're installing the spokes, but they're on the tighter side. We're going to get them tight, and then we're going to check the wheel, and we're going to take it to the other side. So we did that. That was real good. And so we were able to true that wheel. Just We had no issues with that wheel. But could, could I have done this in four hours? Well, so this was a full tune. And then, yes, uh, uh, replacing derailleur shift cable and housing front and rear, that, that's a major deal. No one's going to touch that without uh, $20 per. You know, it's going to be $20 per cable to, to switch that out. And they're not going to charge you $5 for the cable and housing. That's what they get it for. They're going to charge you... Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be 40 bucks. 40 bucks to switch out your derailleur housing and cable. Another 40 for the front derailleur. And that might be on the high end, but no, it is 2023, baby. So, yeah, so that would be 80 bucks right there. Now, to replace seven spokes, okay, yeah, like I said, that's like, that's like seven tire changes. So, uh, man, so you're just even starting at 70 bucks, you know. Hey, I guess we can do it for 50 but, uh, yeah, that's full on. I mean, that, that's, that's rebuilding your wheel. I mean, the, how many spokes on your wheel are there? You know, so seven, that, that, that's just time consuming. Um, if it takes a half hour, you, I mean, you got a bill for $100 an hour these days. So could I have replaced all seven spokes in a half hour? 50 bucks. That's why I say 50 bucks. Yeah, we can do it for 50. That's on the cheap end. Um, because what did we say the derailleur housing? Well, that was 40. So yeah, so we got 40 and 40, that's 80. Um, 50, let's go 60. Get the numbers. 60 for the, the rear wheel. Yeah, if your rear wheel costs like $300 and we're going to replace all seven spokes. This, this is where bike mechanicing don't work if your bike is just worth 500 bucks. You know, if it's an older bike, it's just like, no, just, I, I don't know. It, it's tough. It's tough to be like, yes, I, I can't charge this much, but it still took me twice as long. Um, okay, where are we at? 80 for the shifting. 60. Um, so that's 140. So just in labor. And then you got to put your tune on top of that. So your tune is at least 100. You know what I mean? If you did a full friggin' tune, uh, so you're 140, you're 240. Plus the, plus the materials. Uh... You know, I guess minus the 2-4. Two, uh, two, so it's an 80 for material since we already did the shifting. Um, so 240 plus 100 is 340. So yeah, you're 320 bucks. Okay, perfect. So yeah, that back, if, if I was a back shop, I'd be like, okay, your bill is 340 bucks. And uh, I, I mean, if I was charging that, I'd be like, well... Are you, uh, but that's the thing, even if you're just a wheel smith, you know what I mean, and you're just like the best wheel guy in the industry, I mean, did you check the dish? But e even then, there's so, there's so many things that we just did by intuition, you know what I mean, when we spun the wheel, we checked to see if it was in line, and it is, and we said the tire's all wonky, you know what I mean, we, we, we got the spokes tensioned. You know, there's so many things you can do without a $400 truing stand. And then even if you are the person that's just a master truer, you know what I mean? Like, a, I, I guess at the end of the day, you, you could do, you know, up and down, you know, see if there's any up and down. But, uh, 
I mean, you're just splitting hairs at that point. You know what I mean? The fact that, see, there's so many bike mechanics that, you know, they're just not going to hit everything. And, and yes, I, I was learning. It was a learning experience about these cartridge hubs. Uh, you know, I, I guess they only go in one direction, and that makes sense. And the rear's the only one that has two locking nuts, so you can actually lock the position. This front one, no, that's why you get a little bit of play in it. Um... Because there's only one screw holding the other side. I don't know how those screws work. Um, but yes, but we did a, a full check on everything else. Derailleur alignment gauge on the derailleur. Um, but then just like, and this is just my common sense, that e even if you're a bike mechanic in the game uh, for just so many years, yes, you don't replace cable and housing. You don't replace your derailleur shifter housing front and rear every time you do a tune-up because you would have to charge for that. You, you, your tune-up would go from 100 to 200. It would go from 150 for a normal tune. I think they're 150 for a normal tune these days, you know, because it takes more than an hour. You can't tune a bike in less than an hour. Um, you can put an hour of time into a bike, but you can't do a full $150 tune in less than an hour. And you got to get paid at least $100 an hour these days um, to make your bike shop run. Uh, but yeah, so I think I'm doing a great job and still learning. Now, am I a master mechanic? No, but then you get, I'm at least up over the curve of like, hell, as long as I'm doing it by myself, I can't fire me. And you know, uh, and, and I'm only taking on bikes that like, hell yeah, I'll, I'll buy you the component if, if I F it up. You know what I mean? Like even just this, the caliper, the piston, just, yeah, I'll, I'll go buy you a Dior, caliper or i'm using the wrong terms uh brake uh no yeah the brake caliper the whole thing is called the disc brake caliper i'll go buy you another one you know what i mean and then we'll uh, unscrew it and let all the the fluid drain out and stuff like that um so anyway that's the only thing that i did not do and i didn't have to do you know here's your at least we identified it here's your port for your caliper, yeah, you unscrew that and then just watch all the crap fly everywhere. Um, I don't know how you unscrew that without just juice, juice, and everywhere. So, yeah, definitely take out your wheel. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then, uh, so, yeah, it's interesting. But, yeah, n no need for that. You can get all the air out. It's like, a, I don't know. I I've just, I've never cro came across a bike where you needed to bleed it all the way through. But, uh you know, I think all the air's out. And, uh, but may maybe we'll do it, you know, this is what you'd want to do. You would want to fill it, do the system I did, and then go and bleed it from the bottom and just see for yourself if any air bubbles come to the top. You know, because if no, but that that's the, the, the second you take off that, that thing, you're introducing air from the bottom, and then you got to flush that air through the top. So yes, air is going to come through the top. You're just going to, you're just not going to know if it was from the bottom after putting the system you put in, you know, but you could uh, ride the bike, see what the brakes are, and then go bleed the brakes from the bottom to the top, just like a normal car, get rid of all the air, you know, but you're, you're still... You still got that reservoir up there that you're just pushing a rubber stopper in. You know, you're not just vacuum sealing it. So, uh, you know, such is life. And you might be introducing just a teeny bit of air in the top that's not, you know, super uh, incompressible. You know, air is compressible. So, but it would be interesting to try this, see how snappy and good the brakes are, then go bleed it like normal and see if there's any difference. If there's not any difference, then hell yeah, that, that's the way to do it. Cause that only takes like five minutes. Um, yep. Okay. And, and then everything else is, is just big business. You know what I mean? Anymore, you take your Fox shock, you just take it off your bike, mail it in, and then have them refurbish it. So if you're a legit like bike shop, you know, even you know where your expertise is. You know, what you're, even here, we got only two bike shops in a little bike mecca, Helena, Montana. You know what I mean? Come out here and then make our town a little bit better. You know what I mean? Uh, just share the trails. Anyway, but what what these bike shops but we have an economy where no one wants to pay money until the last minute and it's on their mind but it's like no the the bike industry here is like hell you better sign up for your tune-up 
you know, for two years from now, like right now, like this summer, you're signing up for your tune-up for two years from now and we'll get you in. You schedule it like a hair appointment, you know, and then so what you need to do in the wintertime is hell yeah, like uh, you bring your bike in December 31st, you know, just after Christmas and before the New Year's and that's your date to bring your bike in. We're going to strip your Fox shocks. We're going to send them in. They're going to do all the refurb refurbishing work. We're charging just for disassembly and packaging. And uh, that's plenty. So, so you know, and then Fox is going to love it. They're going to see that this, this uh, you know, because we have, let's say, 2,000 bikes here that are worth more than five grand here in Helena. And uh, every year, 2,000 bikes, you know, it's just like five a day. They're going to get five of these shocks a day at the Fox factory, you know. And, and then you're, you're just creating, you're creating the industry that way, you know what I mean? And, and so, uh, so it's interesting. So even I see that as a, uh, uh, you know, I ain't taking my bike to the bike shop because I already know how to tune. I'm trying to make some money here with mental illness, you know what I mean? So it's just kind of interesting. And, uh, but yeah, that, that's what I, the bike shop should do is, uh, and you just have to train that into your customer base. You have to be like, hell, you invested in this $4,000 bike and, and guess what? When it comes June, it's like, no, do not bring your bike in for a tune up. Um, and, uh, and, and that's the thing is that you need, oh, this would be perfect. You, you need to, uh, because even just like right now, just going into the bike shops, that there there's their master mechanics, and it was great. I love to see more female bike tuning, uh, you know, because sometimes bike tuning's not for the guy's mind. It's it's an app for my mind. If if I'm speaking from a guy perspective, it, it's an absolute mental nightmare. There there is a is there's a thousand things to think about, and, and I think women are better at thinking about a thousand things. You know what I mean? You know, just like, uh, and I do not want to get stereotypical on this, but you get it. They, they can run a thousand different things where the guy's like, I'm going to pick up a big rock and put it in this fence, and I'm going to do that until my back gives out, and, and that's going to uh, bring in money household. You know what I mean? So that, that's kind of the perspective there. So I love to see more uh, gals uh, tuning backs um, because, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, catch on the flip side. All right. Because the opposite of, uh, you know, newer... I, I mean, I, I, I don't want to get into the... But in, anyway. Um, yeah, but I just know from my perspective, being in the bike industry, you know, even if it's just like tuning... I love tuning skis because that was pretty simple. But when it got time to, like, mount skis, hell yeah. My mind, I just... It just I wasn't quite there yet. Too many things to think about. Uh, but now, now I can do it. It's still a nightmare. You can mess up someone's ski, but you, you do it enough, you get down there. Now a bike, same thing. You cross thread anything on this bike, you, you just better just throw that part away. Yeah, sure, you can break out the taps um, and make it work. And at the end of the day, e even if you weren't trying, like crap like that happens all the time. The bike comes in and it already is cross-threaded because the last mechanic just like threw it in there and, and then just uh, pushed the problem downstream. So, uh, but yeah, it's interesting. What am I getting at though? But if, you, if you're a new person in the industry, and don't matter how old you are, you know what I mean? Especially, there's old or young, but yeah it's one of those things where someone's going to say you need to get that tuned in an hour and you're just like well um even me i'd never do that i spent eight hours on this bike because i still want the education every time i tune a bike i want an equal amount of education now you can't do that in the industry now at this local bike shop i was just like well i did it it took from from a, a bike that came out of the package to fully tuned um i would spend like well, i think i might have got down to two and a half hours but three hours no more than three hours but uh i would do uh basically two and a half bikes a day fresh out of the package you know um because then you're not moving the problems downstream but i guess at the end of the day that that's why when your bike comes in for that tune-up then yeah you got your work cut out for you but uh 
it's interesting. E even if, if I was selling any bikes, because they all cost over $2,000 now, hell yeah, I, I would say no, absolutely not. I want my professional mechanics putting together the bikes and from the get-go. That's the thing, is like bikes come out of the package, and uh, sure, anything under two thousand dollars is put. In, you could be put together just by the newest employees. Anything over four grand, hell yeah, may maybe some of the more head mechanics are putting them together. But still, maybe not because you're just like, oh, it's a new bike. But no, hell no. You put it. You put a bike together once, perfectly. It it's gonna stay perfect. It just literally is. You know what I mean? Until it until it wears out. Until you stress a spoke till it breaks, you know, this thing's just gonna be tip top. Um, and that that's something that people don't understand because they're just used to a bike being like, oh yeah, everything's falling apart on my back. And it just feels that way. Like nothing works on my back. There's so much friction on my back. And like I just pointed that out. That's straight from the factory. That's the that's the shift company is saying, hey, you need this, you, you need a a, a rattlesnake. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, holding in your shifter cable. It's like, hell no. You, you need minimal and, and then just smart design. Get rid of that friction. And hell yeah, every year we're, we're, we're throwing those cables in away, getting new cables in. That, that's the thing. Is like, a, Then you have programs. You're like, hell yeah, we're, we're taking that cables and shifting out, but it's still good. But yeah, we're, we're, we're sending it to Africa. You know what I mean? We're sending it to the, even here in Helena, we got the, uh, the place... That with volunteers, they're taking all the scrap pieces and putting them together in bikes for people that need bikes. E even your tires, hell yeah, y you better be replacing those every year. You know what I mean? So uh, it it's just part of the deal. It's part of the package. And then you take a tire and then you donate it to someone who's going to use that last 75%. I mean, that first 25%, that's why you pay $10,000 for your bike. You want that 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 first feel like all the time and it is an industry where it doesn't have to be wasteful yes you're going to use that wheel you're basically leasing that wheel for 25 percent of your life and then we're going to take it off give it to uh, people down the line that are going to appreciate it and we're going to make sure your back feels 100 percent so i'm just fit firing here because it's just because that that's the thing if you're a new bike mechanic they're gonna be like you're working too slow and maybe it's just me my personality is just the one to be the 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 one that gets bullied so it's just like i, I screw that I'll, I'll work for myself from from here to the day i die you know what i mean i don't need no boss you know what i mean uh yeah hell no you know what i mean so uh and, and i'll get serious with it because like uh yeah I'll, I'll be your boss and say you don't need no boss you know what i mean uh go go uh go say it's like the first first thing you do if i'm your boss is like yeah you got to you got to say, I quit. I'm working for myself. You know what I mean? All right, sounds good. Uh, I hope you find a new job. Uh, you know what I mean? Here tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, uh, and yeah, maybe I'll find a new job at the same place tomorrow. And then, yeah, then you come back together. That, that's the boss-employee relationship. You know what I mean? And I'll talk about it a hundred times because, yeah, um, yeah, my, my, my first, it couldn't, couldn't have been worse. Couldn't, you couldn't graduate college and then just be put with the worst person. And it's just so interesting because that was a story uh, of uh, my my dad, you know what I mean? And it's just like, whoa, he had to put up with such bullshit for uh, you know, 30 years. And then and then guess what? You know what I mean? Then then it's just a healing battle, you know what I mean? It's a daily battle. It's like you're pushing that crap onto families. You're you, it's just turning into mental illness. There's nothing, you know, it's just like if if you like to kill people, you know what I mean? You, you can start in middle school. You know what I mean? You can start making fun of people. You know what I mean? You, you can start, uh, if you if you like pulling triggers, you know what I mean? That That's where it starts. It, it's absolute madness. So uh, definitely take care of yourself in the working world. Uh, don't put up a lot of bullshit. And uh, man, I, I, I don't. And it's just like, maybe, and I'm such a litmus test because it's just like, even just with like sizing up as perspective, it's just like, yeah, when you're just like, whoa. All right, let, let's, let's say how it is. Yeah, there, there is an employee at one bike shop here in town that's just like, yeah, he's just got that attitude. It's just like, 
The second I come in, you know, knowing my stuff, and I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not being cocky or anything, but it's just like, it's so rude to be like, well, you know nothing. You know, it's like, you know nothing, and I know you don't know nothing. And it's just like, whoa, no, no, no. Like, no, I know plenty, but it sounds like you're treating everyone like they don't know nothing. You know what I mean? It's just like, it sounds like, you know, it's like, well, I know you haven't been in this town forever. So it's just like, who trained that into you? You know what I mean? So that's interesting. So in life, I, I think of it like that. It's just like, hell yeah, I was treated this way, and it was shit. And so we're not doing that no more. We're not treating ourselves like that no more. And we're not treating other people like that no more. And if I'm empowering you to be like, hell yeah, walk away from that job. You know, you know what I mean? Those people are going to be there. You know what I mean? If, if, you're, if your company ain't firing people every, every two weeks and you're not seeing fresh faces in there that are better than the faces, you know, two weeks ago, you know what I mean? It's time to quit that company. You know what I mean? Because they, they're not, they're not up with the times. Like, uh... You know, you don't have to discriminate, but hell yeah, if I'm working for a new company and their turnover isn't hella, like, we ain't doing this. It's just like, well, what's what's your boundaries? Like, what's your rules? I'm a very rule-based person uh, when, when it comes to, like, uh, if I have to work, if I have to dedicate my life to something, it's like, it better have, uh, you know what I mean? It, it's just like, if you go to prison, you better not be getting beat to sh you know, you better not, it's crazy, that, that's such a madhouse, like, uh, well, let's talk about, I was talking about that in the other video, it's just like, I, I don't know, and it's interesting to just, just throw out the solution and then backpedal of why that doesn't work, but it's just like, if I could go to prison and then be like, I don't want to see no more, you know, put me in isolation for the 20 years that I'm going to be in prison and let me read books and study and rehabilitate, but... I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to see any of these people. Uh, I, I don't. I don't want to associate and have my life be like a looking over my back every day. You kidding me? It's just like, isn't it cheaper just to lock me in a cell with a book? You know, give me a little. Uh, it's insane. I don't get it. But it's, it's looking at perspectives like that of why it doesn't work. Why? Why in an industry where it's just like there's not a lot of money you you don't have turnover because it's just so hard to get people into all these industries that you're just like all the bad people you know is king of the mountain and it's just like okay you know what i mean and i heard it you know and just the job is just like well i worked in the oil fields and this is what we did it's just like well guess what this is a service industry this is working at the ski area it was just like no is this like you kidding me this this is a small ski resort that should be you know, the most fabulous place to work in the world. And it doesn't cost us any more to have a perception of, like, this is the best. Like, this is the best place to to work in the world. You know, just pretend like you're in Canada and, and we're living in socialism. That's what you do when you work for a small ski resort for your entire life. And, uh, but it, it, it better be the best. It, it can't be a place where you're just like, oh, this is the only place that I want to work. And, and guess what? I'm king of the mountain. And, uh, you know, I mean, my bad attitude is just going to like, you know, it, it's crazy. It, it's absolute insanity. You know what I mean? And the fact that you don't have an industry where you're just like, nope, we're gonna we're gonna hot we're gonna fire that. If you can't fire that, like what? Because you have like a social tie to someone, it's like that. That's fine. And you can always rehire. It's just like you need consequence or just you need a reset button in life. You know, what I mean? it would be like playing Nintendo with the Game Genie. Like that, that totally sucks. You're just like, yeah, I beat the game, but it didn't feel like it. You know, it'd be nice if I. Uh, you know what I mean? You die, and then you come back a few days later, and you're like, oh, I'm going to try this again. Because uh, same with employment. They're like, we're going to fire you. You can come back in a couple of years. How about that? You know what I mean? Um, but, but here's the things that you, you missed out on. And, and here's the things in the next couple of years as a company, we want it to be smiles. You know what I mean? And, and we don't see it that way. That's why we're getting rid of you. And you know what I mean? But... Uh, yeah, that was interesting. And I got fired? Sure. Yeah, hell yeah. There were some legitimate reasons why I got fired. Of uh, just being like, yeah, I'm book smart. But uh, if you throw... I mean, if you give me impossible tasks that make no sense and you just hate me as a person, you can just feel it. You're just like, whoa, you don't trust me at all. I, I remember I was up at the... It was working for, uh, we'll just say it, Moonlight Basin, you know what I mean, before they switched to Big Sky. Yeah, that, that, that boss is still around. You know what I mean? Well, so we're getting into it. You know, you can look him up if you want. 
But uh, and anyway, so I was working as kind of like a, you know, first, you know, just graduated in engineering. And this is good because it gets it off my chest. And we, we got we to gotta wrap this up, though. But yeah, it's like just when you're, whoa, you're not trusted. You're just like, whoa, you actually just hate me as a person. You know what I mean? There's something about my personality that rubs per people wrong. And that's fine, too. That, that's why I changed it. That's why I'm just like, well, I, I'm going to. Yeah, there's something about if I just talked in my voice three years or just two years ago, I can't take more than five minutes of it. It's going to give me a headache. I'm just going to throw up. But uh, if I just change my demeanor just a little bit, you know, it's the same person. It's the same, it's the same ideas in my head, but it's something that I like. You know what I mean? It feels good to me. I can listen to this all day. I can talk all day. Uh, so, so maybe there's that element with the trust. You know what I mean? To, uh, but I don't want. I don't want to throw punches. I don't want to be like, oh, this is a. I'm, I'm an asshole. Because this is the same thing. I've had to deal with it. You know, my entire life, even just working for the, the lock saw, same thing. You, you can figure out who I work for. I'm not going to say. But anyway, the boss is like, yeah, you can work, but uh, if you don't mind getting yelled at. And it's just like huge red flags. That was the same thing with the, with the boss with Moonlight Basin. And then so, hell yeah. It's like, and even, even the day where I actually did the most work, where I'm just like, hell yeah. I had to go survey, uh, you know, huge properties you know, just three feet of snow with snowshoes, you know, with a survey gun that I didn't really know how to use that good, but I kind of figured it out. And uh, I just, I was just like, whoa, this is going to be an all-day thing. It's an eight-hour day. It's like most people don't go cross-country skiing. No one's like, oh, I'm going to go cross-country skiing for like eight hours, you know what I mean? But hell yeah, if it's your job, you're like, well, I guess I signed up for eight hours of outside work. But, but this is an engineer, he don't, he's never worked outside a day in his life. You know what I mean? And he's just an asshole. So, uh, it was just, and it took me a while to get my things ready. I don't know. I, I just, I just pace myself. You know what I mean? We're going to do the work. We're going to make sure we boy scout it out so we're not having to F up all the time. And we're still going to F up all the time. But I just went to the ski lodge, got some friggin' water, and, uh, and filled it up. And I'm just walking out with my water bottles. And yeah, I'm in ski gear because I got a snowshoe through the friggin', you know, four feet of snow just to, it's winter time. And, and these properties that are at Big Sky, Big Sky is on the backside of Moonlight Basin. Moonlight Basin, I was just flagging Moonlight Basin properties. And they're literally the five, like five miles by five miles. It's crazy. Less than that. But, uh, I, I don't know. And anyway, the boss is just like, hey, what are you doing? And I was just like, oh, oh, hey, I didn't see. Oh, you're up here at the ski area. This is great. And he's just like, what are you doing? And it's just like, it was just like, what? I was like, oh, I'm uh, getting water. You know what I mean? And I can just see my brother in this. He's just like, yo, what the hell? It's just like, he got made fun of too. And it's just like, what gives you the right to just throw shit at people just because you don't like them? You know what I mean? And so it was just totally looking for an out. He's like, wait, you're skiing. Are, are, he's like, are you skiing? And I was just like, no, I'm getting water. And it's still morning time. Holy shit. You know, and it's only like 9, 9.30. You know what I mean? And he thought I was taking some runs. And it's just like, and he, you know, he could have done the forensics. I mean, obviously, I guess if I was skiing, I wasn't going to go out to get my skis. I would have got them later. And she were running out of juice. You're probably not going to, you're just going to hear audio. But if that's the case, that's fine. We're going to finish the story. But yeah, he was so dead set. And he was with like the founder of Moonlight right next to him, which was actually, he knew my family, but I don't think he knew that I was actually that same Roberts. So it's just like such an opportunity to be like, no, it's just like, hell, y you know the personality. It's like, we, uh, I don't know. So anyway, he totally thought I was just skiing runs. And, and I, I was fucking pissed because I actually really did work really hard that day. But just the fact that he never trusted that I didn't ski that day and, and is insane. And I thought that all blew over. But just like two months later, I was just like, well, I've, I've, I wanted to take just a... Just two days off to go, you know, make a long weekend and kind of treat it like a spring break, you know, just like college times. And he and he was sarcastic, I think, because he's just like, oh, yeah, you've worked here long enough to take uh, a spring break. Uh, and I was just like, because I, I didn't say it like that. I was just like, can I take two days off? I'm looking to, you know, go to Moab and stuff. And this would actually be real good. 
Um, but yeah, the second I got back, he fired me. So, uh, I don't mind calling someone, uh, god damn. Yeah, just swear word, swear word, swear word. You know, just like, my only question for him, if I ever saw him, and, and I wouldn't want to say this is a rhetorical question, but it's just like, yes, uh, plenty of reason that I wasn't the best employee, you know what I mean? Uh, sure, struggle with anxiety, you, you, you throw me extra, you hate me, it's like, yeah, it's just like, they're gonna make my job way harder, you know, I'm gonna be like just a trembling little animal, you know what I mean, just like on those uh, commercials with the, the, with the dogs. You know what I mean? And, uh, but yeah, but, but, it, my, but my question to him, be, I would go up to him and be like, yes, over the last 20 years, I've become a better employee. But my question to you is over the last 20 years, have you become a better leader? And it's a hell of a question I do not want to ever have to ask because I never want to see that swear word, swear word, swear word person ever again. You know what I mean? It's just, that's the trauma in life. It's just like, well, but I get it. We, we just talked 20 minutes about, I don't want to work for a company that can't fire people. But, but this was, but, it, but you have to have ground. You have to have rules and be like, hey, guess what? It's all smiles here. And now it's not because of very systematic things that you're not part of the tribe. You know what I mean? So uh, that's different than being like, no, I hate you. You know what I mean? Because any company, especially like on the, you know, the horrible bosses or like the undercover boss is just like, no, we'll take literally anyone. You know what I mean? Th that's the thing. Like, let's say you just sound like the most hated person, you know, even kind of like me is just like, oh, you, you just sound like you're going to give bad service. You know what I mean? But you take that and be like, no. You signed up to be in a fancy restaurant, and we're going to teach you how to, uh, you know, be the best wait staff, you know, ever, just with some, just with some key mannerisms. So it's the teaching moments, you know, and then so going back to the back world, yeah, don't ever, don't ever, I mean, you might have to, you might have to throw it back together in an hour or else you're going to get fired. You know what I mean? All right. I guess, I guess that's the MO. You know what I mean? It, yeah. We're just going to throw it together. You know what I mean? It, that's the thing. But if you care, that, that's why you hire people that don't care to do that work. You know what I mean? They're, they're perfect at it. Um, but anyway, I, I'm going to take those extra eight hours and we're running out of juice. It's probably not even recording the audio or video but this was such a good back tune. Right now we're going to do, uh, well, tomorrow when it gets better, we're going to test ride this. Catch you on the flip side. All right, hell yeah. So uh, what we got, what we got here? Well, we got our parking garage, you know what I mean? Hell yeah, it's free one hour parking. So, uh, hey, we got, we got clearance, we got clearance. Uh, let's push for a ticket. Hell yeah, let's do this. All right, well, what are we doing? Well, we're gonna we're gonna test ride this bike. It's gonna rain for two days. It's absolutely madness. Let's drive the speed limit. You know what I mean? Throw that up there, and uh, yeah, we get one free hour in here. Now you're not supposed to bike around, but you know you're not supposed to bike around for fun. But basically, we're just gonna drive the exit, and uh, we're just gonna find some dry pavement, and it's probably gonna be on the lower levels. This thing's leaky as a sieve. But hell yeah, I'd come here in the winter time to go skateboarding down here. It's real fun. It's real fun at night time. You come around these corners, pop a wheelie. All right. Oh, per this is dry enough. Hell yes. Yeah. So we found our dry pavement. We're just gonna pull in here. And uh, man, this cold weather. Ate at a restaurant. I feel sick. No, I don't. I just, you know. I could definitely, I need to sleep. I've only gotten five hours of sleep the last two nights, so uh, yeah, we need sleep tonight. That's all I know. But anyway, that, that's why I'm doing this. I, I just really have to be done, done with this bike. All right, hell yeah. Oh, we, we gotta raise this seat. Holy Toledo. Make sure we don't get run over. But yeah, my, my leg is so bummed out that uh, we, we gotta raise this seat almost like sky high. 
what's the limit the limits right there perfect that's where we're gonna be we're gonna see if i can ride this bike with the seat up that high whoa whoa the gears okay get into a gear that works now we can't get run over you know what i mean you got to look up but uh, we, we got to break in these brakes too so how does it feel just like first off well it feels like there's mineral oil still on the shifter damn it so we kind of got to wipe that off um yeah the brakes need to be broken in that's for sure so uh hey the knee feels really good though this is such i should have been biking out i should have been biking more but yeah, I can hardly walk and I heart can hardly do my exercises. But uh, I guess I can bike just fine. Um, yeah, the shifting works good. The, the grips are good. You know, everything just feels real, real good. But I guess we're, we need to work on the shifting. So yeah, the shifting goes, uh, the shifting, yeah, see how it's not dropping in? You know, you're dropping into your higher gear and it's a little slow. Um, you know what I mean? It's rapid rise. So if you need an easy gear, you got it. You know what I mean? So, uh, whew. Check for cars. All right, hell yeah. But yeah, we really need to, we need to get these brakes, you know, like wore in. Ah, shoot. So the one thing that I didn't, one of the rotors rubbing, you know what I mean? So we need to true that rotor. That's the one thing I didn't do. But yeah, how I like to brake is I like to, I like to grab one of them and then like pump the other one. So I'll grab this one and then really pump this one. Um, anyway. That's, that's how I like to do it. And I don't know, are the brakes good? You know? I'm not super impressed. So what we're gonna do, no, nah, nah, I don't know. I was thinking about uh, uh, sanding down the disc brake rotors, you know what I mean? But that's just gonna throw a bunch of steel into the brake pads, so. Like, I don't know, I, I'm fine, I'm fine. So, yeah, the the, bra the shifting works. Uh, we did our test ride. The, the brakes are good. We kind of broke them in just a little bit. Yeah, they're grippy. Okay, let's get the hell out of here. But yeah, yeah, which rotor? Is it this rotor? Is it out of alignment? No, that rotor's fine, I think. Is it this one? Yeah, I don't notice them, so I'm just gonna call it. You know, we, we gotta be done with this thing. Um, I can always go over to my brother's house and take that tool and just check it out in a, you know, a, a month or two. Okay, heck yes. All right, we did our test ride and we're done, baby. I don't know how long that took hour-wise on the GoPro, but it's over eight hours. I'm kind of in that eight and a half, nine by the time I get back, but we took a lot of breaks. So uh, anyway, uh, that's a video.